boy. We are here. We are doing it. Lost Belt 5, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, everyone. It is May 19th, 2023, 7 11 a.m. Nice, funny number. Um, definitely wanted to go over a few things before we go in because uh, I've been doing that every Lost Belt chapter. I think it's fun to recap on everything that uh, we kind of know overall so far and like questions that I have going into it. Good evening for you, yes. Good morning, good evening, good night, good day, wherever you all are from. Good morning, Tamamo, Kiko, Tuxedo, Notorious. And I know I saw Fez in there too. Good evening, good morning, good day, good night. Um, so, a lot has happened in the Lost Belt so far. So for those who are unaware, we are going into Chapter 5 of Arc 2 of the entire FGO storyline. Um, FGO Arc 2 is all about the Lost Belts. The Lost Belts are a very interesting con a concept. I didn't really even understand what they were going into the Lost Belt Arc, but now I have a pretty firm grasp on it. Um, what are the Lost Belts? For those who don't know, um, Cosmos in the Lost Belt is Arc 2 of Fate Grand Order's storyline, and it's a really interesting concept overall, essentially in the Fate Universe or the uh, Nasuverse in general. Um, we have what is called World Textures, Reality Textures, Textures on the Planet of the World, and what that is, it's in... That's not necessarily an original concept. Um, if you've ever heard of fan in fantasy stories they have like similar things to where when there is fairies or like imaginary uh like uh monsters from myth and stories mythological creatures essentially sometimes us as humans we can't perceive them in these stories because we lack something and that death of reality is essentially what I understand as the texture. I'm sure it's a little different, obviously, in uh, the Fate universe, but that's how I understand it, Like because I like to compare different types of fiction to each other. That's how I understand it anyway. Um, we don't know why or what the goal is yet, but essentially at the start of this arc, this quote-unquote alien god who we still know nothing about really, descended down onto humanity by placing these trees at different points on the planet. Now these trees completely exter exterminated and quote unquote bleached the planet, uh, turning the planet into a, that, why we call it bleach is because the entirety of the Earth's surface now is completely white and blank. There is almost nothing you can see left except for it being a white desert that is, um, I, I'm pretty sure at one point it said that the sun's, it, the sun is shining on every corner of the earth at this point, and I'm not sure if that's, if the earth was moved out of our solar system. I, I find that hard to believe. I think it might just be because the earth is so white now that the sun is reflecting off of every surface to the point where there's nothing, there's no dark corner of the earth at this point. The entire earth is just bleached white. Um... Now, we don't know why or what the goals are, but uh, and how I explained it at one point too, that uh, a, a few people said that they like this I or this way of me explaining it because the way I imagine it is if you have like a globe, right? And you sandpaper down the entire thing until it was just the original texture, that's essentially what they've done. And they've, by pinpointing all these, uh, you can think of the trees that they dropped on the planet as just pins that they poked into the globe and now these pins that are in the globe are establishing a new texture and that's what these lost belts are and the lost belts are a different version of humanity in the present day so all of these different lost belts we've gone through now these different uh chapters took place in different areas of the world and they are not futures not pasts, but present day different versions of humanities that stemmed from our timeline at some point into their own timeline. 
and the reason they're called Lost Belts is because of the pruning theoretical phenomenon, which is <laughs> a mouthful, but the pruning, pruning theoretical phenomenon is essentially how the universe prunes timelines that are not progressing anymore. And so, for example, Lost Belt 3 was in the Chinese Lost Belt. The way that that timeline branched off into its own thing was Qin Shi Huang, the first emperor of China, essentially succeeded in becoming immortal because the real Qin Shi Huang, I believe, was trying to achieve immortality in our in real life in our timeline. And he, he ended up like drinking mercury or some shit trying to become immortal and it killed him. <laughs> Fucking idiot. But uh, the Qin Shi Huang in that timeline succeeded in becoming immortal by essentially uploading his consciousness into a brain or some shit. Or his brain into a, a computer, right? Um, he becomes immortal that way. And through that timeline, he conquers the world establishes a new Great Wall of China that is a Great Wall of satellites, essentially, that go around the sky. And because he... And he he basically whittled down humanity to just be ignorant farmers that could not chase their own dreams or desires because they had... that there, He removed anything to ever inspire any humans, humans. And then he would dish out these vaccines essentially that would keep them healthy keep them uh keep them healthy make sure that they uh didn't get sick ever make sure that they would never get any diseases make sure they would never suffer but it killed them at like 20 30 years old something like that so they would never grow old and never have to live to old age essentially it was his perfect utopia um Obviously, we got there and we were like, this is fucked up. And the reason that timeline was pruned was because they reached a point where progress was never going to happen. Human progress stopped there because no one could dream, innovate, create new things. Uh, another thing that they mentioned in that, the Chinese Lost Belt is really interesting because you can see the argument for it where the other ones were kind of like, almost Armageddon like like it it, it see, you could you could tell there was clear suffering the Chinese lost belt in particular you could see the argument for why someone would say it was a utopia because suffering was essentially non-existent but there was an argument to be had that the people there weren't really living you were taking you were stripping away everything it means to be a human right so the Chinese lost belt was really interesting for that Another thing was the satellite array that he put around the new Great Wall of China that he put around the Earth, uh, the satellite array. He also put there not only to spy on his own citizens, but also to watch for any threats coming in because he was so scared of space and he never had any, any thought in his mind to ever branch out and explore space. And that really rung to me because of the, the alien invaders that caused this whole thing to happen I wonder how much of that has to do with how our humanity, our timeline, the correct timeline, is actually wanting to go out and branch into space. And they wanted to stop that or some. I don't know. I thought that was interesting, though, so I wanted to bring it that up. Um, I don't know how significant that is. Um, I don't know how much else I wanted to go over. I just wanted to explain the concepts of Lost Belts. Um... Yeah, so like, e e so every Lost Belt, uh, what happened was the original seven masters in Arc One that were supposed to go into Arc One, but they weren't. They weren't. They were stuck in these coffins and essentially knocked unconscious, unconscious, unconscious. And uh, those seven original masters that we, the main character, ended up replacing them and uh, saving the world in Arc One, they, they were essentially going to die. And the alien god gave them the choice of either letting them die or bringing them back to life to manage these Lost Belts. And Wodime, who was the leader of that team, uh, Wodime, he, he's the guy that is actually up on the screen right now, right up over there. 
Wodine was their leader. He was essentially going to be the only one to be brought back, but he he convinced the alien god to bring all of his team members back and uh, to have a competition to see who could have the best lost spell. And it's essentially just a different take on the, the original Holy Grail War, which is interesting. How Lost Belt 5 branched off is so fucking cool. Ooh. And the, the, the Lost Belt 5 is also the first Lost Belt that has two two full chapters. Two, or I guess three is its own kind of thing is what I've heard. That's why it's 5.5. And uh, the two chapters for five are Atlantis and Olympus. And it's 5.1 and 5.2. I think the one after that is just supposed to be like a bridge. The gap between five and six, I believe. <sighs> <laughs> What's up, Barbok? <laughs> yeah, and uh, the, um... Oh, it says it right there. Yeah, SYN stands for Synchronized Intellect Nation, too, which is interesting, too. Um, I don't want to explain every single Lost Belt, but I just wanted to explain the concept of Lost Belts again, just so everyone's on the same page. Um, so... Those seven... Cryptors is what uh, cryptors we originally thought when we heard the name cryptors we thought that that was a name the alien god might have given them but it turns out that's a name that Marsbury Animosphere gave the team A which is interesting we still don't know what that means yet um speaking of Marsbury Animosphere in between the story chapters in between the lost belts because this is all every lost belt has its own grand story which is so cool but there is a there is a story that is bringing this all together, obviously. So each Lost Belt is a pretty long story, but there is obviously a greater story that is linking everything together. Um, so in between every Lost Belt, we're getting bits and pieces. Um, there's two things I wanted to mention. One is that there is a guy that is, we're, we're getting notes from a journal, like journal entry notes that are from a guy, I can't remember his name, but it's someone that is investigating he survived by living in a bunker underground as the planet was getting glassed, essentially, and getting bleached. Uh, he was in an a underground bunker, and I think it was... Someone can correct me. I think it was Australia, because he gets on a fucking motorcycle and drives to America on this solar-powered motorcycle. <laughs> and so, because there's no oceans left, because the entire Earth has been turned into just a white, sandy desert. Um, where, where did I write down the note for that? Um, I wanted to say the survivor mentioned in the white desert, the world is now, uh, the world, what the world is now covered in this white desert. He mentioned it doesn't seem dead. It seems like life never existed here in the first place. It's just empty. And his keyword being empty, I thought was significant because the trees that are in every Lost Belt are called the Trees of Emptiness. That might not be nothing, that might just be a coincidence, but I just thought the wording there was kind of interesting. Um, we also found out in Lost Belt 3, and it, we also got to see it in 4, that when these, tre these trees essentially bloom, and when they start to bloom, we can see that there is a fucking galaxy inside. What the hell that means, I have no idea. And then every every single individual tree is named after a galaxy as well. What 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 that means, I have no fucking clue yet. Why, like, <laughs> these trees drop down on Earth, bloom, and there's a fucking galaxy inside. What? Huh? What the fuck does that mean? Um... Let me see what else I had. So that was the, so we're getting journal entries from this guy. He, he goes to a Area 51 because he believes, I think he was just getting to Area 51 the last time we heard from him. I don't think we've seen anything else past that yet, but he's going to Area 51 because he knew Area 51 had to do with aliens or whatever. He knew alien invaders were the ones that did this. And he's thinking that someone at Area 51 had to have known this was happening, had to have known something. So he he's going to America to try to look for answers, anything at all. Because he, he at the moment, he thinks he's the only survivor. Everything he's seen between wherever he went from, I think it was Australia. I don't know if anyone in chat corrected me. I think he went, he went from another country though, and he, I remember him saying he literally crossed the ocean on a fucking motorcycle. <laughs> and uh, 
he gets to America, and I think that's the last we heard from him, but he wanted to go to Area 51 because he figured someone had to have seen this coming, and he wanted to look for answers, so that's why he's in, the last we heard from him, he was in America. Um, what else? So that was the one, that that's one thing we're hearing in between the Lost Belts. The second thing is every Lost Belt, there are citizens, obviously, in every Lost Belt that we end up talking to, getting to know, and the unfortunate anarchy thank you so much for the 26 month resub appreciate it um oh yeah we got new new alerts too it's just the new twi twitch put out new like official twitch alerts and I i'm using those um the other thing is we get to know the si it's really sad we get to know the citizens of every lost belt right knowing that when we get rid of that tree and get rid of the lost belt that it's going to kill and not we we don't really know what happens exactly we just know that that timeline that they are in goes back to being pruned meaning in our head like what the only logical explanation is that they no longer exist um as far as we know it's not painless we're giving them a pain like they're just going back to non-existence <laughs> whatever that means but their timeline was pruned it gets to it gets a second chance being brought into existence in these lost belts and we're basically going in there to say, no, you shouldn't have ex ever existed in the first place. So it's sad in that regard because we get to know the citizens in each of these Lost Belts. Sometimes, like in Lost Belt 1, we saw it, they do find out like, that their timeline will get pruned and they fight back. Other times, like in Lost Belt 4, they never know about it to begin with and they end up going out without ever knowing how or why or what's even going to happen. Um, so that's kind of sad. Uh, 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 uh... The thing that is um, consistent through every Lost Belt that we've noticed so far is that there is someone in each Lost Belt that is claiming they were, are from Caldea, which is our organization, and they are helping out the citizens. Who this person is, I have no idea. I mentioned Marisbury Animosphere earlier. He's the founder of Caldea. Uh, he won a Grail War back in Fiyuki in this timeline, uh, in in the Fate Stay Night timeline, that's the city, um, in the Fate Stay Night timeline, there were like five Grail Wars, right? And every time they took place in Fiyuki. In the FGO timeline, there was only one Grail War in Fiyuki. One, one and only one. And it took place in, it was like 2001 or 2006, something like that. And in that Grail War, Marisbury Anim Animosphere wins, and with uh, he doesn't want to reach the root like most mages do. He wishes for literally just money because he wants to fund his Chaldea organization and create a device that is able to look back and raise shift people to past singularities and be able to... What, why he wanted to do all this, we still don't know. I think that is a major plot point that is going to come up later because it was essentially the whole plot point for part one. We still, even after part one, arc one of this story, know really nothing about Marisbury and his Animosphere for the most part. We know he's dead now. The anime kind of showed how his death happened and it was, he, he killed himself. It was suicide, but they made it, they staged it to look like a murder, but he killed himself. And so why any of that or how any of that happened, what would lead him to do that? We, we still don't know. And so we're hopefully gonna get answers to that eventually. I don't think it's gonna happen in Lost Belt 5 though. That's like some Lost Belt 7 shit. Um, a white, yeah, yeah, yeah. A white coat doctor that knows Magecraft. And so I've been saying this whole time ever since Lost Belt 2, um, Lost Belt 2 is when we really found out it was a mage because I think in Lost Belt 1 it was just someone saying they were from Chaldea helping out the citizens in Lost Belt 1. I originally thought it was Musashi because Musashi was going around helping the citizens and Musashi, I think she did at one point say she was from Chaldea and so I was thinking it was Musashi for a while in Lost Belt 1. Then in Lost Belt 2 this same person um, fixed one of the, uh, there was a bounded field around all these little towns where the citizens lived in, so giants couldn't get in and hurt them. And someone fixed that bounded field that Scotty had made. And I remember Master someone saying that whoever, whoever was able to fix this bounded field had to have had Magecraft on the like same level as Scotty, because Scotty created these bounded fields and this person was able to fix it 
uh, with Magecraft similar to Scotty's. So like, that's insane. This is a really powerful mage. And I was immediately like, it's, it's fucking Marsbury, dude. I think it's Marsbury. Um, so how Marsbury, because remember the anime doesn't really show a bullet going off or anything. We just know that the, this, the death was essentially staged. So I don't know if Marsbury is, was actually dead, did die or what happened, but I think whoever this person is going in between the Lost Belts has got to be Marsbury, personally. Oh, that's interesting. I think Marsbury mentioned in Solomon flashback that he wanted to reach the root in his own unique way, not by copying homework from the Einsbirds and so on. That is really interesting, okay. So maybe it is him, I don't know, because like how, I want to know more about like how Marsbury's death happened and like what the fuck happened there, because it's really interesting, right? We still know nothing about Marsbury Anim Animosphere, what happened in that Grail War and why the whole death or stage death happened. Yeah, thank you, Fez. David Blue Book is the guy on the motorcycle, which is a name like none of us have really heard before to my to my understanding. Yeah, D David's um not <laughs> David. Um David um that is something so there was a really cool moment in Lost Belt 4 where David just shows up out of nowhere, saves us and uh, he hit him and Pepe were on like really good terms. There was actually an earlier chapter where uh, they were all, to all the cryptors were talking about their lost belts. We got to see into that. And uh, um, Wodime's asking about all their progress. And Pepe says that he's got like this thing, which I'm pretty sure we now know is the cube. He, or he was say or maybe he was talking about the, 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 his lost belts king. I should probably explain that concept too, but he was talking about his lost belts king and how he was having trouble with it, I think. And uh, David was offering like advice or saying maybe he could help him out somehow. And it, that, then David pays him a visit with Koi and Skaya because normally no one can enter or leave Lost Belts. That's like an authority no one no one has. You're not able to do that. We're able to do it because we're, we have a vehicle called the Shadow Border that is literally to it, it's literally able to escape into void space, which is a space in between time and space, of course. And it's able to dive into void space and emerge wherever it wants. And uh, so we go in between reality into the Lost Belts, and that's how we're able to do it. Koi and Skaya, who is, there, there's two things I need to explain, which is Lost Belt King. So every Lost Belt has a king, which is just the ruler of that version of humanity. Um, it was Ivan the Terrible in the Russian Lost Belt. It was uh, Scotty in uh, Lost Belt 2 Scandinavia. It was Chin Chi Wong in China's, and it was, um, What's his name? God Juna. It was Arjuna Altar in uh in the Indian Lost Belt. And um going to Lost Belt 5, I have my theories on who it is because I think we know now that uh you can see them both up there in the top left corner of my stream. Um, Wodime, that's Wodime, and then the person behind him there is Canis, and I think Canis is his servant. Canis also has the authority to go in between Lost Belts. We, sh we saw her show up in Lost Belt 1 and 2, and she literally was just sent there to bully the Cryptors, essentially. <laughs> I think Wodime sent her there to check on them and make sure the Cryptors were alright, and she shows up and just bullies the fuck out of them. Um, I think Canis is her servant, right? And uh, yeah, I think I think because early on it was either in Lost Belt one or two, we got to hear from Wodime, and Wodime says that, that he's like, I can't remember what he said specifically, but he mentioned Zeus and how he's got his own like Greek Lost Belt, and we were like, oh my fuck! At that point, I was like, we're we're done, dude. We can't go against fucking Zeus. Are you kidding me? So I'm pretty sure the king of his Lost Belt is Zeus, which is yikes! Holy shit! Um, a really interesting thing in the story is that even though these Lost Belts are their only own versions of uh, humanity that got pruned from existence by the universe, um, and these cryptors are trying to grow their Lost Belts so they can win and uh, retake, I th we believe at the moment that they're trying to retake Earth as the new um, reality or the new, uh, what was that word? Not the crust, the Earth's crust. <laughs> what was the, uh... The texture, that's the word. Yeah, texture. Um, so I think, 
I, I'm, I'm at this point, I think that's what every Lost Belt's trying to do. They're trying to grow and become Earth's new texture. And they, the reason why they had to bleach the Earth first was because the, you can't overwrite the Earth's texture unless, the, it, unless it's bare, like a blank canvas. Zeus is a toddler compared to what you're going to fight in LB7. And LB7 sounds pretty insane, too. Daybit is probably the most mysterious out of every cryptor. That was the one that showed up in Lost Belt 4 and helped us out. He revealed... He literally... It was so funny what someone said. I think it was Jason in chat. Comes in chat and goes, Yeah, dude, Daybit just shows up in Lost Belt 4, saves our ass, tells us how to beat Arjuna Altar, uh, reveals that he has a grand servant and then just dips. <laughs> Doesn't elaborate, dips. And so uh, David is probably the most mysterious out of all the cryptors. He's got Lost Belt 7. He's also the furthest away from all the other Lost Belts because he's the only Lost Belt that is in the continent of, uh, of America. He's, uh, I believe he's in uh, Central America. And uh, his Lost Belt is gonna have to do with like the Aztecs, I believe. And somehow the Aztecs branched off from uh, our, uh, our our timeline, so we're gonna find out that. But um, Lost Belt Six is Britain. Lost Belt Five is uh, Greece. Lost Belt Four was India, China. Then we had China. Lost Belt Three, two is Scandinavia, and one was Russia. So all of these are really on the continents to the east, cent Central World, Eastern, right? Um, his is the only Lost Belt that is west, so it's really interesting how the Lost Belt to the west is kind of all over there on its own, kind of doing its own thing, and that's going to be the final one. And so whatever Daybit's planning is going to be revealed then. So that's what two, le a little less than two years from now we get on NA. Um, so what I was saying with the cryptors, so every cryptor has their own servant, and then there's also a uh, king in that Lost Belt. The king of every Lost Belt, um, their goals don't always align with the cryptors, which is interesting. And uh, sometimes there's some fighting going on there. There's also the alien god has three, three uh, disciples. There are these disciples of the foreign god that include... Uh, Koyanskaya, who I believe is the only one that is able to go between the Lost Belts. She she has shown up in every single one now, Koyanskaya has. Um, then we had... Who was the monk in Lost Belt 4 that we just went against? So he he showed up in Shimosa, and that was like a prelude to the, to the Lost Belts almost. Wasn't it a... Uh, Dolmen, yeah, Ashio Dolmen. Ashio Dolmen is another one. And then the uh, last one is Rasputin, aka fucking Kire. Fucking Kire Kotamine is one of them. And uh, I believe after Lost Belt 1, he mentions that Rasputin, even though he's a pseudo servant, meaning a uh, a servant or a heroic spirit that has taken the place uh, as of, of another human to use as a host. Uh, Rasputin is now taking the backseat after uh, Lost Belt 1, so now we have Kirei Kodamine in the fucking front row seat, which is a scary thought. <laughs> Yorokobe Shonen, yes, indeed. Um, so those are the three disciples of the foreign god. They are... We thought... We, we don't really know what their purpose is yet, but what is interesting, we found out in Lost Belt 4, they're not all on the same... They don't all have the same goals or ambitions, which is interesting because uh, Ashia Doman was going at Koi and Sky. Koi and Sky was like, came into the Lost Belt and was like, okay, what is going on here? Like, you're not even trying to grow this Lost Belt. It seems like you're trying to fuck it up. And then we find out at the end of Lost Belt 4, Ashia Doman was. Ashia Doman basically saw Lost Belt 4, viewed it as already a failed Lost Belt, and was trying to hurry it up to try to get rid of the Lost Belt as fast as possible. He wanted it to fail. So Ashia Doman, his purpose seems like he just wants the, he wants to hurry up the Lost Belt Grail War or whatever is going on, the co the competition between the Lost Belts. He wants to hurry that up, it seems like. Ashia Doman just wanted Lost Belt 4 to fail and he was trying to hurry that up. Um, 
Koyanskaya, we don't know much about her other than she is collecting and the animals or mythical creatures from every single Lost Belt, which is interesting. Uh, she she calls herself the NFF Services. She's like a secretary slash businesswoman that uh, enjoys like making deals with people, right? Capitalism, baby. And uh, she, as adorable as she is, she is she enjoys human suffering. But she also, like, it, she has, you know, the trope, the character trope that is in anime, film, and fiction in general, where they want people to succeed, but they want them to go through really hard hardships in order to, they want to see them overcome those hardships, but they'll put them through it because not maybe not necessarily they enjoy the suffering, but they want you to come out stronger on the other side of those hardships. That's what Koyanskaya seems like to me. You call her mommy. <laughs> yes, that is that is Vitra's character. You're right. That is exactly Vitra's character. But Koi and Skya kind of gives off those same vibes to me anyway. Um, because why else would she in Lost Belt? I mean, maybe it was just paying us back because I guess she maybe it's just the fact that she it kind of seems like she doesn't like debts left unpaid because like in Lost Belt 4, we went into that Lost Belt because she poisoned us and she gives us the cure at the end of it when she didn't have to. Or sorry, that was Lost Belt 3, not 4. In Lost Belt 3, we go into the Chinese Lost Belt because we're poisoned and we need to get the cure. And by the end of it, she gives us the cure when she didn't have to. And I thought that was interesting. Like if she wanted to get rid of us, she could have just not given us the cure and we would have died. Um, so that's interesting. Um, she's also, we found out in the Chinese Lost Belt, she's collecting animals or creatures from every Lost Belt and like creating her own fucking army. Because in Lost Belt 3, uh, we find out she unleashes, there in Lost Belt 3, there's no mythical creatures because it's like a perfect world, right? Under, Ash or not Ashia Doman, under Chin Chi Wong's eyes, it's a perfect world. There's no mythical creatures. There's no murdering or terrorizing or anything like that going or, uh, going on. Uh, and Koi and Skaya shows up is like, this world is too peaceful. And she just unleashes these fucking mythical monsters on the people. And uh, she unleashed the Kritchat, which were like the lizard monsters from the ice lizard monsters from Lost Belt 1. And then she also unleashes the giants from Lost Belt 2. So she'd been collecting the mythical creatures from Lost Belt 1 and 2, and she unleashed them in 3. And I'm assuming the little, what were the alligators called in Lost Belt 4? There were these like black and red alligators in Lost Belt 4, and I bet you she fucking collected some of those too. So. Coin's got a very interesting character. The only thing more interesting uh, is how I'm gonna get rid of this anniversary. Yeah, she is coming out as a servant as well. So uh, that's what we know there. I think I've explained just about everything now. The cryptors, which are the uh, the quote unquote masters in every Lost Belt that we go against. Every cryptor has a servant. Every Lost Belt has a king. Uh, and then you have the disciples of the foreign gods too that kind of show up here and there. Um, Kire Kotamine, we haven't seen, I don't think, since we went into Lost Belt 2. We haven't seen Kire, aka Rasputin, since he took Kadok back from us. So after Lost Belt 1, we captured Kadok, which was the cryptor. Oh, I know something else. Every cryptor has a, seri uh, a, a command spell called the Sirius Light. We don't know anything about that still. Um, the Sirius Light is a command spell that all cryptors have. Kadok, which was the master in Lost Belt 1, the cryptor in Lost Belt 1, uh, he mentions at the end of it that he would use his to remake this Lost Belt, whatever that means. We still don't understand what remake this Lost Belt means necessarily. Then, after he never used it, uh, we captured him, took him out of the Lost Belt, but then Kire slash Rasputin literally chases us down in the fucking border, sprinting at us with a rocket launcher, <laughs> collects Kadok and leaves. And Rasputin, or Kadok thinks Rasputin's gonna kill him when he captures him to shut him up, but, uh, and because he had failed, his Lost Belt got destroyed. But Kire slash Rasputin says something really specific that uh, I thought was interesting. He says that as long as you own that serious light command spell on your hand, your soul belongs to the alien god. Then in Lost Belt 2, 
uh, Ophelia actually uses hers, and we find out that uh, when a cryptor uses their serious like command spell, I think she she I can't remember what she did specifically, but she used it to either weaken or do something so that we could actually fight uh, Schuttner, if I'm pronouncing that right, the the giant king god thing. Uh, she, anyway, she uses it, and we find out that when these cryptors use their serious light, I believe it it kills them. It might have also been because she used her eye, too, or she, like, literally blew up her own eye to sever the connection between her and Shitnir because his, like, their connection was in her eye somehow. So it might have been that as well, but I thought I remember sp there was some text specifically that said the serious light command spell, like, drained her of all everything she had and that was part of the reason why she died i believe so that's the other thing the serious lights are interesting um we still don't know anything about them because in lost belt 3 and lost belt 4 they weren't even mentioned i don't think the uh, serious light command spells but we know that every cryptor has a serious light command spell they are very powerful command spells uh, but we don't know what they do per se. For anyone who doesn't know what a command spell is, it's just the, uh, you can see it right there on the gameplay screen, right by my master, my master's icon face right there. Command spells. Every master in Fate has a command spell. They're basically a symbol that have, they're a symbol made up of three different things. And when you use a command spell, you can force your servant to do something specific even if they don't want to it for the command spell commands your servant to do something specific so the fact that the cryptors have one the serious light command spell is tied to their law spell somehow i believe how it, it's able to affect reality itself in it's like a command spell for the reality within the law spell is what my theory is at the moment um because ophelia used it to affect the giant god shitnir in law spell 2 and in Lost Belt 1, Caddock said that he was going to remake the fucking world with it, whatever that means. It's called a command spell for the reason. Oh, shit. All right, I think that's about it. I think I covered everything. I just wanted to recap basically everything so far. So every Lost Belt has a king. Every Lost Belt has a Master slash Cryptor. Every Master slash Cryptor has their own servant. And we are going in there to try to remove a tree. These Lost Belt trees are what is grounding the Lost Belt reality to the Earth. So we need to chop down the tree, get to hacking, chop down these trees. And uh, when we chop down the tree, the Lost Belt will collapse and be gone. Um, so that's what the goal is, essentially. The galactic trees, yeah. We don't need what I. We don't know what the fuck it means, but every every single one of these trees has a galaxy within it, and every single one of these trees is named after a galaxy as well. PV reaction. Um, we could. I well, actually, the music. Fucking, I'm gonna get copyrighted for that shit. I think last time I did a PV reaction, I got copyrighted. I was so pissed. So we'll just go into it. I know some people get worried because the PVs uh, have spoilers, but I see them all over social media anyway. It's pretty hard to avoid the PVs when they're just like blatantly used as advertisement material. You know what I mean? So I've already seen most of the PVs, but it's just 30 seconds of animation. And uh, normally it's all out of context, so I don't really count them as spoilers. Um, I probably won't show it on stream just because I don't want to get copyrighted, though. Um... Yeah, that I, I've heard people say they have spoilers in them. I've already seen them all though. <laughs> like the uh, I haven't seen the Lost Belt Seven one because I wanted to go into that like completely spoiler free. But I'll probably see it eventually. I've even seen the uh, Lost Belt Six ones. I don't know what any of it means because it's just like I said, thirty seconds of animation, and I can't really put together everything. It's not like I go through it frame by frame. I just like look at the pretty animation for the most part. But I don't know what any of it means. So. We're gonna continue though. Let me crack a cold one. And we're gonna finally hop into this. Here we go. Lost Belt 5. The ancient ocean of the dreadnought gods, Atlantis. Time for suffering. <laughs> Good morning, Senpai. Is your formal dress all ready to go? I know it's been a long two weeks since we got back from the Indian Lost Belt. 
but today they're finally supposed to finish making modifications to the shadow border and complete construction on the new Nautilus that has the shadow border at its core. I can't wait to see what it looks like once they let us back into the dock at 9 a.m. I remember Captain was very particular about having us quote, wake up at the crack of dawn and remain on standby until further notice, which just makes me much more curious. <clears throat> testing, testing, everything good with this mic? Hey guys, can you hear me? Are my dulcet tones carrying clearly to your waiting ears? Tomlin, Kawada, Octavia, Chin, Kayen, Elron, Marcus, Munair, Director Gordoff, Match, and the last but not least, Max. As the 11 staff members of Novum Caldea, your patience has been much appreciated. Now come on down to the dock and meet our brand new ship. That's right, it's time for the launch ceremony for Captain Nemo's Nautilus. Gotta have the voice acting, baby. <laughs> what the hell? So I knew Nemo had his own crew. It was like four of the same sprite, though. So he... I don't know if the Nautilus made him more powerful, but I did notice, because they kind of were hyping this up a little bit, that Nemo's Noble Phantasm, I believe, he probably has multiple, some servants have multiple, but one of Nemo's abilities is to create his own crew by like literally cloning different portions of his himself, which is interesting. And they, I know it's not directly tied to the Nautilus because before Lost Belt 4, there were kind of like, hints, bits, bits and pieces here and there with like Gordoff or Munair saying like, I think I just saw like a little, <laughs> like, a, a, like a little version of Nemo running around back there. Shadow clone jitsu. <laughs> hey, thanks for coming to celebrate with us. We're so lucky we got put on the Nautilus together in this secret underground dock like this. Congratulations guys, we deserve it. I can't wait till we can set sail. Congratulations to you too, Max and Mash. You guys are gonna be there for tomorrow's test voyage too, right? Oh man, it's gonna be so much fun. I wonder if we can still fire torpedoes into the Void Sea. Um, Master, do you know why there are so many Nemos here? It's a whole series of Nemos. The Nemo series. No, but I've seen them around here and there before. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Like, they have shown up, like, we haven't seen the actual sprites, but there have been hints in dialogue that, like, Nemo has, like, little clones running around. Hey, who said you could leave your posts? You're making a mockery of the launch ceremony, damn it. Marines, line up! Uh, look out, guys. Captain's all mad. Come on, let's all line up. That's more like it. Now roll call. Uh, Nemo Marine reporting for duty. I'm in charge of the deck, and I want you to... Re and I want you to requisition me a new mop. Uh, Nemo Marine reporting for duty. I'm in charge of loading the really, really heavy torpedoes. Will somebody trade posts with me? Nemo Marine reporting for duty. I'm in charge of the computer room, and I'm still not sure taking notes by hand is really the best idea. Nemo Marine reporting for duty. I'm in charge of cleaning the kitchen and bathrooms. A clean ship is a happy ship. Nemo Marine reporting for duty. I'm in charge of... Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, Monero is like really into. Uh, how do you say it? At Androm, fuck. I'm gonna butcher the word. How do you say Androgynous? Androgynous. 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 Andro. Oh my god, that is. I don't know why that's a tough word for me. Yeah, it basically means having traits of neither male nor female, or having both male and female traits. And uh, Munir is very into that. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Oh, for that's enough, damn it. I was a bit overwhelmed with all the new information even before this parade of identical faces. What is the meaning of this, Captain? Since when do you have so many subordinates? 
That's as silly as asking a fluvial sculpin why it swims upstream, Gorloff. The Marines are clones, or instances of me who have specialized in different operations. Having a large enough crew is essentially a part of the voyage. I didn't make the Marines for you guys, I made them solely to help with the ship, and the ship is where they'll stay. You could say they're animated metaphors for my mental support structure. They're fully autonomous, possible alternate versions of me who... Thank you, Captain. I'll take it for here. You have many talents, but explaining things is clearly not one of them. You see, the ability Captain is using to make these clones belongs to neither Nemo, the heroic spirit, nor Triton, the divine spirit. That's also that's right. In Lost Belt 4, we also found out that Nemo is also a combination of both Nemo, the heroic spirit, and then the god Triton. <laughs> so that's why he's so good at uh, navigating the ocean. Those of us at the Atlas Institute use a technique called memory partition as part of our basic thought process. So I gave Captain the ability to use it when I formed a contract with him. Essentially, it lets you, well, partition your brain so that you can have multiple selves processing different things simultaneously. In Captain's case, that resulted in him gaining the ability to create multiple physical selves that all act with complete autonomy. In other words, all the work pertaining to running a ship that Captain Nemo has been doing by himself to date, or perhaps more accurately, all the work he had been wishing to do but was thus unable to carry out due to a lack of personnel, is now being carried out by all these other Nemos thanks to the evolution he independently achieved. Wow, talk about a hard worker. Damn, I wish I had that abil ability. Sion, yeah, dude, she's adorable. Is it? I, I, I keep. I, I I always get worried with pronunciations. Is it Sion or Shion? Because I've heard it. I've heard it said both ways from like YouTube videos. C like C like the letter Sion or she like she. On. Atlas stop being. It's Sion. Okay. Atlas stop being crazy challenge impossible. <laughs> wow. Talk about a hard worker. Then they don't all just look like Nemo. They are all Nemo. Aye, aye, sir. Though, of course, we all have to do whatever the captain tells us to do. So there's going to be a lots and lots of Nemos working on board the Nautilus then. Well, the number of Marines will change depending on the circumstances. Also, the Marines aren't the only other Nemos in my Nemo series. I'll introduce you to them properly when the time is right, but for now, there's Nemo Professor whose job is to analyze situations, come up with plans, and conduct scientific research. Aww. Next, there's Nemo Baker, the cook, who will be in charge of preparing everyone's meals. All these roles are important, of course, but hers stands out in particular. Oh my gosh, the sprites are adorable. Then, there's Nemo Engineer, who's so cantankerous you'd never believe she was me. She'll just as soon throw a wrench at you as look at you. <laughs> Those along with the Marines are the crew I'll be taking along to run the ship. The only downside is that bringing the boarder aboard the new Nautilus means there won't be any room for a bakery, so I won't be calling Baker. No Baker? Oh man, that's a real shame. Still, it's looking more and more like a real submarine, isn't it? When you're... When are you gonna take it out for a test drive, Captain? Oh, I'd like to do that no later than tomorrow. We'll need to cross an ocean from the Age of Gods in this next Lost Belt, so I have to make sure everything is ship-shaped, figuratively, figurative, figuratively speaking. However, the only ones who will be coming with me are Mash and Max. The rest of you will be staying here. What? Why? We have our reasons, Munair. Sorry, it just wasn't in the cards this time. While Captain Mash and Max are out there are testing the Nautilus, the rest of our work... The rest have our work cut out for us getting ready to infiltrate the Atlantic Lost Belt. Developing the ultra-long-range lens, double it, doubling and tripling the Nautilus's defensive systems, reinforcing Max's mystic codes, fine-tuning Mash's Ortnax. Basically, Munair, we have all... We all have an absolute ton of things to do here. We just don't have the time to spare for you to be wasting your magecraft expertise on submarine test drives. Ah, oh, damn it, of all the rotten luck. If I'd known I was gonna... 
it was gonna hold me back like this one day, I would have sold my magical crest and gotten out of the Magecraft game long ago. <laughs> That's the boldest statement I've heard in a long time. But in case you need a reminder, if you weren't a mage, you would have never been hired at Chaldea in the first place. So how about you just resign yourself to helping the technical advisor like a good little lackey, and let me take responsibility for what is sure to be a delightful Nautilus test dive. You sure, Gordy? You do know they're going for a test drive in the Void Sea, not the Wandering Sea, right? Uh, uh, yes. As I was saying, I will let Max handle it, as I have a lot of, uh, uh, directory work I need to do myself. Yes, uh, quite a lot indeed. Then it's settled. This afternoon, I'll be holding a class to explain all about the Nautilus's equipment and facilities, as well as what to do in case of emergency. Then tomorrow, Max, Mash, and Captain will take it out for a test drive. While they're off doing that, the rest of us will be getting things ready here at the Wandering Sea for our infiltration of the Atlantic Lost Belt. It'll probably take around seven days to wrap everything up here, so this could be your last chance to relax on standby for a while. Make sure you're all well rested so that you can give your best for what's to come. Uh, right. Got it. That goes for you too, Da Vinci. Yeah, miss fucking sleeping standing up. Lolly Vinci glasses equals perfection. Yes, I want to roll for her. She goes on rate up. Oh, I thought that said Lost Belt 5.2. I was like, that was it? 5.1's done? Um, I know Lolly Vinci goes on fucking uh, rate up right before is it right before koi and skaya or right it's right before lost belt six i think and i really want her just because of the the fact that she can farm doors so well as a fucking uh because the doors are the qp nodes the doors are casters and riders are effective against casters and i was literally just going to use her to farm doors <laughs> What's up, Baremi? How you doing? We are here. <clears throat> wait, how? Wait, how does imagine? I I need to, I need to, I never read Imaginary Scramble. I finished the event just for all the stuff, but um, they said it quote unquote had Lost Belt Four spoilers, but I'm pretty sure the only Lost Belt Four spoilers it had were just the fact that ne it, it, fucking the captain is Nemo that reveal. I think that was the only Lost Belt 4 spoiler that was in... Which I already knew, too. I was just worried I was going to get spoiled on something else, but I never read the uh, Imaginary Scramble event, so when that get when that comes back around, I don't think it's going to be an event, but it'll be a main interlude, and I'd like to read it when it comes back around. Oh, the Imaginary Scramble was the Nautilus test drive. Gotcha. Okay. Huh. All right. I want to see what the map looks like. I haven't even seen the map yet. Oh, are we going to get more on the uh, David Blue Book? Yeah. This is the motorcycle guy I was talking about. My journey is drawing to an end. It won't be long now before I arrive at my destination in southern Nevada. Not that it'll change anything once I get there. I certainly won't be a... It certainly won't be getting a reward for my trouble. Nor do I have a home to return to, or enough fuel to get me there, even if I did. Also, I don't think I mentioned it when I was explaining the Lost Belts, but we also got from one of these David Blue Book journal entries what exactly happened when the world was bleached, and the, the Lost Belt trees that landed extended their branches all across the Earth's atmosphere which took like seven days or something like that. And then right at once, once the branches were covering the entire earth, tendrils slash branches descended down to earth and would straight up impale humans. And when they impaled the humans, it would just disintegrate their entire body. Can you imagine that shit? How terrifying that would be and like earth not being able to do anything against that. And so these tendrils, these fucking tentacles slash branches would descend down from the sky and just start impaling humans and disintegrating their bodies. Fucking terrifying. Imaginary Scramble's basically the test drive gone wrong. What's up, Merlin? How you doing? <clears throat> 
The only point this journey ever had was to get where I was going. Well, no, that may be technically ac may be technically accurate, but it's still not quite right. Let me be clear, so I don't invite any misunderstandings. When I say I don't have a home to return to, I don't mean that in the heartless, cold-blooded bastard sense. My home may be gone now, but I still remember it clearly, and as long as I have those memories, I'll never feel the pain of its loss. See, since I was born, I've had the ability, for better or worse, to recall anything I've ever seen in perfect detail. It's called hyperthymesia. Hopefully I didn't butcher that. <laughs> Though it's more commonly known as a superior autobiolo autobiographical memory. He's got a picture memory. My friends considered it a disability and sympathized with the drawbacks, but scientists considered it a gift. It drove me insane when I was a kid at some points. It caused me to hate cities and people in general. When I grew up, I left the city behind and started living a much quieter life out in a village near the mountains. As a result, I've only spent about a third of my life in busy urban areas, so I'm not really overburdened with memories of those places. Still, my memories are just as clear now as, the ever, as they ever were. I can see the friends I used to hang out with smiling and laughing as if they were right here with me. Okay, that's a little more complex than a picture memory. <laughs> of course, that includes the beautiful scenery and the stars that used to twinkle bright all across the nighttime sky. Maybe that's why I couldn't shake my doubts about why this happened the way it did. See, when I mentioned, I thought it was significant that he said, the sun is now shining across all corners of the earth. It, we don't even know if earth is still in Seoul, in our solar system, huh? Because it sound, this sounds like some HP Lovecraft, like creepy cosmic horror type shit. If there's nowhere on Earth you can see the night sky now, the Earth is just constantly shining as if the sun, the sun is shining down on all corners of the Earth. The Earth really is flat, gentlemen. <laughs> the trees made the Earth flat, yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's why I couldn't shake my doubts about why this happened the way it did. Something just seemed off. I don't mean the Earth's surface being bleached white. I mean, it feels like something even bigger has changed, but in a way I can't put my finger on. Ooh, I love this, dude. This is so fucking, like, Lovecraftian, dude. Whatever it is, I've noticed it at different points during this journey. There was something different about the skies above Russia, Scandinavia, China, India, or whatever it was. They weren't the same skies I had seen before. There must be other, another change occurring in places I'm not privy to, or maybe some other humans besides me are struggling to fight back. Maybe they're doing their best to retake this world, this planet, this universe for humanity even as I speak. Unfortunately, as intriguing as that possibility is, those places are much too far away for me to make a detour, and I have precious little time left as it is. I ran out of food yesterday, and my bike's not going to last much longer either. Again, once I reach my destination, my journey is over. It would be nice if whoever's causing these changes taking place around the world were to stop by the States. But I doubt anyone who's lost as hard as me and the rest of humanity have anything close to that kind of good luck left. What a strange feeling. I was gonna mention at one point, or this has been in the back of my mind, how it kind of sucks how all these lost belts are in different, like, very rarely does, I know I, this is my dumbass Western United States brain saying, you, you put America in more things, but I was gonna say, like, it kind of sucks there isn't, like, an American lost belt. That'd be interesting, but you have shit going on in America in the background anyway, so, like, it, it doesn't really make sense for a Lost Belt to be here, because America is included in the Lost Belt storyline, it's just not a Lost Belt itself. It's the, uh, the Area 51 shit. South America, take it or leave it. What's up, Hunter Frank? Go, go, guy, guy! Yeah, dude, the fucking kid from Shimosa. Bring him back. Oh, wait. Shimosa was technically a Lost Belt. That kid got fucking pruned. <laughs> Sag. What a strange feeling. He's arrived, Area 51, baby. Even if this is the end for me, in multiple senses, it still feels good to achieve the goal I set out for myself. Why did humanity die out? Why did these alien invaders show up? 
Why did they conquer us by bleaching the earth white? F for the most aggressive baby ever. My heart is racing at the prospect of possibi possibly uncovering the answers to all these other mysteries. I've arrived at the U.S. Air Force Base, once known as Area 51. It's the one place, the only part of the texture on the entire planet that managed to evade the bleaching. Oh, this is in real time. I thought this was an old, old picture. So this is what he's staring at right now. Area 51. The one place, the only part of this Earth, of the Earth's texture on the entire planet that has managed to evade the bleaching. The sheer secrecy surrounding this place led to all sorts of rumors about high-tech experiments and training being conducted here, but you'd never know that looking at it now. Not only are there no survivors here, there's not so much as a single piece of cutting-edge equipment. Any seaplanes and armored tanks that have been here before are long gone. And since there's no power, I doubt I'll be able to stock up on food or water either. On the plus side, the buildings are mostly untouched, so at least I shouldn't have to go sifting through the rubble. What's up, Sanchez? I had a dream about you. Let's fucking go. Was it a nightmare? <laughs> Even in Japanese game, Area 51 has plot armor. God damn it. I can't believe it. Rain clouds cropped up here out of nowhere. I guess that means it still rains in the last area on Earth that hasn't been bleached away. I pushed my excitement down to keep it from getting the better of me and began carefully making my way through the base. The rain clouds that cropped up in the skies overhead stuck out the whole time I was there. That's really interesting because he mentioned how the sun was beating down on every corner of the planet. So I doubt there were even like so much as clouds around the whole world. But now rain clouds just show up on the only area that hasn't been bleached too. So it's almost like... I mean, you wouldn't be able to look at it in, but I was going to say it's almost like... Area 51 has its own, like, a uh, reality marble, like, around it. Interesting. No cutting-edge equipment, huh? Notes. The rain clouds that cropped up in the skies overhead stuck around the whole time I was there. I learned several things from my expedition into the, into the inside of the base, the part completely cut out from the outside world. I wish I could offer my own personal insights on what I found, but since I'm running low on both time and energy, I'll have to stick to just the facts. What did he find? This base did, in fact, contain an alien life form. What? 2018, Subject E relocation. 2018, initiate Subject E examination. According to the documents I found, this subject had flown to New Mexico in the, near t in the year 2018. The craft it had been piloting either burned up when it entered Earth's atmosphere or was possibly destroyed by the subject itself, according to a handwritten note. Leaving the subject completely exposed upon its discovery, the injuries sustained during its emergency landing had left it critically wounded and near death. But by flash freezing it, the Air Force managed to preserve its life functions. They then brought it to this base. All the other records pertaining to the subject can be summed up in a single word. Gruesome. The scientists performed all kinds of tests, experiments, and surgeries in order to keep this alien visitor alive. They conducted clinical trials with different kinds of medicine. They tested every known substance on Earth to see how it would react. They observed reactions that corresponded to pain. They observed reactions that corresponded to joy. To measure its endurance, they stopped supplying it with nutrition. Then they tried burning it, freezing it, melting it, attached things to it. They stirred its intestines around, cut off parts of its body, measured signals from the organs they thought were its brain. They performed all of this research, what could also be called the very crystallization of human history on the subject while it was still living. Uh-oh. 
It didn't take long for the surgical procedures meant to re- What is that word? Resuscitate. Resuscitate. Oh, to revive something from unconsciousness. It didn't take long for the surgical procedures meant to resuscitate the subject to morph into brutally exploitative experiments. And since the cells taken from the subject's samples were made up of elements that didn't exist anywhere on the planet, it wasn't hard to imagine that further research could eventually lead to military and civilian applications. Truth be told, that was where the top brass's true interests slide. After all, ever since the turn of the 20th century, the energy race between nations had only continued to pick up speed, and there was now an insurmountable gap between industrial nations and developing ones. I could tell from poring over the documents that they began with the best of intentions. Oh. I could tell from poring over the documents that they began with the best of intentions. They wanted their research to result in a better life for every person on Earth, to help humanity move past its endless squabbling for wealth and forge ahead with new, loftier goals. However, Area 51's researchers didn't see things the same way. With every experiment they ran, they became more and more certain that the subject was emitting a constant unknown signal. It was calling for help. So they thought if they kept running experiments on it, if they kept inflicting greater levels of pain on it, even more potential test subjects would bound, be bound to show up. Well, you idiots, you doomed the earth. <laughs> That's why all this happened. This wasn't a natural disaster. It was a man-made one. But is that truly the reason? I finally know why those trees came here. Now, I just have to confirm one last thing. Was this the true cause? Was there really a Subject E here at this base? I have to see it for myself. And I have to do it before I die of malnutrition. It took me several days to discover that door. E, reference room a secret area that had been built even further underneath the base's underground structure. I managed to open the door and make my way inside the sealed-off passageway. I can already tell there's something here. This is it. This is where I'll find the answers I've been seeking. There's just something different about the air in this passageway that makes that all too clear. My instruments aren't picking up anything unusual, even though the passageway itself is like something from another world, entirely removed from what we think as of at Whoa, 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 what? My instruments aren't picking up anything unusual, even though the passageway itself is like something from another world, entirely removed from what we think of as reality. I know this passageway is made out of iron and steel, but it feels like I'm walking on pulsating jelly. I make my way across the simultaneously hard, soft, warm, cold floor, one careful step at a time. My body temperature is dropping like a stone. I can barely breathe. My consciousness is hanging on by a thread. I can't even remember how many days it's been since I last had something to eat or drink. Soon, I won't even have enough energy left to talk into this recorder. But I can't stop thinking now. I have to find the answers before I die. Answers that I'm sure lie just beyond this passage. Monka. Huh? The only sound that escaped my lips was a quiet gasp of shock. It was the most retro room I could have imagined. If I hadn't known better, I would have never thought it was located in the middle of one of the most high-tech bases on Earth. And yet... There it was, atop the examination table, a bizarre thing that resembled nothing so much as a dead tree. What the fuck am I looking at? <laughs> Wait, that's not the alien, is it? That's not the tree. This is someone that was waiting for him? Unknown person. Hey there, it's about time you showed up, blue book. 
Oh! They capped my boy. That's it? No way, dude. No way you're gonna leave it like that. Come on. Nah. <laughs> What's up, Alex? <laughs> Do I have space on my friends list? I don't think so. Nah, I'm at 95 out of 95. Whenever I level up, I'm always down to add viewers, though. Dude, what the f- How are you gonna end it there? Well, I guess now we know... That- that is where they're- Oh my god, that's just where Blue Book's story ends for now. Oh man, dude. <laughs> Fuck. So now we're back at the fucking Cryptor's Jedi Council meeting. That's all I've got to report. Any other questions? This isn't like you, Pepe. Didn't you always used to tell us we should act our cheeriest when we've lost? Unless, of course, you don't consider the Indian loss belt disappearing a loss at all? My, my. I see that at least your sharp tongue has managed to... managed a full recovery, Kadok. Alrighty then, let me rephrase. Not only did I get to fight with my loss belt's king, with my very own servant... Wait. Not only did I get in a fight with my lost belt's king, my very own servant washed his hands of me. And I had to run all the way here with my tail between my legs after Caldia, our sworn enemy, saved my life. I'm clearly the best cryptor. But at least the, the roasted bananas were super yummy. <sighs> Never mind, I take it back. You're just as cheery as ever. Now shut up already, will you? Now that's our Pepper and Chino. Besides, it's still too soon to declare yourself a loser. Knowing you, you must have really gotten in their good graces, right? <laughs> there's more to There's more to a death match than just slipping a knife between the other guy's ribs. Getting your opponent attached to you is a pro level long game move. So the way things are going, I'm betting their next destination will be their last, am I right? Oh, yes. This next one will settle things once and for all. They won't be going to your lost belt. I mean, now that they have a ship, they're all but certain to come here. Even though that particularly guarantees their demise. Huh. <laughs> well, damn. That's real brave of them. Gotta give them props for that. Hats off to you, Caldia. We couldn't have asked for a better guy to fill in that last seat. Uh, oh, what was his name again? Ah, who cares? Like it makes it any difference to me anyway. Point is, this next drink's for you, Master What's-His-Face. You must be feeling real good about yourself now that you've strangled four innocent Lost Belts in their proverbial cradles. Hmm. We can't be sure the Chaldeans... The Chaldeans will come to the Atlantic Lost Belt just yet. Who knows? Maybe they'll end up gunning for you next, Barrel. So if you've got time to be making shitty, tasteless analogies, maybe you ought to spend it getting ready for them. Huh? <laughs> you serious, Caddock? You really think I might be next? Are you feeling okay? What are you talking about? I'm just saying it's possible that... Oh, Krishtaria hasn't told you? Well, hey, since all the alter egos aren't here at the moment, so we don't have to worry about them... You mind if I tell him myself, boss? No. This directly concerns the next phase of the plan, so I'll fill him in myself. Safert, the Tree of Emptiness in Barrel's English Lost Belt has already been felled. Oh, wait, what? That's interesting. How the fuck is it still there, then? That's super interesting. The Tree of Emptiness in Barrel's English Lost Belt, the one in Britain, has already been felled. I secretly asked Barrel to see to it that the English Lost Belt would go away on its own accord. It, it's already been felled? Then you're saying the English Lost Belt doesn't exist anymore? Nope. It 
ought to fall apart and disappear real soon now, and for the record, you have no idea how hard it was to pull that off. The English, the English Lost Belt, or British Lost Belt, as they like to put it, has like a thousand phantasmal beasts for every one of the few humans there, and you can easily find yourself in a whole different world with completely different rules if you just go a little way down the path. It's a hellish wonderland, and coming from me, a guy who has ra been raised in the UK, that's saying something. So it wasn't easy sweet-talking them into cutting down the Tree of Emptiness themselves. <laughs> They're probably cursing my name to hell and gone for tricking... They're probably cursing my name to hell and gone for tricking them right about now. Not that it's going to do them any good. It, is that true? Because unless my eyes are playing tricks on me, I'm pretty sure I can still see a wall of light around the English Lost Belt. Yes, I've seen it too. But even so, the English Tree of Emptiness is most assuredly gone. Once the Tree of Emptiness grows tall enough to reach the stratosphere, their branches start to interfere with one another, resulting in a kind of network. And we haven't seen a single signal from Savert for a few days now. I doubt it will be long before the, that accursive wall of light. The world's end follows suit and disappears as well. Alright then, next question. Why do you get rid of the English Lost Belt like this? I thought our Lost Belts were only supposed to fight each other once their territories made contact. It just goes to show that there are exceptions to every rule, Kadok. This may be different, difficult for you to understand, since you have no way of knowing how deep London's, that is to say, the Clock Tower's abyss runs. But the English Lost Belt is the only one that cannot be allowed to remain. Nothing good could ever come from it, not for us, and not for the foreign god. That is, oh man, dude, I don't know what's going on there, but now I'm so interested in LV6. However, the foreign god knows nothing of this planet's history, and we have no way to explain. We can't even say anything to the priestess, as her role is purely observational. That's also something else. So there is this alien god priestess that has shown up in every Lost Belt at some point, in, I don't, I can't remember if it showed up in Lost Belt 3 or not, but in Lost Belt 1, it showed up at the very end, and what was significant about the alien priestess was when we, when we saw the alien priestess appear in front of the tree, when we were trying to chop down the tree in LB1, uh, Da Vinci and Holmes and Gordolf on the shadow border couldn't see the priestess at all. We were asking them, like, do you look at the radar, look at look at your screens. Do you see the priestess in front of the tree right now? And they were like, we don't see anything. And they were like, wait. They looked and were scanning for magical energy signatures, and they couldn't see this alien priestess, but there was a blank spot, perfectly shaped like her, that was in the spot where she was supposed to be and so it wasn't that they could see her it was that there was nothing there where there should be something which is super interesting and so she the alien priestess shows up in lb1 cuts down the tree for us or weakens it so we can find it fight it one or the other or no i think we did fight it we couldn't chop it down she shows up and cuts it down in one fucking swoop in lb2 she shows up and uh, just as comforting Ophelia, i think um, this alien priestess hasn't said a word to anyone, or it seems like it could communicate with Pepe at one point, but I'm not sure if Pepe was just talking to himself, maybe. I don't, I don't remember it showing up in LB3, and then in LB4, it does show up at the end again. Uh, I don't know if it telepathically communicated with Pepe, or Pepe was probably just talking to himself, knowing Pepe, but, um... Pepe said something significant to it. He called it U. Just the letter U. Not U like Y-O-U, but he called it the letter U. Whatever that means. But I remember writing that down because I thought that was interesting. <clears throat> Is this game any good? Um, If you're into the Fate franchise, it has a really interesting uh, story. I, I enjoy it. U, huh? <laughs> Oh, that's right. We did see it. Yeah. Um, it also, uh, the alien priestess did show up and we saw it personally for the first time 
walking around at night, it just showed up and stared at us and then fucked off. <laughs> Creepy. <laughs> Whoa, I'm of course nothing can good from come from the nothing good can come from the British Lost Belt. They have beans and toast. Beans on toast. <laughs> you, I wonder what that could stand for. That I I thought about it for a while. I have no idea. <laughs> I literally thought about it for so long, and I was like, uh. It's just weird how it was just the letter U. I don't know. <clears throat> You're surprised I'm, I I have to actively avoid spoilers, man. There was there's definitely some stuff I have been spoiled on, but most of it is just like YouTube thumbnails for the most part, you know what I mean? Like I don't as long it's pretty easy to avoid spoilers if you're actively avoiding them, right? If you're not searching them out, it's I, I think it's pretty easy to avoid spoilers, or I've always thought that. <sighs> All right. So, however, the foreign god knows nothing about this planet's history, and we have no way to explain it. We can't even say anything to the priestess, as her role is purely observational. All that aside, Kadok and Pepperoncino, the fact remains that I should have told you about this, and I didn't. For that, I am sorry. Uh, no point apologizing about it at this point. I still don't like it, but at least I'm in the loop now. Same here. Besides, I'd already figured out that Beryl was up to something. But you know, Kishtaria, all that said, does that mean your tree of emptiness is the only one still operating? Huh. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. Have you forgotten about David's Lost Belt? That leaves two. I guess. Only problem with that is I can't see anything that looks like a tree of emptiness anywhere around South America. So I take it that means all the branches connected to the, that canopy covering the sky are from that... the Atlantic trees, then? Ah, oh, good grief. I really can't get anything past you, can I, Pepe? That's correct. My tree of emptiness is the only one receiving the blessings of the foreign god's earth-covering canopy. What's more, my tree of emptiness has also grown to complete maturity. Once we confirm the English Lost Belt's disappearance, our plan will enter its final stage. The canopy hasn't only been absorbing the Earth's mana, it's also been soaking up all manner of cosmic rays, the kind that Earth's magnetic field usually deflects. We will focus the entirety of that combined energy to a single point, thereby enabling the foreign god to descend upon this planet. What? Wait, run that back. <laughs> so the canopy, which I'm assuming is the roots that are covering the sky, have haven't only been absorbing the Earth's mana, they've also been soaking up all manner of cosmic rays, the kind that the Earth's magnetic field usually deflects. We will focus the entirety of that combined energy onto a single point, thereby enabling the foreign god to descend upon this planet. That sounds terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> From there, the changeover should be swift and all-encompassing. The old world will perish, and a new order will be established on this planet. A grand order? And I will be the last human left. Huh. There he goes talking a big game again. You sure that's all gonna go off without a hitch, Wodheim? The more you time, the more time you spend grandstanding like some kind of puffed-up royal, the more chances they'll have to show up here and ruin everything. I'm very well aware of that, Cadoc. Caldia has always taken keen advantage of their opponents' neg negligence and pride to turn the tide in their favor, which is why I've sent out the strongest forces at my command to the Atlantic. That's also why you haven't seen Canis here. Uh, I wasn't worried or anything. Knowing you, I figured you'd have all your bases covered. So it would seem, wouldn't it? Then we might as well just sit back and see what Kishtaria's got. 
In that case, I think I'll keep mooching around here, just like Caddox been. How about you, Beryl? If you stick around in the English Lost Belt. Who there? Oh, he's here. <laughs> hey, you don't gotta tell me. If I had stuck around there, it'd be just a matter of time before they came for my head. Uh, Beryl, when did you... My, my, so you've already long since flown the coop. I should have figured you knew exactly what you were doing. All right, but seriously, I was downright terrified out there. I was all like, I can't take this crazy island anymore. I'm getting out of here while I still can. Then I jumped off a cliff into the ocean and had Canis come pick me up. All right, and get a load of this. You guys will never believe what I went through over there. See, that Lost Belt was home to a princess who knew nothing, and I do mean nothing, about the ways of the world, so I figured I could take advantage of her in all sorts of ways if I had got on her good graces. But uh, she had her head up in a fairy tale land way more than I could have imagined. I mean, clingy. Even when she found out I was a human spy, she didn't bat a damn eye. She just snuggled right up against me saying things like, I would follow you into the bowels of hell itself. I mean, how stupid can you get? She knew I'd ruined her whole damn nation and she didn't even care. How am I supposed to deal with that? It's beyond ridiculous. Take it from me, Caddock. Don't go putting the moves on royalty unless you're sure you know what you're doing. Ah, oh, piss off. Don't you pull that big brother shit on me now. Besides, I'm never putting any moves on royalty again. Wait, again? Did you just say again, Caddock? Had some experiences with royalty then, have we? Oh, I can tell this is going to be the best news I've heard in forever. Tell me everything. Don't spare a single juicy detail. Oh, forget it. There's nothing to tell. If you don't have anything useful to say, then keep your mouth shut for once. Hey, now, you can't expect us not to care about something like this, right? I mean, it's not like romantic escapades are a regular thing for you. Come on, Pepper and Chino. This calls for a change in venue. Hell, we could even get Koi and Skya in on this. Oh, I'm so in. Right now, I don't care what it might cost to coax some juicy secret tidbits out of Koinskaya. Ah, uh, fine. Go ahead and drink yourself, silly. I'm going back to my room. <laughs> oh, come on. We're just having a bit of fun, Caddock. Lighten up for a change. Now how about you show me where I can find a nice place to hang around? I only just got here, but I know this Atlantic Lost Belt's supposed to be amazing. <laughs> if that's any indication, we shouldn't have to worry about Beryl for a while. Though I do hope the scent of blood will eventually wash off him. Anyway, let me know if anything changes, Wodaim. I might not be too useful, but I'm sure there's still something I could do to help out. Now then. Perhaps it's time you considered sharing your own opinion before I make my final move, Priestess. This could be your last chance, seeing as the foreign god's disciples have yet to even realize that I have my own goals in all of this. What? That's her, that's the foreign priestess. Hmm. <laughs> you must have seen the adjustments I made to my Tree of Emptiness, along with the way my interests align with Zeus's, even if our conclusions differ. But somehow, in spite of all that, you continue to do nothing. Very well, then. I'll not waste more time asking why you continue to insist on observing rather than acting. Nobody knows if the foreign gods even truly exist, but even the disciples have ever- not even the disciples have ever seen them. No, the fact is, not even they have any means of determining what the foreign god's true intentions may be. The foreign god is truly a god of emptiness. I cannot in good conscience leave mankind's fate to such a being. I had a feeling Kishtaria didn't, wasn't, I mean, it, it, my main idea with what, I don't know what Wodime's plan is, obviously, but 
it was very clear when the foreign god revived him and he wanted to revive all members of team a that he had something else going on why would you why why would you want that right and so it seemed like i thought the reason he revived all his other teammates was and create their own lost belts was to stall i thought it was a stalling tactic but maybe it wasn't i don't know we'll, we'll get more answers there's obviously something else going on though chad tari of brodime the foreign god is truly a god of emptiness i cannot in good conscience leave mankind's fate to such a being i will eliminate chaldea watch over zeus until he passes and establish the tree of emptiness as reality so continue to stay back and observe void shaped like priestess nobody else is left i alone shall realize the future you failed to create Interesting. And off to the Anastasia Shrine he goes. <laughs> Poor Caddock, man. Five days after the Nautilus test drive. So this is five days after the, uh, five days after, uh, the, the, the Void Sea event. Oh, I see you're all here ahead of the Operation Start Time. Very good. Master Max, Servants, Mash Kirillite. As of this moment, Chaldea will assume its first battle station, and I don't want to hear any whining about we're starting the operation two days ahead of schedule. Captain reported that the Nautilus's test dive into the void space concluded safely. So, I trust you're all prepared for the genuine article then? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, how did the test dive go again? Oh, do we not even remember? Oh, okay. <laughs> So that's that's how I guess we forget everything after the at the end of the event. Uh, I can't seem to recall it very clearly either, though I do get the feeling it was quite the experience. I am sorry about this, everyone, but Gordolf is right. The situation is dire. There was a change yesterday in the branches of the Tree of Emptiness that we believe now covers the entire Earth. These branches were previously circulating magical energy between them like a network, but now they have begun funneling that energy towards the center of the Atlantic. We don't yet know what this phenomenon signifies, but... Uh, whatever it is, we can be certain that the energy is being stockpiled for use in a large-scale magecraft ritual. Currently, the amount of energy we have measured is already equal to that used for Gatia's incineration of humanity. While we are unable to observe the Lost Belt's interior, Trismegistus already declared it was a disaster on a global scale. I therefore recommend that this anomaly, that is, the Atlantic Lost Belt's Tree of Emptiness, be dealt with as swiftly as possible. A uh, magecraft ritual on the same scale as the incineration of humanity? <laughs> then that would mean... Yep, the foreign god is dis... The foreign god descending to Earth. Damn, they already figured it out. Have... Hey, Sonar with the raid. Thank you so much. How was your how was your stream? We are just starting Lost Belt 5. Going to be streaming for a few more hours, so I appreciate y'all coming in with the raid. Yeah, so because the incineration of humanity was 3,000 years worth of mana. Yeah, the, the man's got fucking even more. What's up, raiders? Welcome, welcome. You love the start of LB5? Ooh, I'm so excited. Every data fragment we've gathered up to this point pointing directly towards that inescapable conclusion. That being said, we still don't know what this foreign god is, whether they really are a god. Or hell, whether or not they even exist in the first place. Sorry for being so useless. There's no need to apologize for that, Divinci. You can't help we ha that we have so little information to work with. It's not your skills that are the problem. It's the damn cryptors not giving us anything to go on. Though, of course, it also seems like they don't know any more about the foreign god than we do. I expect the only cryptor who does know the truth is their leader, Kishtaria Wodime. Not to worry. I expect that, too, will be made quite clear over the course of this operation. Both the English Lost Belt and the South American Lost Belt currently appear to be stagnant, with neither showing any further signs of expanding their territory. Therefore, as we have previously discussed, Chaldea will be directing all of our resources towards eliminating the Atlantic Lost Belt. 
And now, our preparations for that operation are complete. The Nautilus has been equipped with the ultra-long-range lens capable of observing outer space and a record-breaking magecraft barrier from all of human history. The Shadow Border has been overhauled to such a significant degree that it could almost be called a wholly new machine. Both the Nautilus and the Border have been outfitted with identical functionality in the unlikely event that one of them is scuttled. And Miss Kirillite's round table has been infused with enough magical energy to summon a number of servants on site. My only regret is that we weren't able to finish the Ortnax's replacement unit before circumstances forced our hand. Oh, do not worry about that. I will continue to work on its design myself. There should already be enough materials for the reconstruction on board, on board the border. So as long as you're able to discover or otherwise procure a concept powerful enough to fill in for one of its bullets, I will be able to put the whole thing together in the time it takes for you to all eat lunch. All right. Both my ultra-long-range sniper training and the Ortnax's transformation sequence have been cleared for action. <laughs> I have been spoiled on what it, what that is, unfortunately. But, I mean, it was in one of the animation PVs, so kind of hard to avoid it. But I do know that MASH gets a new, like, NP that looks fucking insane. <laughs> hey, Lumino! Lum oh my gosh, how do you say it? Is it a Luminbo? Appreciate the Prime Gaming sub. Thank you, thank you. Welcome, welcome. Enjoy those emotes and ad-free viewing. Uh, subs in chat, by the way. I do have it on, but I wanted to make sure. If you're subscribed to the channel, you don't get ads, right? You shouldn't. I want to make sure that's a thing. Don't get ads? Okay, good. Because that is definitely something I want uh, uh, subscribers to get is a uh, ad free viewing because I think it's dumb that ads play on Twitch in the first place. If it w if I had the option, you guys wouldn't get ads at all. Yeah, I make literally like fucking pennies from ads. Like it's not worth it and it ruins your viewing experience. But I don't get a say in it unless you're subbed, unfortunately. <clears throat> right, uh, both my ultra lane, <laughs> both my, I mean, they kind of allude to it pretty hard here, but I've seen the animation of like, <laughs> mash like literally wielding a fucking cannon <laughs> fucking uh, uh 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 what's his name oh my gosh what was the guy from uh lost belt 2 napoleon like napoleon style fucking giant cannon <laughs> i'm just gonna say it i saved shimosa for last and i'm glad i did it's my f yes merlin shimosa such a good story Calling ad money peanuts would be an insult to peanuts? Yeah. Napoleon the goat, dude. I love him so much. Right stuff made a figure of it? Oh, wait, which... Right stuff made a figure of what? Of Napoleon or, uh... Mash. Oh, the Mashu, gotcha. Wish you could read Seraph, too? Yeah, I, I have read Seraph, if that's what you're wondering. Or if you mean you, you wish you could. I think it's it's a main interlude now, isn't it? Dude, I, w I want a figure of Napoleon in his final moment where he's like got that cannon like aimed high and it's like about to fucking blast. Like it just, that would be such a good figure of having Napoleon like aiming in the sky with the fucking cannon would be dope. Oh, okay, you were talking about it to Merlin. Gotcha, my bad. <clears throat> yeah, I do think you have to spend rare prisms to unlock it, unfortunately. Oh, I don't know if you still do, because that is going away at some point, right? Why? Because I am here. <laughs> Dude, That I gotta clip that moment of me reading that. That shit was so hype. His whole speech was so good. Right? Uh, both my ultra-long-range sniper training and the Ortnax's transformation sequence have been cleared for action. If it needs to be deployed to give us an edge during the decisive battle, I promise I will wield it to the best of my ability. Huh? Whoa, what's all this about a transformation sequence? Now, now, just pretend you did not hear any of that. Besides, we still don't know if it will even be relevant here. Now then. As the command room officer who will be holding down the fort in your absence, I would once again like to give my un, my usual order to those of you on the field team. 
The situation has changed significantly. I will not say we do not have a minute to spare, but I will say that time is definitely not on our side. What is more, it looks like that was a case of our most keep... Let me read that again. What? I will not say we do not have a minute to spare, but I will say that time is definitely not on our side. What is more, it looks like that was a... That was the case for our most key point of attack as well, the Atlantic Lost Belt. They have now put us in check before we had a chance to do the same to them. This is probably going to be longer than any battle you have fought to date, both in terms of number of enemies and the path you will need to take to reach our destination. Even a zero sail can't can even a zero sail can only take you to the Lost Belt's outer edge. Hey, Lucky's Gill, appreciate the follow. Even a zero sail can only take you to the Lost Belt's outer edge, which in this case means there will be more distance between you and the Tree of Emptiness than ever before. So I urge you all to handle yourselves even more cautiously and cold-hearted, cool-headedly than you have been so far. In this Atlantic Lost Belt, the act of learning about its world may actually end up working against you. So I ask that you all stay strong and that you simultaneously be proud of your own latent potential. If you ever reach a point where you decide you cannot continue with the operation, feel free to come back here immediately. No, what am I saying? Now is not the time for pessimism. This is all my third process's fault. She has been incessantly insisting since yesterday that this simply cannot work. All right, let us all go out there and take back our Earth. Field team, go ahead and board the border, starting with Master Max. Once I have confirmed that all of your vitals are green, you are to untether the Nautilus from reality. From there, you will execute a zero sale, and this operation will commence, commence in earnest. Order Lost Belt number five, suborder those who cross the Sea of Stars. Make sure you all give it everything you have, and I look forward to your safe return. Aye, aye, see on. What earth? Mines? Nah, mate, fight me. Alright, prologue. We're finally at the prologue. God, that was an information dump. The first couple nodes. Whoa. New background. Sanson? It looks like this is as far as I go. I'm sorry, Dion. Sanson! Grr! Ah! Uh, come on, Dion. Don't let up for a moment. I don't worry about what might happen later. This is the only chance you've got. It bounced off. I can't believe how tough his armor is. Grr! He's not even using his noble phantasm. Noble Phantasm, Flare Delis. Oh, I recognize that sprite. I'm gonna use uh, this specific voice since this character has their helmet on. <laughs> I see. A series of strikes made in tandem with a lily-based illusion. Oh, it didn't even scratch him! What a joke. <laughs> Wait, Max has seen Helmet? Yeah, I... I, I well, it's a care... I... I recognize the sprite. I know exactly who it is, just because, like, they, they show up in the summon banner. <laughs> How do I avoid that? Oh, is the voice changer not on? Hello? Is it working? Is this not working? Is it not a robot voice? No? What? That works. 
What about this radio? Is the is the uh is it a radio voice right now? No. Oh. Kappa. Kappa. It isn't, isn't there. there. Oh. I know what it is. Damn it, I, I, I haven't had uh, none of the times I've been using the voice changer earlier this stream have worked because I didn't have the right mic in OBS. Hang on. There, how about now? Is it robot voice? I think we got it. <laughs> yeah, let, let's go. We got it. All right, I just had the wrong mic set up. That's what it was. All right, let's 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 do that again then. So she Dion uses the noble phantasm. I see a series of strikes that made in tandem with a lily-based illusion. It, it didn't even scratch him. What a joke. Gah. <laughs> it's over, proper human history. We've destroyed every last one of your nests. <laughs> it's not over yet. This started a long time ago, and it ended a long ago. You mean them? The Olympias alter ego will deal with them. Do you think this would all be over once they arrived? There is no path forward for you. Any future you may have had is gone. You can submit to us and live or oppose us and die. Which will it be, proper human history? We will never submit! I see. And death it is. Damn! We got a decapitation animation. Holy shit. Who the fuck is this? <laughs> Jesus, swole motherfucker. We found the ley line, sir. Good. This is the last one. Once we have used it to summon a servant, causing it to go dormant, we will destroy it completely. Our enemies should have known better than to give us time to prepare for their arrival. Now, we will ensure they have no chance whatsoever of defeating us. Without a catalyst, the only sort of heroic spirit that can be summoned here will be one drawn to this place by sheer coincidence. But make sure you stand back all the same. We may end up summoning a berserker after all. Yes, sir. Hear me now. In the name of our great Demiurge, come forth from the Circle of Binding, Guardian of the Scales. Come forth and dedicate your life to Olympus, to this land brimming with the breath of the gods. Where am I? Wait, who am I? Hmm. Are, are you my master? Yes, I am. From here on, you will dedicate your body, your life, and your skills to Olympus, down to your very last drop of blood. It is through this servitude that your life will have meaning. Um, what do you mean by that? If this is beyond your comprehension, then your only task is to die. The steely man spoke quietly, but his words carried an unmistakable fury. 
Yes, master, my life is yours to command. The servant kneeled down low, bowing their head before their new master. It was then that the man lost interest. All that mattered to him was that the servant was not an enemy. For his thoughts were already focused on the true enemy that lay before him. Chaldea, the invaders who would see our world destroyed. I will never let you reach Olympus. It is here in Atlantis that you will meet your end. None of you will escape. None of you will survive. I will slaughter you all where you stand. Prepare for battle. Monka. Yes, the world destroyers are coming. Meanwhile, a man and a woman watch as a certain sea craft makes its way across the ocean. Are they serious? Is that really all those fools at Chaldea brought to try to cross the sea? Hey, it's my girl! Yeah! Musashi! Musashi! Let's fucking go! They're here? Where? Oh, that must be it. Wow, what an awesome ship. Although, I guess that is a little concerning. It's a beautiful ship, but it's way too small for these waters. Though, it might have been too soon for them to make their move. Worst case, this battle might be over before it's even begun. I just hope they haven't let their victories over those four other Lost Belts go to their heads. Well, that's harsh. And here I thought I sensed you were firmly on the Master of Chaldea's side. Hell yeah, I am. I can't help but go weak in the knees for Max. Oh, my lord. Musashi, I love you. That's why I'm only a little concerned for him and his team. Looks like they're bound to have yet another rough start. You find that a happy turn of events? Even now, I still not, I still cannot fathom how your mind works. Who the fuck is... I guess we're not supposed to know who that is, obviously. Weird. I was so, I was so obsessed with Musashi, I didn't even, like, question who the other person was. <laughs> you find that a happy turn of events? Even now, I cannot fathom how your mind works. Is it because of your love or for dire predicaments? I swear, you're far more berserker than Saber. Well, of course I'm going to smile about this. I'm genuinely thrilled that they all made it here. How about you? Did you not expect Chaldea to show up here now? Well, I hadn't ruled it out. How unfortunate that this is the worst possible scenario for them. At last, I'll finally get to see them lo I'll finally get to see them lose. Well, well, you sound happy, though you certainly don't look it. Hm. I can understand them having such a hard time in Russia. It was their first Lost Belt, after all. I can accept their pathetic showing in Scandinavia, as that was a world too kind for its own good. I can turn a blind eye to their raciousness in China, for that was a world too long without any manner of festivity. And I can concede that they had a right to be so self-righteous and... Wait! This is the dude! This is the mage! This is the mage that's been following us around. He's got the lab coat. Look at the scars on the wrists, too. Who the fuck is this person? This is the person that's been following us around to every Lost Belt. It's, it's Marisbury, dude. I think it's Marisbury. And I can concede that they had a right to be so self-righteous in India. For that was a clear-cut case of good and evil. No doubt it is owing to these experiences that the Chaldeans are likely thinking of something along the lines of, the Atlantic Lost Belt may be a threat, but there must still be a way to overcome it. But they would be wrong. There is no problem here that needs to be solved. None. This Lost Belt is already perfected and is actively moving ahead to the stage beyond proper human history. The Chaldeans shouldn't have come here with the intention of defeating this Lost Belt, and they especially shouldn't be trying to learn more about it. Now, what are you trying to say? I am saying that coming to this Lost Belt with any intention other than its complete and utter annihilation is a terrible mistake. I can only hope they realize the error of their ways before they are completely wiped out. Alternatively, well, no matter. I have my own work to do. How about you, if you like? 
I could take you to their ship right now. Oh, no thanks, I'm good. I'm just gonna go ahead and wait for them at the enemy's main base. <laughs> I love her so much. God, she's... She's so good. Did I misspeak? I thought I was clear that as the Chaldeans are going about... I thought I was clear that as the Chaldeans are going about this now, they're all going to end up dead. Oh no, I understood you. I just don't agree. Sure, they might suffer a horrific defeat and end up losing everything, but there's still there, there will still be enough of them left to fight back. So in the meantime, I'm going to do what I do, what I'm suited best for, so that I can be ready to pass the torch to them once they finally, doggedly make their way to the goal. I see. Then you can also see how this is going to end, albeit in your own way. Very well then. Go on ahead to Olympus, if nothing else. The Chaldeans should make an excellent decoy. <laughs> right? The gods can't tear their eyes away from them. <sighs> so on that note, I guess this is goodbye, Chaldean. If I run into you again, there. You won't. This is the last time we will ever meet. My eyes see no further trace of you once we go our separate ways here. Wait, so this person has a... Uh, my eyes see no further trace of you once we go our separate ways here, meaning this person has clairvoyance. I I totally think it's fucking... Marisbury Anatomosphere. Well, at least that... Well, at least that ought to keep things nice and simple then. Hey, do me a favor and tell them I'll be waiting for them up ahead, okay? Thanks! Bye, Musashi. That fool. As if I would ever pass along such a message. That aside, I never would have thought she would make the trek to Olympus via consecutive drifting. She truly is her own personal ray shift device. <laughs> so she just ray shifted out of here through reality. That's so funny. Unfortunately, Chaldea, the same cannot be said for the rest of you. The insurmountable iron wall that is the fleet of Olympus will rain shots down upon you like a meteor shower before you can even see them coming. And even if you somehow manage to get past that, you will then need to face the nihilist god of the sea. Do you truly understand your position here, Max? You have no time to spare to learn about this Lost Belt. The moment you attempt to do so, or to get to know its cryptor, will be the moment your journey comes to an end. Your incorrigibility has helped you prevail thus far, but you can't count on it forever. Of course, the person needs to stay a mystery. The Nautilus continues to make its way across the sea. After confronting, overcoming, and emerging triumphant against four Lost Belts, its crew prepares to face the fifth and the most formidable of all. Lost Belt number five, the Lost Belt Death, A+. The day to bring down gods. Here we go. Are we gonna get to, show me the map, show me the map, show me the map. Ah, come on. Ooh, I love the, uh, the ambience is really cool. <laughs> okay. Damn, hey, you can cut the tension in here with a knife. This is finally it, Master. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, come now, what's with the long faces? Given how obviously weak and pathetic the sixth and seventh Lost Belts appear to be, this is shaping up to be our decisive battle. That's exactly it. Ch that's exactly it, Chubbs. Come on. This tension's been making your sphincter tighten up just as much as ours, right? Heh, <laughs> that's right. There shows just how little you actually know about the world of Magecraft, kidney, kidney pie. I'll have you know the tension I'm experiencing right now is nothing like all of yours. No, I am genuinely freaking out here, and I'll thank you not to lump me in with your everyday ordinary nerves. 
As far as mages go, Caddox Implumpus was the bottom of the barrel. Every aspect of the boy, from his skill to his lineage to resolve, was truly, genuinely substandard. Ophelia Fem... Famzorlone's mystic eyes may have been menacing, but she still was just a girl with no killer instinct. Akuta Hinako was, well, her very existence may have been cheating the system, but she was never actually a mage. I would put her in the same category as an extremely dangerous wild animal. As for Pepper and Chino, hmm, on second thought, he's so slippery I don't even know how I would go about evaluating him, so let's just say he's the exception to the rule. My point is, Kishtaria is on an entirely different level than the other cryptors. There is simply no comparison. Oh? Does that mean you've met him before, perhaps at the Mages Association? Oh, please. Well, technically, I suppose we do both come from equally distinguished families, but never mind that. Listen, the Clock Tower is where true geniuses come to gather. There, even mages with talents well beyond the average are considered to be strictly ordinary. As such, simply being able to stand out there marks you as someone capable of changing the very world. Kristaria Wodaim has been acclaimed as one of the brightest stars by the elite aristocrats of the Barthamoli... Barthameloi faction. As well as the democrats of the Trembelio faction, and even the staunch neutralists of the... Melisitia faction alike. Despite their differences, they all had equally high hopes that he would be one, the one to rebuild this world's deteriorating foundation of magecraft. They even thought he may have gone on to found a 13th department of study at the clock tower if he hadn't decided to join Chaldea. Hmm. Really? I had no idea Kishtaria was so highly regarded in London. And you never met him yourself, huh, Gordy? Of course not. I was always g I mean, huh, uh, cautious about who I reached out to there, after all. And Kishtaria received no end of support from all the other successors to nobility, young men who were obligated to carry on their family names. You see, anyone from a mage family, no matter how prestigious, would never dare disobey, disobey their father. For them, their fathers, some of whom are genuine monsters who have been alive for hundreds of years, are the most terrifying beings in existence. And yet, even in the face of those wicked old foxes from the previous era of Magecraft, Kishtaria was never afraid to speak his mind openly. My guess is that his confidence stemmed from the sheer superiority of the magical circuits he had, circuits that have helped him go his entire life without ever losing to anyone. He always carried himself as though he were a king, as though he had been chosen by the gods. He was both confident and idealistic, yet distinctly humane despite being both cool-headed and ruthless. He set the top records in all sorts of fields at the clock tower, many of which remain unbroken to this day. Oh, I still remember feeling keenly aware of how talent and charisma are something you're either born with or you aren't while peering over at him from behind a convenient pillar. Oh yeah, I could see Tubbo doing that. I bet he was tearing, tearing it at a handkerchief and glaring at him. Uh, the director is right. Kishtaria was a bona fide bona fide genius who excelled at absolutely everything. It's true. My grown-up self has memories along those lines, too. And they're telling me while I was definitely an unparalleled genius in every human endeavor under the sun, Kishtaria was an indomitable genius when it came to magecraft. But I thought David was the genius. Oh, sure, he is, too. Just of a different sort. Again, these memories belong to my previous self who interacted with Team A, so I can't fully vouch for them. But I'd say that Daybit's the type who could make the impossible possible, while Kishtari is the type who could master anything we know can be done. So while it's not like one type is necessarily better than the other when it comes to being a leader, I'd have to say being able to put together a foolproof plan like Kishtaria could was the way to go. Nonetheless, the fact remains that they are both peerless geniuses. I can't say I relish the thought of opposing either one of them. Uh, you can say that again. Maybe if we're lucky, they'll underestimate us and let down their guard? I don't think we can count on that. Kishtaria always gave everything his full effort, even combat simulations. I remember it seemed like he had a real aversion, a hatred almost, to settling for anything less than what he wanted. Hmm. A genius who refuses to take the easy way out. Perhaps this means he was actually just a hard worker. No, I wouldn't say that. 
According to Chaldea's records, Kishtaria lived a perfectly ordinary life during his time here. If anything, Kadok worked way harder than he did. He spent dozens of hours training for every one of Kishtaria's. Oh? Anyway, that's pretty much all we have to go on, so I think that's enough Kishtaria speculation. We may not know exactly what we're up against, but whatever they throw at us, we'll be ready. We've used every last bit of magical energy resources we've accumulated to get to this point. Now, thanks to the Nautilus acting as the Shadow Border's outer layer, crossing the sea, crossing the ocean is a proverbial walk in the park. Uh, not that it's even comes close to what the Nautilus can really do. I understand your disappointment, but I'm afraid the Shadow Border's safety is of paramount importance. Huh, <laughs> quite so. With these manifold bounded field spells, the new engine that lets us use magical energy to propel ourselves through water at high speeds, and the Aranex Phantasm serving as our naval arm. We should even be able to cross bodies of magma if we're so inclined. Well, of course. The Nautilus and I have been... The Nautilus and I have seen it all, and we can handle everything. Anything. But I would like to avoid damaging the ship if we can. Hello, hello! This is Sion. I am readying... I am reading you loud and clear. I made sure you all have much food and drink. I made sure that you all have as much food and drink on the border that you can possibly carry. This is, without exaggeration, the best we were able to do at this point. If we fail with all this going for us, I will never be able to look you all in the eyes again. Oh, not to worry. If we do fail here, at least we won't have to concern ourselves with the next year's budget. The smart thing we can do now is use everything we've got and let the rest of sort itself out later. Well, I do hope we can find a ley line and summon more servants soon. As things stand now, we don't have nearly enough in the way of fighting forces. Come now, Gordoff. You know why that is just as well as any of us. Given the battles we've fought and the other lost belts thus far, summoning servants on sight gives us much better odds. Besides, Master Max can only form temporary contracts with so many servants. I'm afraid you'll just have to keep a stiff upper lip as best you can for now. Okay, we're about to reach the storm wall. It might have been impenetrable for the Shadow Border prior to this upgrade, but now things are different. Activating Imaginary Aranex Phantasm. Lost Belt Phenomenon identified. Ravel Ram Assimilation successful. Untether from reality, Void Space Dive Penetration Mode. Zero Sail, unfurl! We'll be ready, she says, Monka. Oh boy. I know that the, the fucking the mage that was sitting there on the beach with Musashi said as soon as we fucking come out, they're just gonna fucking immediately fucking pile drive us. Yep, look at them. They're fucking ready. Oh my god. They have a fucking army just waiting for us. Sir. The lookout just reported a faint ripple at the Eastern Four, the White Wall. Of course, it could just be an underwater earthquake. There he is. Do you really think we would be seeing an oceanic earthquake now? No, it's almost certainly Chaldea. They may be arriving a little later than expected, but the plan otherwise remains the same. Assume they have succeeded at diving through Eastern Four and train your sights on their most likely emergence point. All hands and ships to battle positions, and hurry up with the Lamia deployment. Uh, yes sir. Listen up. Do not treat these foes as you would a typical rogue servant. Servants who have formed a contract with a master are stronger than you think. Do not for a moment think yourselves above them. Let down your guard, and you will find yourselves being hunted rather than the hunters. Uh, yes, sir. Very well. I leave this in your hands. Understood. The Echidnia production is coming along extremely well. What the fuck is that? Is it possible to manufacture those things? Yes, well, 
At least the prototypes. <laughs> Damn engineers. Whoops. Damn engineers. After all this time, you still haven't been able to complete them? Well, no matter. Send them in. Yes, sir. Activating the echidnia. Right away, sir. A creature that spits out monsters in spite of the tremendous pain it causes, hmm? It is indeed the mother of life. This should have all manner of applications. Come on, move it! Go, go, go! Hoist the beam sails, head for the target coordinates. Full speed ahead! The third fleet has arrived at the target coordinates. Lamias are ready to go, ready to deploy. Your order, sir. Take them out. Monka. What the fuck was that weird pink thing I saw? Dude? <laughs> I ain't never seen that shit. Oh, here's the map. There's the tree already blooming. And here we are. Well, we're not that far. We can make it there. We can just drive straight to the tree, right? Surely. They'll let us, right? Surely. <laughs> crisis after crisis. Only two AP. Damn. It's on a... Uh... The nodes are going to be really cheap because they're probably letting us catch up on story because uh, Lost Belt 6 is coming up too. Oh, that was the Echidnia? Oh yes, please, right this way, sir. Surely they'll they'll let us us, yes. Indeed. In this quest, you must fulfill certain conditions within a set number of turns, or you will be defeated. Would you like to start the quest? In this quest, you will form a party immediately after the battle begins. Would you like to start? Yes. I've got Castoria. How hard can it be? <laughs> crisis after crisis. Oh, damn, that's the not. I haven't seen what the Nautilus looks like yet. It looks like a fucking whale. Oh, no. A zero sail complete. Returning to reality space now. The outside ocean is ice cold. I hate to say it after we just arrived, but we've already got our work cut out for us. All hands, let's keep a tighter grip on this situation than Blue Ringed Octopus does on its prey. We need to be able to respond at a moment's notice. All right, I was hoping I could wait a little longer until Sion finishes reworking my equipment, but it looks like the circumstances won't allow for that. Nope, our future is always just hanging on by a thread. So we're finally heading for the Atlantic. Uh, just for us, what sort of civilization could these people possibly have built here? I'm afraid that's all but impossible to say at this point given the fantastic, the fantastical nature of this world's history, all the more so given that we are dealing with a kind of nation that none of us have ever seen before. I expect the truth of the matter will be more difficult to pin down than a passing mugger. However, there is one thing I can say for certain. Greece is home to one of the most famous and influential mythologies in all the world, the gods of Mount Olympus. It is therefore highly likely, highly likely that they have had a strong influence on this Lost Belt. Atlantis is currently thriving much more than any other Lost Belt on Earth. You can tell that from the fact that we can observe its tree of emptiness from the outside storm wall, if only just. That means it has grown so large now it is impossible to cover up. It is hard to believe something so imposing could be so empty. I expect a tree like that will put up a fight. Uh, well, I expect that a tree like that will put up quite the fight indeed when this is finally, when it comes finally time to cut it down. The voice changer is working, right, chat? I just want to double check. Because I was, I was doing the voice changer earlier before y'all told me it wasn't working. <laughs> Even though I, I never realized because I can't hear it. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right. Reality space established. Hull, uh, stable. We'll start to emerge once we've confirmed there are no hostiles nearby. Hostiles are nearby? <laughs> uh, hostiles detected! Abort surfacing! D 
damn it, I can't believe how sharp their eyes are. Not only have they just seen us, not only have they already seen us, but they're already heading right for us. <laughs> you mean we're already under attack? What in the world were you doing, Captain? They were waiting for us. They must have pinpointed our location in the time it took to reestablish reality space after the Zero Sale. What kind of observational equipment are they using? That is like throwing a stone into the ocean and tracking it down using nothing but the sound it made. I know we didn't make so much as a peep. My diving is smoother than the slickest dolphins. The only thing they could have possibly spotted is the faintest of the ripples we made when we entered this lost belt. And to do that, they would have to be continuously observing the entire storm wall without a moment's rest. Uh, never mind how this happened. Just get us out of here, dammit. Munir, full reverse. Wait, don't take any evasive maneuvers just yet. Pull up the monitor and take a look at the surface. Hurry. <laughs> These motherfuckers have a whole fucking fleet ready for us, dude. What? What are those? Oh, how awesome! Those ships are using technology beyond anything in our civilization, and a whole fleet at that. Well, what are you doing, Marines? I don't want to listen to Sion prattling on either, but you can't just cut her off. Uh, don't blame us, Captain. It's not our fault. Some sort of atmospheric interference has cut us off our has cut off our connection to Novum Caldia. Uh-oh, I've got a report to make, too, Captain. It's not just the enemy ships, I'm picking up a servant out there in the water, too. The one we really, really, really didn't want to run into. Oh, boy. Heh, <laughs> about time Caldia Cretans got here. Now I'm gonna murder the absolute shit out of you for making me wait all this time. Canis, the Divine Spirit. She's here along with this entire fleet? What are you lot waiting for? Get us the hell out of here now! We don't have any other options. A, a transmission? Is it Sion? No, it's not. Attention enemy vessel from Chaldea. Attention enemy vessel from Chaldea. Requesting line of communication. Over. A transmission? Does this mean their civilization has advanced to the point where they've developed long-range communications as well, even if only ones that use magical energy? I'm gonna pick it up, Max. Okay, you're on. Uh, this is Gordoff Music, commander of the Shadow Border, speaking on behalf of Novum Caldia. I am Odysseus, commander of the Olympus Defense Forces. <gasps> I am contacting you with your first and only warning. We have come to kill you. There will be no surrender. No offers of amnesty, and no negotiations. We will not stop until we have confirmed that every last one of you is dead. <laughs> the pressure's so intense he can't even get a word out. This communication is terminated, as you will be shortly. So, we can't even attempt to talk things out in an effort to maintain the status quo. The situation could not be worse. We'll just have to make an escape. There's no way we can possibly defeat Canis at sea. Engineer, grab a salt lick. I'm gonna crank the engine as high as it can go. What was that? You wanna run that by me again, you cap bastard? What kind of predicament did you get my poor little ship into? When this is over, I'm gonna kick your ass so hard you'll taste nothing but shoe leather for a week. All right, guys, I'm taking the safety valve off the Triton wheel. All four compartments now running simultaneously. 30 seconds until we've got full battle speed. Holmes, Munir, set a course for minus 1,200 seconds. We're going to dive back once the engine hits critical. 
Uh, yes, I'm well aware. Preparing for a zero sale now. Throw the prototype at them. We'll move to cut them off while I keep them busy. Yes, sir. Opening cage and inputting target. Injecting Theos. Clearo. What the fuck? How <laughs> do you pronounce that? Cleronomia. Cleronomia. <laughs> Cleronomia. 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 What the fuck? That is a word. Opening cage and inputting target. Injecting Theos Cleronomia. Go, go, go! That doesn't sound good. <laughs> It's still not enough. Canis, you go too. <laughs> you don't gotta tell me. No way I'm letting them get away. I'm gonna make them all wish they'd never been born. Especially that little runt. I see. That vessel of theirs smells of Triton. They do say the sins of the parent are visited upon the child, though why Poseidon wouldn't bother to create such a dual familial bonds is beyond me. I'm getting something on the sonar! Hostile contact closing in fast! Oh crap! It's gonna intercept us before we can zero sail! If we get hit now, the Nautilus's whole outer layer will be completely shattered! Abort zero sail! Change the spells over to physical defense! Da Vinci, give me an escape route. Our only hope is to smash through this dragnet. What about us, Captain? You head out with Mash and hold back that servant on the surface. If Canis makes it inside this ship, we'll all be well and truly done for. I'll solidify the water near the Nautilus so you can use it as a foothold. Hopefully that'll be enough. Understood. Master, let's go. Roger that, surfacing now, opening the hatch. This reminds me so much of Lost Belt 2, when we tried to zero sail and fucking <laughs> Saber like ripped us out of the fucking ground and threw the fucking... What the fuck is that? What the hell is that? It's a completely new type of enemy. It doesn't match anything in our records. I would normally encourage you to approach it with caution, but I'm afraid we simply don't have the time. Those other ships are making their way here as we speak. If we take too long, they'll have us completely trapped. All right, I'll be as careful as I can. Engaging now. Awaiting your orders, Master. Makes sense why this, why we have to do this in a certain amount of terms, it sounds like. Surely this will be all right with uh, Castoria, right? Surely. I kind of want to make like a story team. It's gonna be easy clap, surely, right? <sighs> hey, what's up, Goombas? No, I, you've been saying stuff, but I just saw you. How you doing? I don't know. I mean, we don't have any servants like with us at the moment. You doing good? Let's go. You went on a walk. Nice. Walks are nice. Help you clear your head. I don't think I have any, like, actual... I mean, I've got Orion there. He's not in the story yet. I don't... I mean, who, who would make sense for us to use? I guess no one at the moment. Mash. <laughs> I guess we'll just go with my... <laughs> my no-think go burr team. You got a thousand St. Quartz and 40 tickets? Wicked. Let's go, baby. I don't have a Canis. 
Do you use a Canis against Canis? It's just a DPS check? Gotcha. To make sure you can clear the rest, that makes sense. What's its buff it got? Increased attack and decreased damage taken? Oh. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Oops. Literally the first chapter and we're already fucked. Yeah, I love how they were ready for us. That's so cool. <laughs> Use Super Orion and click red. Using, I didn't know what we were going against. It is five head though. It doesn't matter. Fucking Spitz Heart does so much fucking damage. It's kind of gross. Yeah. <laughs> Very single target. Indeed. Oh, that was it. We just had to do the break bar. <clears throat> I thought we had to kill it. We leveled up something. I think it was my mystic code. We go next. Easy clap, baby. What in the world is that thing? And how is it so absurdly strong? I can't get a read on it. Our scans are being deflected or something. All of its stats are showing up as unknown. If our instruments can't even measure it, I think that means it must be a divine beast. Oh, I should use Enkidu. How much shit in this fucking, how much shit in this law spell does divine chat? I should use Enkidu. <laughs> A lot? Yeah, dude. I think Anki Doo's the fucking play for this Lost Belt. No joke, because... OP Clay. So much shit. Everything is divine. Let's fucking go. Yeah, it's too damn strong! I'm going to release my Noble Phantasm. Get ready, Engineer! Are you nuts? Why would you use up your trump card now, you moron? Ugh, fine. We're good to go at any time. Do it! And if you die from this, I'm taking over as the lead Nemo. <laughs> I love the engineer. Uh, swapping Great Ram over to impact form. Holmes! Uh, I'm on it. Go ahead and give it all you've got. Run it through, Great Ram Nautilus! Good, uh, the ram struck it dead on, oh, but it's still alive, damn it! Yes, but you did manage to slow it down. Now's our chance to escape. Both of you, get back here on the double. <laughs> the better question is what isn't divine in this law spell? <laughs> I'm so sorry I wasn't able to defeat it. No need for apologies. In terms of pure destructive power and durability, that thing is easily on par with the highest rank of servant. Right now, we just need to get as far away from here as possible. 
Hold it! Right there! Magnify! That's the thing that just birthed the fucking... What the fuck? <laughs> what in the blue blazes is that? I think that's the thing they said that birthed the dog that we just fought. It's like the mother of beasts or some shit. It's Tiamat! <laughs> what in the blue blazes is that? Holy cow, these magical energy readings are off the charts. No, wait, it's not the readings themselves. It's the sheer number of fluctuations I'm seeing. That thing is fluctuating fast enough to turn a human into a mummy and back again in the blink of an eye. There appears to be something moving about it. It's abdominal region. It would appear to be Lamia's and Chimera's fully grown to boot. You mean it's birthing monsters? What the actual hell? How? What's more, it's doing so at a great speed, it would seem. We are dealing with the mother of all monsters in a very literal sense. I was right, I called it. It's like literally Tiamat from fucking Babylonia. Now the monsters at birth are heading our way. Master! Oh, let's do this, Mash. Alright. Tiamat, but not mommy enough. Echidna is the mother of monsters in Greek mythology, so she kind of is like Tiamat, except she's not a primordial goddess. Gotcha. Interesting. Thank you for that information. Oh, look at these things. They're like... They're chromed. They got a paint job. Original Chimera A. And then what is the buff they have? Decreased defense and decreased critical rate for yourself. Increased attack and decreased damage taken. Interesting. Wait, remaining 50 enemies. Hold up. <laughs> Guy would be comparable to Tiamat. Yeah, Guy in actual Greek myth. Fucking Guy, bro. Oh my god. You only need to beat like five? Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna be here all day, bro. It's probably a turn thing. Oh no, it is like five. We did it. We defeated the army chat. <laughs> Take me to Wodaim. <laughs> Still lost belt. There, oh, we've got a lull in between waves. Now's our chance. I know. We'll begin in. Uh, we'll begin evasive maneuvers as soon as we collect you. We'll make our way through the any. We'll make our way through any creatures we can't avoid with our naval ram and anti-submarine net cutters. Ah, forget that, Captain. We've got to get out of here now before she gets here. <gasps> Damn, that thing running. There, all above us. Oh, wait, they were talking about Canis. <laughs> I thought they were talking about the monster mama. Gah! Mash! I'm, I'm okay. Although... That one blow was so powerful. Who are you? Oh, why do I gotta bother you telling my name now? Sides, we already exchanged pleasantries in Scandinavia. 
Then again, I'm enjoying that terrified look on your face. So why not? You want to know who I am? Fine, you got it. My name is Canis, a divine spirit. I am the lightning that tears this shitty ocean apart. I'm also Kishtaria Wodime's servant and the envoy of who's going to end every last one of you. But hey, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be mean. I'm actually real happy that I get to see you a lot like this. Between Russia, Scandinavia, China, and India, I figured you would have died way before getting here. Hell, I was so sure of it, I'd already put you out of my mind. But then, you show up like the pack of morons you are, flying by the seat of your pants. Now I know what it feels like to bust a gut laughing. You're gonna be worth destroying just as much as that fake-ass Triton. So hey, take your pick. What'll it be? Skewered alive or torn limb from limb? Either one's fine by me. All I want to hear is you scream for mercy. Oh, my homies. Oh, what's the frickin' nerd herd doing out here? How about you just pack up your calculators and shit? Just leave the fighting to grown-ups, huh? While I would love to do just that, I'm afraid that a few extra hands will be necessary to deal with the divine spirit. The name's Sherlock Holmes. I'm afraid I missed my chance to say hello back in Scandinavia, so here I am now to make up for my lack of manners. That's so. Well, I like you my- Well, I like that you mind your manners, at least in the sense that you don't piss me the hell off. On the other hand, I can't stand the whole prim and proper shit, so I think I'll split the difference and rip out your guts first. Did you really think a couple of human heroic spirits could even stand a chance against me? I'll show you what happens when trash like you tries to pick a fight with a god. Monka. We actually prefer death by snoo snoo. Formation restricted. Aw, oh, man, dude. Tell me I gotta take these two. I gotta take the nerd herd. Oh, wait. I have to. Nah, this sucks, bro. <laughs> I can't use my cheat code. <laughs> Lore accurate, man. And it's the or it's not even the good mash either. It's the fucking Ortnax ma mash. <laughs> Scripted battles are the best. I think I'm just gonna use that. Just use the K scope. Go team, go! Oh, three hit interval. I should have done that. <laughs> yeah, no Castoria run for the authentic release experience. Alright, so I gotta. Save Mash's taunt. I don't even know what these other two do. Ooh, he has an MP seal, okay. All right. Wait, what? We're fucked. Oh. I, I didn't even see the buff. <laughs> Game said no Jolter abuse this time. Ugh, I've had to take a lot of weak-ass noble phantasms to the face before, but yours is by far the most irritating. <laughs> Holmes! None of our attacks worked. Is that due to Canis' noble phantasm? Or perhaps it's a type of authority? Perhaps Captain was right. It may not be possible to do to so much as scratch Canis at sea, or rather, on Greek God's own ocean. 
Yeah, that's right. I'm immortal when I'm out, out on this sea. That's just how I'm made. I didn't ask for that, though. You can thank that piece of crap, piece of shit, Poseidon for it. I would have been fine with just my lightning. Anyway. Huh? Time's up. I'll say this for you, scrawny. At least you know how to defend yourself. All right, I'm going to pull back just like Odysseus planned. I was looking forward to beating the Master of Chaldea and that fake-ass Triton to death with my bare hands. But not enough to risk my own life. Later, Chaldea. I'll be nice and at least make sure you die a painless death. Canis has... R retreated? I've got a very bad feeling about this. Return to the Nautilus. Oof. Holmes! This is just like fucking Scandinavia, man. <laughs> Are you okay, Mr. Holmes? Oh, I'll be alright. I feel at least slightly better than I did after my encounter with Sigurd, after all. <laughs> yeah, at least he didn't get his arm chopped off this time. Then again, I suppose I was only able to handle Cadus' spear thanks to my experience against his demonic sword. At any rate, finding a way out of this situation is our most urgent priority. Let's hurry on to the cockpit. I don't know why Canis fell back, but I sincerely doubt it was to give us time to rest. Is it time for that? What? I don't know what's happening. <laughs> crisis after crisis. This quest has no battles. Munka. We're back. Notice what characters use what pronouns for Canis. Oh, I didn't. I haven't even noticed that. That's interesting because I know. I know. Uh, Canis is. In the legend, Canis was. I, I, I don't even remember it fully. The OG gender bend. Female to male. That's what I thought. Because Canis remind Canis's I, I think I remember when I was reading Canis's story, it reminded me a lot of who is the one in uh Agartha that was the leader of the uh the Amazonians. Because their their stories are very similar. Penth, yeah. Isn't isn't her story similar to Penth's, I think? Arguably, Canis didn't have any issue with being a woman because of Poseidon's situation. Penth was a lot more petty, though. Yeah, Penth, especially someone as Berserker, dude. Holy shit. She was just mildly disrespected while the other one went through the other thing, yeah. Penth was, Penth was uh, Achilles, right? Achille didn't Achilles kill Penth? Thinking Penth was a guy, and then after Achilles killed Penth, removed her helmet, and as she was dying, realized he had killed a woman and was like, no, why, why have I killed this woman? And Penth was like, that's so disrespectful, how dare you? Kill me, kill me like you mean it. <laughs> it was pretty much Pentha's story, I think. Gotcha, Ismanir. Interesting. Oh, he just called her beautiful. That was it. And Penth was like, fuck you. <laughs> A kill Riz. <laughs> Jesus. Good. All crew members have returned safely. Submerging the Nautilus now. Watch something rip us back out. What's that? The Nautilus is safely underwater. Hopefully this will buy us some time. Uh, damn you, Kishtaria. Wasn't that strange demonic beast enough? Did you really have to sick Canis on us too? 
it's just so childish to be so overpowered for our rival, for our arrival. Um, Gordy, I'm not sure childish is the right word. I mean, this was pretty much the opposite of playing around. Hey, yes, good point. But never mind that now. We need to focus on getting out of here. Are we still not ready to zero sail? Between the unidentified demonic beast's attacks and the damage Canis' lightning did to the armor, repairs are going to take some time. If we tried to zero sail now, we'd be crushed to the pulp under the pressure of void space. And since we don't want that happening, we'll just have to find another way out of these waters. Uh, the sonar's going nuts! A whole bunch of somethings are heading our way! Aw, oh, crap! Are those death charges? No, wait. Oh, they're creatures! There's what looks to be a ton of living somethings heading our way from the surface! Shit! They're gonna collide with us at 90 knots! <laughs> what living thing could possibly move that fast? I finished analyzing them. I think they're probably Lamias! Evasive maneuvers! All hands, brace, brace, brace! <gasps> oh man, this is really bad. They punctured section two. We're starting to take in water. I'll seal it up once the crew is out of here. Three, two, one. Uh, there, it's sealed. Oh, what the hell? I know those were living creatures, so where'd the death charges come from? This is Hatch, look out. I'm hearing something strange. Oh man, I think they're trying to pry it open. Sonar reporting in. I'm seeing tons of ships on the surface, both ahead and behind us. There must be at least 50 of them. We can't possibly break through so many. Uh, engine, all ahead. Flank speed. Shake off these creatures that are trying to pry open the hatch. Uh, roger that. Flank speed. <laughs> what should we do? I don't want to die out here. I'm not going to even dare to breathe. That strange sound coming from the hatch stopped. D did we lose them? No, I don't think we did, though I can't say I'm surprised. <laughs> What's going on? Can't we just make a run for it now? We're surrounded. They knew exactly what we were trying to do. Proceeding to phase three. Activate the Lamias we built on the seabed. Once they've secured the target, we'll immediately... There's nowhere left to go. The sea is usually a world of freedom. I've never felt so restrained here before. Uh-oh, I'm getting something on the sonar again. Now we've got hostiles coming in from the seabed. They're pretty much the same ones as before. <laughs> Was that another death charge? No, sir. That sounded more like some sort of metallic grinding. Engine, status. Are they still functioning? Uh, no, sir. Uh, they're all tangled up in something. Now we can't move so much as a centimeter. We can't cut it off with the anti-submarine net cutters either. The only way we can get out of this is for someone to go out there. Does that mean they're going to crush us to death? Wouldn't it be better to dash it all and risk the zero sale? We still need a bit longer to prepare for that. They're not giving us any time at all to react. Once they've been cornered, the only option they'll have left is to zero sail. That means there's still a chance they could escape if we continue to attack them with ordinary means. Therefore, we need to give them the salve of the heavens so that there can be no room for miracles or coincidences. All ships, make sure you follow my commands to the letter. Anyone caught retreating will be punished severely. Yes, sir. Uh. What? <laughs> what is this? What's the matter now? Is that a high energy signature coming from an orbital sp What? Is that a high energy signature coming in from orbital space? Oh, we should have an ultra long range lens now thanks to Sion, right? Use that to zoom in as close as you can. Oh, Roger, activating ultra long range lens now. 
Zooming in to 16,000 meters, 32,000 meters, 64,000 meters, 120,000 meters, 240,000 meters, 500,000 meters. Whoa, there's something there, all right. Putting it up on the monitor now. What? Is that really a spaceship? <laughs> what? <laughs> what the fuck am I looking at, dude? <laughs> what is that? Is that a mecha? <laughs> what? <laughs> Dude, uh, everyone said this Lost Belt was going to be crazy. We're literally only uh, an hour into this Lost Belt, and I, I'm fucking mind blown, dude. Like, this is shit that happens, like, at the end of Lost Belts, usually. This is actually fucking insane. That's the ship shown in the Grand Carnival OP. I don't even re I don't even think I remember that. I remember in one of the OPs, they have, uh, who's the really big Sakura face? I remember they show her in one of the OPs. That's no moon, it's a space station. It's a Warframe. Who is the really big soccer face? The one that goes, Gao! King Protea, yeah. In one of the openings, I can't remember where it is. King Protea is like rising up over the uh, over the planet and like the sun flare bo flares behind her, right? I remember that in one of the openings. I can't remember what what that's from though I presume this is orbiting directly above us at this moment that's what it looks like what is that what in the ever-loving blazes is that I thought the lost belts were supposed to be places where human history stalled out how can they have a, a, a spaceship that looks like something out of our top scientists could only dream about we might have established we might have been able to gather more information about it if we could have our connection with to Sion, but at a glance it sure looks like it's more advanced than anything in our own world it's about to fucking laser our ass bro they wanted to get us into a position where we had nowhere else to go and they're gonna fucking laser our ass master what's wrong we're all gonna die <laughs> Die? Uh Was I right? Yeah, it's literally gonna laser our ass. <laughs> An enormous ship hangs suspended in the hazy darkness of space. Hostile entity detected. Authenticating requests confirmed. Verifying target coordinates via ground level ether sonar. Readying cannon to fire on target location. Anatole Okito Tria. Oh, we'll never be able to evade this by conventional means. Professor, allocate all resources towards maximizing defenses. Understood. Activating bounded field spells. Authorizing code L, new moon. Activating bounded field spells 1 through 60 and spatial distortion spell up to maximum def. Good, but don't fall behind on those zero cell preparations either. Uh, here it comes! Dispatching interstellar cannon evaluation alert. Firing energy charge in three, two, one. Shooting star, Ortegaia. The light converged on a single point, transforming into an enormous arrow. No, it wouldn't be fitting to call it an arrow. This was a weapon designed to shoot down intergalactic vessels, a weapon created to tear through entire planets, an anti-planet noble phantasm. Now its light streaks down towards a single submarine, the Nautilus.
300 field spells, 1 through 60 have been destroyed. The spatial distortion spell has already been eroded to 2% capacity. Uh, time for the distortion... Time for the distortion to repair itself. 5 seconds. The spell isn't gonna hold. Initiate zero sail! Captain, we can't if we try in this state. It's a hit. The Chaldean ship has been completely vaporized. Too bad for the guys who had to keep them surrounded. Unnecessary sacrifice. We couldn't give them time to fall back. Shall we go home now, sir? No, not yet. We're going to check the target area for any remains. Are you sure, sir? There's not so much as a scrap of them left. And that is reason not to look because... Uh, yes, sir. Sorry, sir. We'll start searching the area right away. Is this why he paid that fox woman such an ex exorbitant... Price for his, the shadow border analysis because he foresaw this turn of events. Is he I'm assuming he's talking about Wodim there. So Wodim paid. Uh, Wodim paid uh, uh, Koi and Skya to give a shadow border analysis, I guess, to prepare for our arrival. that light I saw at the end. Oh, no way did we get... We, well, we had to have gotten away, obviously. I just... I, I was thinking someone was going to come in and save us because normally... But I guess all the servants that were already in this Lost Belt got fucking killed by Odysseus there. Oh, di dude, I love I love how menacing Odysseus is are, are already, dude. Like, Odysseus... The servants that were already summoned by the land of this Lost Belt, Odysseus killed. And then they had an entire fucking army and an orbital space station waiting for our arrival to completely annihilate us to make sure we had no chance. <laughs> fucking insane. See, Odysseus is smart. Confirm the kill. Chen Gong approves. <sighs> Look at all the rewards you get for story notes, too. I, I love how they've updated this over time. Hestia Island. He is the master tactician, yeah. Came up with the fucking, uh, Odysseus is the one that came up with the Trojan horse, right? Impossibly miraculous. Section two. Who is Hestia? I'm just gonna look up the actual Greek. I think that's a Greek god, right? Hestia goddess. In ancient Greek mythology, Hestia is the virgin goddess of hearth, the right ordering of domestic seed, the family, the home, the state. She was the fam she was the goddess of the family hearth. She also presided over the cooking of bread, the preparation of the family meal. Hestia was also the goddess of the sacrificial flame and received a share of every sacrifice to the gods. The cooking of the communal feast of the sacrificial meat was naturally a part of her domain. Oh, in myth, Hestia was the firstborn child of Kronos. Oh, that's significant. So she's meaning because Kronos was Zeus's father, right? And Kronos ate all the fucking children. <laughs> Kronos ate all the children that he had because he was he was so scared that one of the, his ch kids was gonna usurp him. 
And so he would eat all of his children until Zeus was born. The mother saved Zeus by like hiding him somewhere. Zeus grew up, usurps his father, but like gives him poison or something, poisons his father and his father Kronos threw up all of the kids that he had swallowed. And I guess Hestia was the first one he ate. He would have had to have eaten, right? So yeah, it was, it describes it right here. Zeus later forced the old Titan to disgorge Hestia and her siblings. As the first to be swallowed, she also was the last to be disgorged, and so was named as both the eldest and the youngest of the six Cronites. Oh, that's interesting. When the gods of Apollon and Poseidon sought for her hand in marriage, Hestia refused and asked Zeus to let her remain an eternal virgin. He agreed, and she took her place as his royal hearth which is why she's the goddess of virginity, I guess. Hestia was depicted in Athian vase painted. Uh, yeah, interesting. Bit of lore dump there. What's up, Ninetale? How you doing? Hestia is the goddess of the cozy home and the good food blankies. <laughs> Cronus likes the taste of his children. Yeah, I'm fucking nutbag, man. Whoa, that was amazing. There'd been a booming sound and a blinding flash of light, the kind you'd expect at the end of the world. I'd heard rumors about the goddess's hammer of justice, but I'd never seen it for myself before. You could feel its sheer destructive power just from the storm that blew onto the beach. I had my reasons for paying the beach a visit, but I was also just a little bit curious. I did think I might be able to help somehow if anything had washed up on shore but I hadn't really thought about it any further than that. I definitely didn't expect to run into any visitors or survivors. I mean, the whole idea that anything could survive that just seemed laughable. After all, the whole point of the God's punishment was to wipe its targets out completely out of existence, which is why, huh? Which is why it was so tragic to see that lone, frail looking person washed up on the beach because I was the only one there who had any hope of saving him. Can't believe I came at a time when real world mythology is being discussed. Let's go. You. You. Oh, what just. I can't breathe. Foo! <laughs> hey, are you okay? Are you alive? Are you still breathing? Oh no, you aren't, are you? There's something stuck in your windpipe. Oh, it's, what's her name? Let's see, um, I think, I think for a choking victim, you're supposed to get behind them and put pressure on their abdomen. One, two, three. <coughs> Photo -fo trick, focusation. Game doesn't know either. Charlotte, that's her name. I forgot her name. <laughs> I I did look up her. I did look up her uh, story though because I wasn't familiar with her. She was during. She's interesting. Her she's got a really interesting story, and I know a lot of people love her. Uh, I don't know why yet because I haven't played this chapter, but I know a lot of people like her. I've seen a lot of people 120 this character. Um, her story is really interesting though. So during the French Revolution, Charlotte, uh, how do you say it, Brode? Charlotte Brode. Hopefully, I'm pronouncing that right was essentially someone who agreed with the French Revolution, but didn't agree with how far some of the extremists during in the uh, she didn't she agreed with the revolution, but didn't agree with how far some of the extremist or the extreme revolutionaries were willing to go. So there was some of the revolutionaries that wanted to literally kill every everyone uh, that everyone up top, the whole royal family, everyone who was associated with them. And uh, this is obviously a, a simplization of the story, so I uh, take it with a grain of salt. I'm not, <laughs> I'm just 
reporting from memory what I read, but she didn't agree with that. And so she ended up killing one of the revolutionary leaders. And I believe she even had a manifesto that she wrote down saying how she agreed with the revolution and agreed that things needed to change, but she didn't agree with how far the, some of the leaders and especially this leader was willing to take it by like literally killing everyone on the other side. And so she killed him in the bathtub, which is why she's an assassin class servant, kills him in the bathtub. Later when she's found, um, she is uh, killed at the, gu at the guillotine, like so many were. And I believe, what's his name? Sanson, who was, he was in this singularity earlier. I believe Sanson was the one that executed her as well. Yeah, she killed the guy in the bathtub. So she's got a, she's got an interesting story. I, I'm I, I'm I'm a nerd for history, especially with uh, revolutions and how they fucking change uh, change societies throughout history. So she she was an interesting read. I, I enjoyed reading her story. But obviously, fate lore can change that. So we're gonna see uh, how different and what specific things they change. So many French summoned. Where's where's Napoleon, dude? Napoleon was such a fucking goat in LB2. <sighs> Wish I was in, as into history as I was when I took AP Euro. I'm the same way. I, I took a bunch of history classes in both high school and then uh, um, I took one year of college and was so I, I took like government and was so bored with it. But I, I'd probably be super into it now as I'm older. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're human beings. We change as we get older. I just wish I had like the time to actually go back to college now, but with a full time job and wanting to actually partake in my hobbies when I'm not working. It's obviously really hard to I'd have to fucking like drop everything that I actually enjoy if I wanted to keep my job and go to college, which does not sound fun. This game makes people do your homework. Yeah, I was the same way in, in high school. Um, something that also really interested me in history, which is probably why, why I'm so drawn to the Fate franchise as well, is because uh, I, I was super into Assassin's Creed when I was growing up, right? And Assassin's Creed was like the only thing that <laughs> made me interested in history because it took like real world history and put it into a video game and made it really fun and interesting. Fate is the same way. Fate has gotten me so interested in not just world history, but human civilization specifically and how human civilization has grown uh what it's gone through it's really interesting how like it peaked with like fucking greece ancient greece and rome and then it went we went through the dark ages right and then some of that stuff was picked back up and we were able to that's why the dark ages is called the dark ages right is because we had this rise of human civilization with uh greece and rome then it dipped back down into the dark dark ages and then we had the renaissance and the renaissance just means like the the rebirth of human civilization and knowledge that's why we call it the renaissance and it peaked back up to where we are today and all that shit is super fascinating and interesting and how it happened and the details of it i love i love so much and fate is really a big part of why i find that stuff so interesting history mythology fiction yeah i, I love all of it <clears throat> medical history in the Middle Eastern religion class in college, and I was already familiar with Asclepius and Hassan. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, Asclepius, I didn't know. Fate teaches you shit, too. Like, I didn't know. Fate was the one that taught me that Asclepius's scepter with the snake around it is why that is, like, on ambulances and at hospitals and stuff. So the scepter with the snake wrapped around it, the reason that's everywhere is because of Asclepius. I didn't know that. Like, fate taught me that. <laughs> I was like, what? Interesting. <clears throat> you were familiar with Murasaki and Say beforehand? Let's go. Yeah, fate, fate will get you into this shit. Su super cool. All right, back to Charlotte. Oh, you're awake. Thank goodness. How are you all right? Have you come to your senses? Can you see me okay? Are you an angel? What? What's the little fucking thing she has to her left? That, that actually looks like a little angel. His lips are kind of scary, though. Oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness, thank goodness, thank goodness. 
<laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm just so happy I could cry. Wait, no, I am crying. You are? Why? I'm so sorry. This is my first time saving someone's life, so... Fo! Fo, it's you! Oh, so this little guy is named Fo? Is he your pet? Hmm, I guess I'd say he's more of a friend. Fo, Fo! He saved our Kohai's life. Head pats. <laughs> okay, dude. Whoa! Why would you have a problem with that? <laughs> You're funny. Hmm, wait, huh? Um, you wouldn't happen to be a master, would you? Are you a servant? I, I am actually a master. Aha, I knew it. You see, I'm actually a servant myself. Does that surprise you? Please say yes. Oh, right, I still haven't introduced myself, have I? My name is Charlotte. Charlotte Corday. I, um... I'm probably extremely minor as far as a heroic spirit spirits go, so I won't blame you if you haven't heard of me. Don't worry, I know who you are. No, I clicked the wrong one. <laughs> oh no, don't be. I'm actually delighted to hear that. Really, the things I did should never have gone down in history in the first place. But never mind that. What brings you all the way to a place like this anyway? Well... I clicked, I don't know who you are. I wish I would have clicked the other one. See how she reacted, because I, I did do my homework on her. Now I get it. Yes, it all makes sense. This must be what I was summoned for. I've been wondering what I'm supposed to be doing here ever since I materialized. So, now that I know, I promise I'll do whatever I can to help. Then does that mean... Yes! I may be stupid, useless, and a good for absolute nothing, nothing but I promise I'll do the best I can despite all that. Fo. Aw, you're very cute, aren't you, Fo? So what exactly is he anyway? Some kind of squirrel? <laughs> oh, she voices someone from Monogatari. I gotta tell Moe. I was summoned here about a month ago, but it wasn't long before I realized that, well, I can't actually do anything on my own. You mean there's no enemies to fight here? Really? Nothing at all? Yeah, really. And it's not because I'm an assassin or anything. I'm just genuinely helpless. But I have a good feeling about this. I think I'm finally going to get to be helpful. I'll certainly do my very best. Anyway, I suppose the first order of business is probably tracking down all of your other companions. So while we're doing that... I'll tell you everything I know about Atlantis. That'd be great, thanks. Of course. Okay, so this island we're on now is called Hestia. Hestia. After one of the gods of Olympus. There's a village here where some humans live, and another servant lives on that island as well. Another servant? Yes, he calls himself the Courier. I still don't know his true name. But he's one the one who brought me here on a ship. A ship, huh? By the way, Max, I'm afraid I have some bad news. What's that? I actually have no idea where we are right now, either. Now, where was that village again? Fo? I wonder where we are now. I'm sorry. Now that I think of it, losing my way is how I ended up at the beach earlier, too. Why'd you lose your way? Well... <gasps> Fo! Shh! You... A, A demonic beast. I'm afraid I have some more bad news now. I lost my way earlier because I was running away from that demonic beast. Huh? Grr. <laughs> There's no way we can beat it! Run away! Foo! Oh! 
It hits so fast. Oh crap, it's gaining on us. Max! Corday! Please, run for it. I'll hold it off as best I can. I promised myself I'd be useful this time. This time? Here goes nothing! Oh, snap. Go, Charlotte, go! Oh, damn, she voices another, a bunch of other stuff. Oh, we get we get summer Charlotte this summer too, don't we? We do. Let's go. Hey, what's up, Bizla? How you doing? Ow! Ow! What the fuck is this little angel thing? Yay, Charlotte, you did it. Where'd she go? <laughs> She'll be on the first summer banner too. Let's go. <sighs> We're completely surrounded. No, I won't give up yet. Uh. Yo, who's taking a leak? Huh? Bo? Is it raining on them? <sighs> Having a body can be a real pain sometimes. No, wait, something's not right here. Why do I even have to do this anyway? I mean, I'm a servant for Petro's sake. Oh, maybe it's because my name originally meant one who discharges water. Ha ha ha, that must be it. Ha 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 ha, whoever thought that was a good name for anybody. Foe. Um, does that mean the water falling on demonic beast heads is actually... Please no. <laughs> Someone's peeing. I was right. Foe. Foe. Hmm? What's that? Did I get it on somebody? Ha <laughs> ha, sorry about that. Hang on, I'll be right down. Hup. Ah, it's the boy, the goat. Let's go. <laughs> of course it was fucking Orion. <laughs> Do I still have you on my friends list? Maybe, I'm not sure. I know every now and then I remove people that haven't been online for a while to make room for others. So if you weren't on, the only reason I would have deleted you if I did was just because you probably weren't on for a while and I just, someone asked to be my friend and I just, whenever someone asks in chat, usually I'll just go down the list and if someone hasn't logged in for a while, I just remove them and add the next person. If, if you log in consistently, I shouldn't have though. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe not then. We'll, I don't know. It's Big Boy Orion this time rather than the Teddy Bear Orion. Yeah. He's, uh, it's weird how the other one, the other the, uh, servant is like, I guess it was because that was back before they started doing like divine servants, but it was Artemis and uh, it, you summon Orion, but he's in Teddy Bear form and fucking Artemis is with him. 
but this time we actually get OG Orion, baby. Sorry again. Didn't mean to involve you guys in a little bit of a <laughs> fun. So, um, uh, who'd I get it on? Not me. I literally couldn't live with myself if I had. Guess that means you were the unlucky winners then. <laughs> My bad. Ah, gross. Stay away from me. <laughs> but you were the one who... I'm sorry. This is a little too much for me. Foe. There we go. A nice solid hit. Hey there. I don't know who you are, but you're lucky I found you when I did. Thank you for saving us. Um, I'm sorry. I didn't catch your name. Me? I'm just your everyday devilishly handsome hunter. As for the pretty young lady, you a servant? Uh, yes, I am. And I take it you are as well? <laughs> sure am. I think this calls for a toast to our fateful encounter. Just, uh, wash your hands first. Foo foo! I agree. Cleanliness comes first. All right, all right. I hear you. Man, what a pain. Okay, let's try this again. This means I saved your lives, yeah? Well, I guess technically. Hey, Ikes, I must have made an even worse first impression than I thought. Well, um, your entrance entrance was a little, okay, incredibly off-putting. But I suppose we wouldn't be here right now if it weren't for you, so I do thank you for that. Oh, so beautiful. <laughs> he's still, he's just like the teddy bear, man. Say, now that I've washed my hands, maybe it'd be all right if I held yours? No, I think I'll pass on that, thanks. We still don't even know each other's names after all, so I think it'll be a little too early for anything like hand-holding. Ouch, rejected with cold, hard logic. That's just sad. Okay, then, sounds like introductions are in order. I'm Orion, the Tri-Star Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> Are you for real? Foo! <laughs> ah, now I got gotcha. you. So you've met me before then? Well, yes and no. I'm not sure that counts. What's that supposed to mean? Anyway, you are? Charlotte Corday. Oh, I see. It's okay if you've never heard of me. I'm a very minor figure as heroic spirits go. Haha, <laughs> sorry about that. I'm so sorry, Max. I wasn't able to be useful after all. If Orion, if Orion hadn't showed up, who knows what would have become of us. What do you mean? You saved our lives. Huh? But, but I couldn't even defeat a single demonic beast. <laughs> don't be ridiculous. I'd never have been able to save you guys if I hadn't hung in there like you did. Oh, I see. Then I was useful after all. That's wonderful. That means I can die now. Where'd that come from? <laughs> I love the sprites out there like a teddy bear. They did. Oh my God, this is so good, dude. Oh, sorry, I misspoke. What I meant to say was, I'm so honored that I could die a happy servant. Being able to help humanity is a dream come true for me. Uh, I can almost feel myself disappearing as we speak. Oh, well, don't, okay? I mean it. Fofo? Oh, I get it. You're actually egging me on, aren't you? Uh, uh, not even close! Actually, hold on. Something's still not adding up. Uh, let's see. You're not Atlantean, right? And you're a servant? What's going on here? Legend says that Orion got that muscle while plowing with him. <laughs> Fucking animal, dude. Yeah, the, when we get the faux translation, it's so good. Now I see. Hey, you're a master. Oh, don't worry. I can promise you with absolute certainty that I am a servant from proper human history. So if you're here, does that mean you came to set this lost belt right? I guess so. 
I'm still not sure. How interesting how he knows about the Lost Belt because normally we have to explain the Lost Belt situation to servants. Like they don't even understand. Uh, not exactly brimming with confidence, are you? So, I'm guessing from the way you're looking at me that you'd like me to help you. But I can't. Fall? Too much hassle. That's it? That's your whole reason? Is that really your reason? Man, you're really... You're a real doubting Thomas, aren't you? Yes, that's the reason. You can't be serious. You must be a thousand times more useful than I could ever hope to be. So why would you not agree to help? Well, uh... Let's just say I've got my reasons. Hmm. Now that's a sulk if I've ever seen one. Oh my god, her cheeks. The sulk cheeks, man. This... <laughs> that's so cute. All right, then. I suppose this is where we go our separate ways. Come on, Max. We'll never find the village if we keep wasting our time here. Let's just get going. Does she even know where the village... Does she know the village is in the opposite direction? Corday, wait! Oh, right. I had almost forgotten we were lost. Orion, will you take us there, 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 please? Didn't you just say we were going our separate ways? Um... Ha <laughs> ha I'm just pulling your leg. Come on, follow me. Oh, and just so you know, it's over a day's walk from here, so we'll have to make camp at some point. Really? My gosh, I must have been even less attentive than I realized. I had no idea I had gone so far. Well, don't worry. I promise I at least... I'll at least get you to the village safe and sound. That'd be great, thank you. Oh, that's a surprise tool that will help later? Nice! That I noticed he... Yeah, because every other servant we've met in the Lost Belts, we have to explain the situation, but Orion already knew about the Lost Belt. And maybe that plays into why he won't help us, perhaps. I don't know. So, let me ask you this. How much do you guys know about this Lost Belt? Just that it's the biggest. I know it's Kishtaria's domain. Yeah, can't say I know anyone by that name. But I have heard there's someone called a Cryptor staying at Olympus. And I, um, I guess I only really know that the weather is very mild and pleasant here. Oh, and the Atlanteans. Besides that, there are powerful demonic beasts here who are much stronger than I am. Powerful demonic beasts? Yeah, I guess. But it's nothing that'll get in the way of life on this island. In that sense, it's nice and peaceful around here. I hope your friends are still alive. They are. I'm certain of it. Well, great. Glad to hear it. With an attitude like that, I think you'll get by just fine. So hey, I've got a question for you. A real serious one. So I want you to look me right in the eye and answer it as truthfully as you can. Fo? Uh... Okay. This Caldia place you're from. Does it have any cute girls? Pretty ladies? Women I can hit on without being it being a problem? Foo! Oh, it's okay if they're already married. That sort of thing was totally cool in ancient Greece. That doesn't sound like the ancient Greece I know. Sorry, but I really, really don't want to get on Artemis' bad side. Uh, I can't blame you for that. Wait, does that mean you and I've met before? In that case, I'm sure you've seen how terrifying she can be for yourself. But you don't have to worry about her right now. Um, is that really an important question? It is for me. I, uh, I see. I suppose having been raised in an abbey, I simply cannot understand an issue like this. Anyway, we better call it a night. Got an early morning ahead of us tomorrow. Go on and get some sleep. Fo fo. Good night, fo. Ah, oh, there we go. Out like a light. Sweet dreams, Max. I'll be around to help you out for at least a little while. You ready, Charlotte? As ready as I'll ever be. Oh, and please call me by my last name. Huh, <laughs> you got it. 
All right, you lot, keep it down so you don't wake up, Max, and I'll make your deaths quick and painless. Aw, that's so cool. They protect us when I sleep. <laughs> Jeff Bezos, top waifu. Oh, they're all sabers too. Perfect. Orion punch. Oh, for the, uh... Yeah, what's that thing called? The, the super chain or whatever? <laughs> I love Orion so much. He's so fucking strong. The mighty chains. Yeah, I'm super excited for that, too. Alright, that takes care of that. Fo. Oh, hey. Didn't know you were still up, Furball. Fo. I know that expression. You're wondering why I'm not helping out, aren't you? I am too, honestly. I mean, the best I can do in battles like this is slow everyone else down. Well, it's, uh, complicated. The truth is, I really do want to help. I just need to agonize over it a little longer. I've never had to deal with anything like this before. I might not look it, but I've actually got a lot on my mind. Atlantis is awesome. There's no war and nobody wants for anything. The only thing most people have to worry about is the demonic beasts. But there is one part I just can't tolerate. <gasps> Knock it off. She's not an enemy. I can't see the sprite. There is a sprite there, though. It's mumbling something. Get lost. I don't feel like talking right now. Um, who was that? Hmm. I guess I'd have to say she was... My ex-girlfriend? <laughs> what? Like the ghost of Artemis just appear there to fucking haunt him? <laughs> Wait, what? But even though we broke up, we're still not exactly estranged. What? Anyway, that's how it is. I'd appreciate it if you could keep this between us. <sighs> well, if you insist that's how it is, I certainly don't know enough about that sort of thing to say otherwise. You don't? No, I don't. Um, is that odd? <laughs> well, I guess that's okay. Good. Anyway, it doesn't look like there are any more demonic beasts that will be bothering us. So I'm going to stay close to Max. Weird. It's going to be interesting to see what that was all about, especially considering this is the Greek Lost Belt, right? Okay, okay, I'm up, I'm up. Please get off of me, foe. Yeah, 
Hey, you're up. Ready to get going? If we leave now, we should get to the village today. Good morning, Max. I've got plenty of jerky if you're feeling hungry. Don't mind if I do. Fo, fo. I know, don't worry. Here you go, fo. So that thing's carnivorous, huh? Fo, fo. He says he's not picky, and he's happy to eat anything. <laughs> a creature after my own heart. Guess it wasn't just a walking emergency ration. Fo! Ow, ow, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Well, I doubt he'd be enough to fill up me up anyway, so let's get going and eat on the way. <laughs> what are those machine-looking things? Whatever those things are, they're really big. That's the village we're heading to right now. That's the village? There's a bunch of remains here of the gods who fell during the war about 10,000 years ago. Sorry, guess that didn't make much sense to you, did it? <laughs> Don't worry, it will soon. And there's the last demonic beast. Hey, how's help? How's about helping me out to mark the occasion? I just felt a flash of pain throughout my head just now, but I'm okay. I'll do my best to ensure I at least don't get in the way. Got it. Charlotte, what's up, X? Interesting. So he said the war with the gods 10,000 years ago. So this must... I bet... I'm trying to think of what the history of this world is. Because I know in Fate lore, Gilgamesh... Wasn't it Gilgamesh? Gilgamesh was essentially the way the Age of Gods ended because he sided with the humans, right? I think, didn't the gods create Gilgamesh as a way to link humanity and the gods together to ensure the Age of Gods lived on, but then Gilgamesh, so high and mighty, chose the side of the humans instead? Gilgamesh was way later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, in the timeline, but wasn't Gilgamesh the one that ended the Age of Gods himself? The Age of Gods in Babylonia, which is where it ended. A am I right on that one, at least? Because I thought Gilgamesh was the reason... No? I thought... My understanding was that Gilgamesh was the one that ended the Age of Gods. Oh, it's different in every country? Oh, it ended after Solomon. Alright, never mind. <laughs> Gilgamesh massively accelerated its decline, gotcha. Solomon was the final nail in the coffin, okay. Should have went after that berserk girl. Well, actually, I should go after the bronze one because it, even though it's resistant, that should kill it with the death resist because it's a bronze, right? I'm learning. Damn it! It didn't work. Oh wait, it did work. Never mind. I thought it applied first. How much do you know about Extella? Like nothing. I don't know anything about the CCC stuff. Uh, the moon. The moon. I, I saw, dude. I tried to learn about the moon lore, and I, I get like one page in, and I'm, I'm like, I'm already so fucking confused. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, I didn't crit. Come on, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> so much damage. Oh my god. Oh, she removes a bait? Okay, that's what applies first. We do not talk about the moon. When Orion crits, he crits. I'll probably just take it as FGO gives it. I just wanted to know if my understanding of shit was correct or not. Different Age of Gods end differently, like Scandinavia, the Age of Gods was supposedly to end in Ragnarok while it's different for others. Gotcha. Try this on for size. Oh yeah, we won. Man, having a master around really does make a big difference, doesn't it? It really does. I don't know why, but I feel like I'm doing so much better now. I'm glad I can help. High five. Huh? Oh, I get it. Uh, like this, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, um, I don't suppose. You want in on the high five action, too? What's up? Oh, uh, yes, please. But since I barely did anything to help, I think a low five would be more fitting. Okay, how's this? We did it! Oh, she's so cute. Oh, me next, come on. Huh? Well, um, in that case... J just the fingertips. Well, I couldn't give you anything better than what I gave Max, so... W what's that? Some kind of servant code or something? Um, I guess something like that? Fo fo fo. I'm confused, I don't know what the fuck that was. Okay. Oh, well, never mind that. Here we are, Hestia Village. <laughs> yeah, I thought, I thought, I thought he was about to slap our ass super hard, too. I thought he was going to send us flying. The most sacred sentence of the FGO, or the fake community. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Hmm? Oh, hey, Orion. What's going on? It's not like you to return from a hunt so soon. Let's just say I happened across something rare and unusual. Huh? You mean you found someone too? Two? Oh yeah, some people showed up here asking for help. I tell you, I haven't seen anyone that badly wounded in a long, long time. Well, damn, that's a hell of a coincidence. So, where are these people now? They're staying at the tavern for the time being. Apparently, the courier happened to know who they were. I was going to have them head for the temple once they got their beer bearings, but now that you're back, this works out nicely. Why don't you escort them there? Turns out none of them had any offerings from the gods, just like you didn't. Did you hear that, Max? You think it might be them? Hell yeah, I do. There's no way this is just a coincidence. Come on, the tavern's this way. Oh, wait for me! Mashu! <gasps> senpai! Senpai! Mash! You're all right. Oh, thank goodness. I mean, well, I knew you were still alive and uninjured thanks to your vital readings from the Shadow Border. But since we couldn't contact you, I was worried that you might be trapped or in prison somewhere. I can't tell you how relieved I am that you're all right. I'm so relieved to see you're all right, too. Well, what about the others? Oh yes, they're all okay too, although... Max, you're all right! Though we did have empirical evidence of your well-being, we are all still going out of our minds with worry. I'll say this whole sorry state of affairs just goes to show how much you still have to learn. Now listen to me, it's every soldier's duty to always contact their superiors no matter what their situation. 
If you're all right, we'll know to breathe a sigh of relief. If you're wounded, the shock will take our collective breath away. Either way, once we have contact, then we can take action. But if you never contact us at all, my point, boy, is that it's about time you took your responsibilities as the last master of humanity seriously. Well, uh, <laughs> funny story. I'm so sorry. Hmm, let me guess. Your communicator was broken, right? Well, given that you are uninjured, I'll overlook it just this once. The fact is, we cannot solve this Lost Belt problem without a master, and just as I said, you're the last one we've got. At any rate, though it is a great weight off all of our shoulders to know everyone survived the attack, I'm afraid the situation we find ourselves in is both highly complex and time-sensitive. Hmm, where to begin? Where else? The first order of business has to be the captain. You mean Nemo? Well, what about him? Well, the whole reason we survived is thanks to the Captain Nemo forcefully initiating a zero sail. Usually, zero sailing in the state we were in would have gotten us killed for sure, and should never have been attempted. But this time, it turned out to be the right call. What happened? I took a look at the data we collected during the attack, and it said that the beam that came down from the sky tore the border to pieces. So even though our Zero Sail came to an end successfully, albeit half-assedly, our existence was still ever so slightly unstable. Are you familiar with a writer named... What? Astolfo? Are you familiar with a writer by the name of Astolfo? Oh yes, very. Then perhaps you're also familiar with his noble phantasm, the Hippogriff? Since it is not of this world, and its existence is so ill-defined, the Hippogriff is able to travel freely between truth and fiction. This enables it to temporarily evade attacks that are rooted in reality. In our case, under most circumstances, our predicament would normally have led to one of those two outcomes. Either that light from the heavens would have torn the Nautilus to pieces, or forced the Vizero sail would have resulted in us no longer being able to verify our own existence. However, it is here where Captain's decision truly shines. Sustaining damage in a neither here nor there state served to verify our existence through external means. And in turn, the Zero Sail helped keep the lights of destruction within the manageable levels. Though not without significant cost, I'm afraid. Captain Nemo was in integrated into the Nautilus. So when it was nearly destroyed, the damage to him was catastrophic and left him and has left him comatose in a coma. Is he gonna be okay? Where is he now? They're letting him use the bed on the second floor of this tavern. He still hasn't woken up. Under normal cir circumstances, the best thing to do would be to send him back to Novum Caldea, turn into his spirit form, and give him the time he needs to restore himself. But our plan hinges on the Nautilus, and with that out of commission, our hands are firmly tied. For one thing, we can no longer escape, even if we wanted to. What about Sion? As far as I can tell, we're almost completely cut off. We've been able to transmit a tiny bit of data, just enough to let her know we're still alive, but that's all. It takes forever to send, too, to give you an idea of the scale and difficulty. It's like sending signals from Earth to Mars. Then, right now, when everything was looking up, then right when everything was looking objectively hopeless, That's when I showed up and said, You look like you're in distress, O oh beautiful lady with the hidden eyes. Who are you? That voice. That line. <laughs> I take it we've already met then. Perhaps there's a version of me there in Chaldea? Still, I'm a firm believer in proper introductions, so don't mind if I do just that. My name is Barth Malaf Barth Malaf Barth Malamu Roberts. I'm single! Glances. Huh? I said I'm single! It's it's like fucking... What's the name of the fucking Lancer that hit on MASH in America? <laughs> oh no. Yeah, dude, Fion, dude. Fuck Fion. It's Fion all over again. Stay away from my Kohai! <laughs> We call him Bart for short. 
here, Mash, why don't you come stand next to me for a while? Um, okay. Indeed. It was through meeting Mr. Roberts that we managed to arrive at this village. What about you, Master? How did you find your way here? Orion helped me. <laughs> he already dipped. Hmm? There doesn't appear to be anyone else here, though it does smell faintly of game. Perhaps this means the servant who escorted you here to this village was here not too long ago? Orion, hmm? The human version. There's a human Orion too? Not just a bear? Oh wow, I wish I could have seen that for myself. In the meantime, um, I noticed that you also seem to have brought a very beautiful woman with you. May I ask your name? Huh? Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Were you talking to me? I was. My name is Charlotte Corday. I'm an assassin. Um, uh... Mash, was it? Are you Max's servant? Yeah, that's right. I'm Mash Kiralite. Well, as a fellow servant, it's a pleasure to meet you. Oh, and please call me Corday. Not at all. The pleasure's all mine. So are you the one who escorted Master here then, Corday? Oh no, it wasn't me. If anything, I was being helped much more than I was helping. Neither Max nor I would have made it back if it weren't for the Orion. Haha, no wonder I haven't seen you around then. Yes, I'm afraid I got hopelessly lost. I'm sorry for worrying you, Mr. Courier. Oh, that's quite all right. Just grow out of your just grow out your bangs and it'll all be water under the bridge. Huh? Damn, I guess she didn't get it. Anyway, is Orion gone now then? Well, that's too bad. Guess I'll have to go after him. Then again, I don't really want to go after another man. Then again, again, I think I have to. Just make up your mind already, will you? Oh man, how am I ever going to decide? Oh, don't bother. We don't have the time nor resources to spare running after someone who's already left. Besides, we still need information first and foremost. Just what in the world is going on with this Lost Belt anyway? Okay, Barth Molefuel. I know you already told Holmes and me earlier, but would you mind going over this Lost Belt again for everyone else? Not at all. Would you mind lowering your bangs? Uh, why? I'm already perfect as I am, so no! <laughs> okay, I don't know who this is at all <laughs> from history. Who is Barth Olemu? The Apostle? One of the 12 apostles of Jesus, according to the New Testament, most scholars today identify Barth Malafuel as Nathaniel, who appears in the Gospel of John. <laughs> Why the fuck do you have a gun then? Wrong Bart? Okay, Bart Roberts. I was like, what? Bart Roberts. Ah. He was a Welsh pirate and the most successful pirate of the Golden Age piracy. Taking over 400 prizes in his career, Roberts raided ships off the Americas and West Coast uh, West African coast between 1719 and 1722. He is also noted for creating his own pirate code and adopting an early variant of the skull and crossbones flag. Robert's infamy and success saw him become known as the Great Pirate and eventually as Black Bart and made him a popular subject for writers in both fiction and nonfiction to this day. Roberts continues to feature in novels, films, and video games, as well as inspire fictional characters such as Dread Pirate Roberts. Interesting. There you go. He's pretty much Jack Sparrow. <laughs> and he has a hair bang fetish? Yeah, I can tell. <sighs> Oh, 
What was the other thing I was going to ask? I can't remember. Oh, why did it seem like we knew him before? Did we meet him in another event or something? One of the earlier uh, dialogue was saying that well, like we had met him before. His pirate coat on the Ichne is interesting. Oh, he was in an event. Okay. Uh, how did he die? Death in battle. Uh, Captain... Captain Swallow came upon the pirate ship, the Royal Fortune Ranger and Little Ranger... Uh, swallowing beard away. Blah, 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 blah. Many of his crew were drunk and unfit for duty just when he needed them most. At first, the pirates thought that the approaching ship was uh, their ranger returning, but a deserter from the Swallow recognized her and informed Roberts while he was breakfasting with Captain Hill, the master of Neptune, as he usually did before action. He dressed himself in his finest clothes. Jesus, that's a, okay, I'm not reading on his death. There's like three paragraphs. His pirate code, as recorded by Captain Charles Johnson regarding the articles of Bart Roberts. One, every man has a vote in affairs of moment, has equal title to the fresh provisions of strong liquors at any time seized, and may use them at pleasure unless scarcity makes it necessary for the good of all to vote retrenchment. Every man to be called fairly in turn by list on board prizes because no person to game at cards or dice for money. The lights and candles to be put out at eight o'clock every night. If the crew after that hour still remained inclined for drinking, they were to do it on the open deck to keep their peace pistols and cutlass clean and fit for service no warrior woman were allowed amongst them if any man were to be found seducing any of the latter sex and carried her to sea disguised he was to suffer death <laughs> to desert the ship or the quarters in battle was punished with death or marooning no silking one another on board but every man's quarrels to be ended on shore and at sword or pistol no man to talk of breaking up their way of living till each had shared 1,000 pounds. If in order to this, any man should lose a limb or become crippled in the service, he was to have $800 out the public stock and for lesser hurts. Huh. So he had a bunch of rules. Interesting. <laughs> Did someone say swallow? Captain Swallow these nuts. All right, moving on. We know exactly why this sea of Atlantis ended up as a lost belt. Did you notice anything unusual about this village? I'm betting you did. Those enormous metal structures. Right. As I'm sure you can imagine, those giant buildings you saw are not of human design. They were made by, well... There's no better word for them than gods. What's more, these gods still hold the reins of power here even to this day. That's right, here in this Lost Belt, the gods of Olympus are alive and well. Bum bum bum! What? Damn you, game. The new summer node just unlocked, damn it. <sighs> Added rule, bangs are for Roberts only. <laughs> oh, it's this again. Bum, bum, bum. Enduring light of the gods. Okay, I think I, I think so. All, all the gods of Olympus are still alive and well. Where the fuck are they? Is 
they got to be hidden in fucking reality or some shit or maybe they're on or maybe they're at the base of the tree i don't know um what was i gonna say i i, I that's that's got to be why orion doesn't want to fight right because he knows fucking artemis is alive in this lost belt huh Chad Orion. Where else than Olympus? I know, I was like, where where is it on the map though? I mean I know it's next, it's the next story chapter, but there's no there's not even like a hint that it's anywhere over here. Ooh. How fair is things there, Cadus? Did the operation to eradicate the Chaldeans conclude without issue? <laughs> sure, looks like it. First we beat the shit out of them with that massive fleet, then finish them off with one of Artemis's arrows. What? We're just gonna... <laughs> huh? Okay, I guess, uh... I, I guess Artemis is controlling a giant mech. <laughs> No space station, that's Artemis. <laughs> if they actually managed to survive all that, I'd be impressed I'd even join their side myself. Wait, what'd she say? If they actually managed to survive all that, I'd be so impressed I'd even join their side myself. I'm gonna hold you to that, Canis. <laughs> I'll take that to mean it was a highly fulfilling victory then. But I'd also advise you to watch your tongue, Cadus. Words have meaning after all, and I'm afraid you might have been a bit too generous with your praise just now. What the hell's that supposed to mean? It's not like I could join their side even if I wanted to. Now they're all dead. Wait, I recognize that little smirk. Don't tell me. Odysseus, tell me what happened already and be quick about it. We haven't finished our search for the remains yet, but at this point, it seems that they were not eliminated as planned. I intend to continue searching for them under the assumption that they managed to escape, most likely to a nearby island. I expect Hestia will be our best bet. There you have it, Canis. Well, are you going to join their side now? Huh, not a chance in hell. Are you trying to start something with me, Kishtaria? Uh, just forget I said anything. I didn't actually mean it anyway. Besides, I don't even see why all this is necessary. I could have easily killed them all myself, but you just had to go and bring Artemis into it. So what are you going to do to make up for this botched operation, Mr. Commander of the Olympus Defensive Force? You going to go offer up your head on a platter by the way of apology like you, like the other one of you did? What? What are you going to do to make up for this botched operation, Mr. Commander of the Olympus Defensive Force? You going to offer up your head on a platter by the way of apology like the other one of you did? So there was another... Uh, is she talking to uh, Odysseus? So there was another general other than Odysseus that fucked up somewhere and offered up its head, I'm assuming? I don't answer to you, Canis. The only ones who can punish me are Lord Zeus and his close ally, Kishtaria. Thank you, Odysseus. Rest assured, I have no intention of laying blame for this at your feet. The operation itself was perfect, and your direction flawless. I appreciate your even-handed decision, Kishtaria. Now then, if you'll excuse me, I must get back to my search. Yes, that is a good idea. After all, Odysseus, the whole reason you were dispatched there was to ensure the invaders would never sully Olympus. 
Yes, exactly. I hope you are duly aware of the importance of your task, Odysseus. I am. As for you, Canis, you should be ashamed of yourself for your failure to kill them. Canis? You are to come back to Olympus at once and cleanse yourself as best you can before you are granted an audience. If I were you, I would already be thinking of excuses for this miserable failure of yours. I can tell you right now, the King of Gods is going to be very upset with you. Better be ready to receive his punishment. Why, you little... I know who they are too. That's the Dioscuri, the son, the 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 children of Zeus, right? That's enough, you two. I'll deal with Canis myself. I would remind you both to conduct yourselves in a manner befitting of the glorious Olympic gods. <laughs> You're always much too easy on Canis, Lord Kishtaria. But if you insist, I suppose we have no choice but to keep quiet. Remember, Canis, you are nothing more than a hunting dog. There's no point in keeping you around if you can't do your job. You should be honored to be the one trusted with the divine spirit. It's far more than you deserve. If I were you, I would never forget the debt of gratitude I owed to Lord Kishtaria. Difficult though it may be with such a tiny brain as yours, I nevertheless suggest you try your best. I'll kill them. Canis! I don't even care what Zeus might do to me. I'm gonna kill those brats dead. End of story. Canis! Shut the hell up, human! Don't you keep calling me by name. Not unless you want to end up dead yourself. Let's refresh your memories, Canis. What... What it is you want. To get revenge on proper human history. No, scratch that. To reject it completely. That's the whole reason I went along with your little scheme in the first place. Good. Then continue to do just that. There's no need for you to return to Olympus. I'll tell Zeus myself that you're biding your time, waiting for a chance to clear your name. All right, fine. I'll play along. You are technically my master, so I'll obey that order. Besides, I have a little more respect for the Chaldeans now. If they really did manage to survive Artemis' attack, there'll be plenty worth killing myself. If that means cleaning up the moon goddess's mess for her, then fine. Oh, I'm surprised to hear you say that. Given your notion... Given your notorious antipathy towards the gods... Perhaps visiting other Lost Belts has affected you just like it has the Chaldeans. What was that? You got a death wish or something, huh? I don't have any mercy to spare for humans or divine spirits. As far as I'm concerned, the only good human or god is a dead one. Besides, the only one in this whole damn world who could do something about it, me is he... Ah, uh, forget it. Too damn trouble. Alright, Kishtaria, what do I gotta do? For the time being, you're to remain on standby under Odysseus's command. We can't have you roaming around the sea haphazardly and getting caught up in skirmishes with the remnants. Not unless you want to exhaust your magical energy before you can get the chance to fight Chaldea. Worry not. Once Odysseus locates Chaldea, I will ensure you are the one that settles things with them. Hmph. <laughs> Alright, I can live with that. I hate having to hang around Odysseus any longer, though. She said something there we should make note of, too. She said, uh... She hates humans and divine spirits, and besides, the only one in the whole damn world who can do something about me is you. And so it seems like the gods and humans can't touch her in this land. The only person that can actually do anything against Canis is Kishtaria Wodime himself. Make note of that. Odysseus, any news of the Athenia Clero what? <laughs> the Athenia Cleromenia? 
We're still looking for them, but I'm prioritizing the search for Chaldea for the time being. Fine. Let me know when you find them. Understood. That's all I have to report. For now, I will return my search. Very well. I'm sure a hero of your renown won't let us down, Odysseus. I find it hard to believe how rudely you behave towards your own master, Canis. Huh. Believe it or not, this is me holding back. I'm just too tired to bother with anything anymore. Really? That was you holding back? Yeah, it was. There's no point in getting pissed off at him. He never bats an eye, no matter what you say. So I only ever say about half of what's really on my mind. Couldn't you tell? Aren't you afraid? It's not as though you are his only servant, after all. If he were to get fed up with your rebellious attitude, he could end your contract whenever he liked. Interesting. So that's the first of us he hearing that he has multiple servants, I think. And wasn't it he he was able to contract Canis? I think they mentioned earlier because Wodime himself beat her <laughs> in a battle and forced her to kneel, essentially. Man, I wish then I'd finally get to pick a proper fight with him. No damn human slaps a collar on me and gets away with it forever. When all's said and done, I'm gonna make him pay dearly for that. What a strange relationship. Oh well, it's none of my business. Lord Odysseus, the Echidna has succeeded at producing the dog. I believe it should finish growing in about half a day. Good. Find something it can use to track the Chaldeans. I don't care what it is or where you get it. If the Chaldeans are indeed still alive, they're bound to have left a trail of some kind. And a dog's keen senses will be able to find such a trail. Monka. It was always mentioned that he has three divine servants. Interesting. What's up, fam? How is life? It is. We are we are living it up in Lost Belt Five. In proper human history, the gods, including the twelve Olympians, parted ways. Okay, we're getting the history of the Lost Belt. So, in our timeline, in proper human history, the gods, including the Twelve Olympians, parted ways with humanity. But in this world, they remained. I don't know why that is. We might be able to find a clue as to what happened if we went digging around in the ancient ruins. But really, that doesn't matter. The problem is that this world achieved amazing growth and prosperity thanks to the gods sticking around. Well. If we're being accurate, most of the gods aren't actually here in Atlantis. They're up on the top of the great pit that sits in the middle of Atlantis's sea. That's your ultimate destination, the interstellar met metropol metropolis, Mount Olympus that lies beyond the Tree of Emptiness. Oh, Olympus? The city of the gods. And of course, whenever you find gods, you'll also find people who worship them like the ones who attacked you the moment you set foot in this Lost Belt. This is as far as Da Vinci and I got earlier. From here on out, everything we learn will be new to us as well. <laughs> right. But now I see, if the gods are still alive here, that would certainly explain our current situation. When you mention people who worship the gods, are you perhaps referring to that heroic spirit? That's right. I bet you were all quaking in your boots when you heard his true name, weren't you? He's one of the most famous tacticians in all of proper human history. A hero who survived the same battlefield that took the lives of great heroes like Achilles and Hector. Odysseus. That's the commander-in-chief who rules over this entire sea of Atlantis, and your sworn enemy set on wiping you all out. 
Odysseus. Um, who was he again? <laughs> no, we know who he is. All right. Along with Hector and Achilles, Pencilia and Paris, he was one of the heroes who helped bring an end to the legendary Trojan War. In fact, he was the one who came up with the idea for the Trojan horse. Anyway, our first order of business is to get Nemo healed up. We won't even be able to use the Shadow Border until he's feeling better. Fortunately, I have an idea as to how to go about that, so don't worry, I'll take care of that. Next. There's one more thing I would like to ask you about. What was that light that came down from the sky and tore the Nautilus to pieces? Is that some sort of secret weapon Odysseus came up with? Ah, yes, that. That's one of the most pressing problems you'll have to face. Let me start out from the beginning. There are three major hurdles you'll need to clear if you're going to reach Olympus. First, there's the Olympus Defense Forces, commanded by Odysseus. Second, there's Poseidon, the nihilist god of the sea and guard of the great pit. And third, there's the heavenly arrow of divine punishment, Artemis. <gasps> There's no way for you all to get into Olympus unless you can do something about each of these hurdles. Think of them as Atlantis's version of the three layers of defense that made up Byzant Byzantine Emperor Empire's capital city of Constant Constantinople, all but imperious to invasion. The three layers of defense. Holy shit, dude. <laughs> Yeah, and that is the fact that we have to take down Artemis up in her fucking mecha. <laughs> She's fucking driving a mecha space station, dude. <laughs> That's the whole reason why Orion doesn't want to help us. Makes sense. Hmm. Maybe I should have said something before. <clears throat> I gotta use, use the scratchy voice. Fuck, dude, my throat's already hurting. Yeah, we're, everything we're doing in this entire story chapter, which is 14 hours of reading about... <laughs> I looked it up. This fucking... Uh... <laughs> it's insane. It's so, this story chapter is so big just Atlantis alone is about 14 hours of reading if you're adding in gameplay it's going to be about 24 hours of streaming total just 5.1 and then it, it's about the same for uh, 5.2 so in total we've got about 48 hours of streaming to do total just to get past Lost Belt 5 that's insane dude <sighs> How did I do his voice again? I, I was I was trying to do like a scratchy voice for Orion because he's kind of like Koo. <clears throat> his Koo has like the scratchy voice. I can't do it though. <laughs> it's my attempt. Hmm. Maybe I should have said something before I left after all. Then again, I'm sure they'll figure something out with Barthmol Barthmol Bart there. Man, now I've got even more I've got to think about. Where should I go? What should I do? Is this really what you want, Artemis? Things were actually relatively peaceful on the sea of Atlantis up until fairly recently. There were still soldiers stationed here, sure, but you could count them all on one hand. And even with Artemis keeping watch, getting around between the different islands was no problem at all. Back then, the only ships she'd automatically attack were those that tried to head for Olympus. But then, not too long ago, the situation changed dramatically. Was that because of us? That's part of it, sure, but there's another bigger reason. What happened was a number of servants from proper human history managed to infiltrate Olympus. Huh? I don't know if it's because of the sheer size of this lost belt or what, but the counterforce ended up summoning a whole bunch of servants who tried to establish a beachhead that you Chaldeans could use to reach Olympus whenever you got here. They did that for us? So, who were these servants? 
I wish I could tell you, girl with the beautiful hidden eyes, but I don't even remember what they looked like. Oh, that's why he went after Mash. She's got the bangs. High <laughs> pitched voice for the teddy bear. The big bodybuilder voice. Um, I totally. Fez told me that this Lost Belt was going to remind me a lot of, uh,. Andor because I had just finished I just finished watching the Star Wars Andor show a few weeks ago earlier this month actually and uh, I fucking loved it I loved everything about Andor it was so fucking good and uh, I, I love how they took historical revolutions to inspire the show which is literally about the rebel uprising against the Empire in Star Wars I thought that was super fucking cool and uh, I totally see why Fez was saying that because thematically similar to Andor and Rogue One. Yeah, so there were a bunch of servants here that were like literally trying to like set up like a, a, a rebellion for us and they fucking failed and now we're gonna have to like pick up where they left off. Very cool. I presume there is some sort of mage craft in play? Uh, yeah, I think so. You see, I was asked to help them reach their destination, which means I had to stay behind. So if I remember their true names, there was a chance I could end up being compelled to give them to the enemy. Uh, they must have had a... They must have had a really talented caster put a spell on you. Then again, it could have been an assassin or someone who specialized in memory man manipulation. At any rate, I do remember they managed to get past both Artemis's arrow and Poseidon's strikes. And ended up safely reaching Olympus. Unfortunately, their arrival came at a heavy price. A number of servants were killed on the way there. I may not remember their faces or their true names, but I do know they all went down fighting. Ah, uh, gotcha. Regardless, this does shed some light on why their security was already so tight. That being said, with so many servants being summoned, they would surely have been discovered sooner or later if they had all remained here. Uh, who cares about what happened in the past? We still need to worry about the present. So you're saying the reason Atlantis is on such high alert right now is thanks to this other servant invasion? Exactly. Man who wouldn't be my type even with much longer bangs. <laughs> what? Let's go. Buy energy. Um, it is similar to... Uh, it's definitely very similar to... Uh, Andor with how... There was something that happened, which, uh, but they failed, and this causes the, uh, I guess you could call, like, Olympus, the, the world government here, cracking down on the citizens now, and I wonder if that's going to be able to inspire revolution. That'll be interesting. Because now that Olympus is on high alert, I'm assuming that's probably making life for the citizens down here probably, probably not too great. Exactly, man who wouldn't be my type even with much longer bangs. <laughs> Down, Bart. Then again, if you were to lose a few pounds. <laughs> Was that descriptor really necessary? <laughs> At the moment, getting into Olympus is basically impossible. However, there are still several servants who stayed behind, so in my opinion, you should start by looking for them. Of course, in order to do that, you'll need to visit the neighboring islands. Ah! Kirkland, Washington. But at least Artemis's guard should be a little more relaxed during the daytime. And fortunately for you, my ship, the Royal Fortune, can cross between islands in the blink of an eye. That being said, honestly, it's still incredibly risky to move around while Artemis is still on high, high alert. We can only hope that she's lowered her security level because she thinks you're all dead. So what do you say? Oh, what about this idea you said you had for helping Nemo to recover? I'd like to know more about that. Ah, oh, right. It'll be safer if I just show you. In brief, it involves taking Captain Nemo to the temple. Uh, what temple? <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Courier? Yes, what can I do for you? I'm sorry to impose, but I have something I was hoping you could deliver for me. Unless you're already fully booked? Not at all. The only reason I'm allowed to stay on this island is because I agreed to serve as a courier. Now, where would you like to, it delivered? The next island over, hmm? In that case, I should be able to make it there and back by nightfall. In exchange, I'm sorry, Heritikos, but I could ask, could I ask for you to do me a favor and show these people around the village for me? I think they'd be especially interested to see how the, see how clothes are made here. 
Uh, sure, no problem. Huh? Well... Well, given that these villagers, what these villagers are wearing, it certainly seems like their lifestyle is still identical to what it was in ancient Greece. As such, I doubt there will be all that much of interest to see. Uh, thank you for showing us around. Not at all. Okay, this way, please. Poor Gordal, first coin sky, and now this guy, he keeps getting... <laughs> Keeps attracting weird companies. Hmm? I'm sure it comes as no surprise, but one truly cannot help but notice these enormous structures. I'm told they are known as the remains of a number of gods? Remains isn't the nicest way to put it, but that does seem to be what the young people call them. Do you mean to say that you are no longer young yourself, my fair lady? Because if so, I must humbly beg to differ. Oh, well, thank you. Anyway, Mr. Courier said that I should show you how clothes are made, right? Here, it's right this way. Oh ho ho ho! This is some very interesting interior decoration you've got going on here. Well, I take it that this is your loom over here? Hmm, what do you use for the textiles then? Some form of cotton? Cotton? Um, no, it's silver birch bark embedded with Theos... Clearamon Clearamonia. Uh, Theos, what now? Oh, well, I suppose that doesn't matter, though I must say, isn't this material a bit too plain for clothing? Surely you could put such a lovely shade of blue towards a more fashionable means, no? And what about durability? Isn't that a concern? If I may, Director, fashion is intrinsically tied to both the area in which it is worn and the civilization of the people wearing it. So I dare say it's quite rude to criticize it, as though our perspective is the correct one. Hmm, uh, yeah, uh, good point. I see, so you find it too plain. But to answer your question, no, durability isn't a concern at all. Our clothes can be adjusted to suit the temperature, and they're treated with a coating to deter blades, which keeps us fairly safe from demonic beast attacks. Uh, huh? Yes? Uh, pardon me, but would you mind if I touched the outfit hanging over there? Oh, no, go right ahead. Hmm. I can't say I've ever felt any other article of clothing quite like this. Would you also mind if I borrowed that knife? Holmes? This is a good iron knife, well made and well sharpened, and yet it can't cut through this outfit. Huh? Are you serious? Here, let me try. Yeah, it's no use. I can't cut it worth a damn. Um, could... You stop, please. You're going to ruin the knife if you keep that up. Ah, oh, of course. I do beg your pardon. What in the world is this material? Is there some kind of trick you use to make it? Uh, no, we just... Hey, I hunted a demonic beast! Oh good, it looks like we'll have fresh demonic beast meat for dinner today. You hunt demonic beasts? Isn't that dangerous? Oh no, it's fine. The ones around here aren't all that strong anyway. The gods have permitted us to hunt them for a millennia now, as long as we do so in moderation. The gods, huh? They should start cutting and dressing the beasts any moment now. Come on, let's go see. Instead of ruining the clothes, it ruins the knife? Yeah, interesting, right? I got a hydra. This one ferments alcohol in, it, in its intestines, so we ought to be able to get some good booze out of it too. I don't believe it! That is easily as large as an Orochi or a Diavoltron. I say, have you all noticed something odd about these proceedings? While all the villagers would seem to be happy about this kill, not a one of them is surprised by it. This sort of hunt may not exactly be common for them, but nor would it be unprecedented. Man, this is great. We haven't had a Hydra meet in forever. Hey, can I ask how long forever is? Can you tell us more about it? Huh? What, like how we hunted it? Well, when they get to be this size, there's definitely no taking one down. There's definitely no taking one down on your own. You need to surround it with about four hunters so you can safely bring it down for the kill. Four hunters, you say? 
Damn. What's up, Rimult? <laughs> Europe is weird. <laughs> All right, uh, let the feast begin. Man, we haven't had Hydra in ages. Don't worry, everyone. We also have chicken if you're not a fan of the snake. Oh, we had demonic beast back in Russia too, didn't we, senpai? This is some of the toughest meat I've ever had. It's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is a little rough, but it's nothing you can't get used to. Fo fo. Hmm, not bad. Not bad at all, but I dare say it would go down even better if I had some cook if it was cooked teriyaki style. Here you go. Demonic beast teriyaki. All right. Now that we've discovered a few more interesting things from this Hydra hunt, uh, let's take advantage of this mealtime to go over what we've learned. First off, we were told that this Hydra was brought down not by a servant, but by four ordinary villagers. Second, these villagers haven't seen a Hydra of this side in approximately 200 years, which we know thanks to an old man who was apparently a youngster at the time. Quite so, it would seem that while Hydras of this particular size are something of a rare occurrence, it is not at all uncommon for these villagers to bring back smaller Hydras from a hunt. Furthermore, all that jerky we've been seeing hung up around the village came from demonic beasts as well. In the Russian Lost Belt, the Yaga had to use magical guns to hunt demonic beasts, and even then, bringing one down wasn't easy by any means. But here... Right. Here, it would seem that hunting demonic beasts take no more effort for these young people than, say, hunting a quail would be for us. And even though we're ostensibly from the same human race, they all seem to be in picture-perfect health. And they certainly couldn't be that healthy if it didn't regularly have if they didn't regularly have enough to eat. Uh, hey there, everyone. Enjoying the feast? Hmm, this Hydra really hits the spot. Oh, I see. What in the world is going on with this village? I doubt anything we've seen here is unique to this village. Rather, I expect this is just what life generally is like here in the Atlantic Lost Belt. Now, now, there will be time for all that later. For now, or for today, I suggest you guys eat your fill, and tomorrow I'll explain everything at the temple. Hmm, I've got to say, this serpent liquor doesn't taste like any other kind of alcohol I've ever had, but it's got a real nice kick to it. I bet it would be even better with some spices. I'll have to try importing some one of these days. Hmm. True, given everything that's happened between yesterday and today, I can't help but feel a bit mentally worn out. Putting everything out of our minds for the night and getting a good long sleep might not be a bad idea at all. Oh, um, you do realize that I'm speaking, speaking strictly of the capacity as a commander, of course. And I only reached this conclusion out of fervent consideration for everyone's well-being. <sighs> yeah, whatever you say, Director. Yes, sir. Understood. Oh, well, uh, go on then. Eat up. You'll all need the energy. You, you'll need all the energy you can get for what's to come. And don't be shy about asking for seconds. Fo, fo, fo. The humans in the Age of Gods are Giga Chads? Yeah, fucking looks like it. It doesn't look like Captain Nemo will be waking up on his own anytime soon. He is still in a coma, or at least the closest equivalent for a servant. Unless we do something, he will most likely continue to wither away until he ultimately perishes. We've got to find a way to help him. Right. Unfortunately, getting to the temple could be a bit dangerous. You see, demonic beasts seem to have picked up on the scent of battle and started to roam the area. In that case, we can't have Max carry him since he needs both hands free for his master duties. Indeed, and it would be quite difficult if not impossible for you to carry him either, thanks to your small stature. So, who would be the best choice? Knowingly glancing. <laughs> Why, would you look at that? It seems to have- we seem to have a strapping young man here with the girth to spare right here. Hey, you're not talking about me, are you? 
don't worry, you'll be fine. Someone as light as Nemo shouldn't be any trouble for you at all, right? Uh, well, uh, no, of course not. Not to mention that physical enhancement is the most rudimentary of all spells. But as a distinguished commander like myself giving a child a piggyback ride just seems more than a tad, uh, well, improper. Ha ha ha, you're still worried about appearances at this point? Shouldn't you be more concerned with improving your odds of survival, Commander? Even if just by 1%. Exactly. Besides, I bet you'll cut a real dashing figure carrying Nemo on your back, Gordy. Ah, oh, spare me the hollow praise. Something about it just rubs me the wrong way. Um, that actually reminds me of something I've been wondering about for a while now. Did the homunculi you grew up around never praise you for anything, Director? I've been wondering that too. Great question, Mash. Hmm, homunculi are already fully grown from the moment they're born, which means they have absolutely nothing in the way of genuine life experience. I don't need any praise from the likes of them. Not that they ever bothered me anyway. I don't know whose idea it was, but they said it was policy to never offer praise for anything that felt like it was the sort of thing anyone should be able to do. I especially remember how Tule would always be like, I'm very young. I'm very so sorry, young master, but I will never praise you regardless of what you may accomplish. Oh, I swear. What was her problem anyway? I see. Fascinating. She sounds like someone I would very much like to meet. Don't be ridiculous. She's just another homunculus. I highly doubt she'll... she'd have anything to offer you. Besides, she's long since gone from this world, so you'll never get to meet her regardless. Oh, for why am I even talking about this? All right, fine. I see how it is. Wait right there while I go fetch Nemo. There. Happy now? Now that's a father figure if I've ever seen one. He does look like Nemo's father now. You totally look like a doting father. Ah, uh, don't be daft! Gah! Now look what you did. My shouting made him kick me in the stomach. Ha ha ha, now I see. So this is what you Caldea folks are like. What you lack in rules, you make up for in discipline. That suits me just fine. In fact, I'd even say it's ideal. All right then, let's make our way to the temple. I'll go with you. How long are you still gonna stream? Uh, maybe the next story node, depending on how long it is. I was gonna stream for five to six hours and we've been live for about four hours and 41 minutes here. So we still got a little bit left to go. We'll see. I'm guessing I'm really just an ordinary guy. That's why I'm here now. That's why I got left behind. Right now, I'm just a guy who looks the part, left holding down the fort. Every day feels like it lasts a year. Every second feels like it drags on for an hour. Don't get me wrong, logically it makes sense. Really, when you get right down to it, servants like us are supposed to fight alongside a master. It's just reckless to go off somewhere you know you're likely to die without one. I know that a servant, I can't even remember their face, asked me, stay here and wait for them. And I know I said I would, partially because it really didn't feel like the kind of situation where no was an option. But I'm supposed to be one of the greatest sabers ever, even if I do just use a club. Right now, I'm a rider, though I can't keep my horse around all the time. Who is this? I wonder. It, is it? This isn't. Wait. Right now, I'm a rider, though I can't keep my horse around all the time. Ah, oh, crap, I'm getting all choked up. I have no weapon and no vehicle. The only gear I've got to my name is a few tales of adventure and daring do. And that's nothing compared to the real first-rate heroes. I can't stand back up if my Achilles tendon is severed, or if I'm stabbed in the heart. Oh! Is it Achilles? I can't stand back up if my Achilles tendon is severed, or if I'm stabbed in the heart. I can't keep protecting an entire city as its political leader, general, strategist, and warrior all rolled up into one. I could never compete in all the twelve labors on my own. Wait! Wait, what? Who is this? They're saying like multiple fucking. Oh, maybe they're doing that on purpose to fucking throw us off. 
I can't stand up if my Achilles tendon is severed, so that makes me think it's Achilles, but then he says, I could never complete all of the 12 labors on my own, making me think it's Hercules. Who was the person who helped Herc on the 12 labors? Because didn't he have like his uncle or some shit? Who helped Hercules with the 12 labors? There was someone that helped him, right? There was a bunch of people that helped him. I'm not going to be able to find it. <laughs> there was someone I thought that was with him for a while. General, leader, strategist. I can't stand back up if my Achilles tendon is severed or if I'm stabbed in the heart. And he said he's a writer? <laughs> I'm supposed to be one of the greatest sabers ever. Even if I do, just use a club. Right now I'm a rider, though I can't keep my horse around all the time. This is literally like a riddle. It's, it's supposed to be a riddle to throw us off, I think. I can't stand back up if my Achilles tendon is severed. I could never complete all of the 12 labors on my own. I can't even gather a bunch of other heroes onto a single ship for an epic journey. Jason? Because Jason led the Argonauts, right? This is literally like a poem to throw us off. I don't, I, you're not supposed to know who it is yet. So many things and I can't do one of them. The best I can manage is to hunt demonic beasts and donate them to villagers, just like I've been doing every day. They say they've been a whole lot more demonic beasts running around lately. That probably means they're either here or they will be soon. I wonder what they'll think of me when they show up. A useless, good-for-nothing, C-rank servant? I just hope they're at least a little happy to meet me. <laughs> nah, what am I saying? I've got to stop thinking positive, or I've got to start thinking positive. Oh wait, stop thinking positive. They're just gonna look down their noses at me and relegate me to back up. That's all I deserve anyway. Alright, now that I'm feeling more myself, I'm just gonna keep looking on the dark side of life. After all, that's what I swore I was gonna do. Always look on the dark side of life. Okay then, let's get going. Man, when we first set out for this Lost Belt, I never thought I'd end up walking it with my own two feet. You're really enjoying yourself, aren't you, Da Vinci? Well, sure. I've always wanted to get the chance to explore some new uncharted land like this. While I understand how you feel, Da Vinci, I am well aware that you can handle yourself in a fight. I feel I must remind you that you are truly essential to the Shadow Border's operation, so I would advise you to stay as close to Miss Kirillite as possible. Yeah, yeah, I know. Speaking of which, where is the Shadow Border right now? Ah, uh, yes, we used its barely functional cloaking feature to hide it once we reached sh ashore. While I would prefer to return to it as soon as possible, doing so while its comms are unusable would of course render us unable to lend you our aid. So in the meantime, I've entrusted Mr. Munair with its safekeeping. On a different subject, what exactly does going to this temple entail? Oh, that's a fair question. By all accounts, it sounded like the Twelve Olympians are our primary enemies here. Uh, so why in the world would we run off to risk going somewhere devoted to worshipping them? Oh, worry not, my port portly comrade. There are no gods there now. It is a temple in the name of only... It's a temple in name only these days. However, it is still ha it still has one of the gods' relics there. A relic I thought we might be able to use to restore Captain Nemo to good health. Uh, what kind of relic? Hmm. In proper human history, you would probably refer to them as... Nanomachines. Wait... Nano machines, really? Nano machines, huh? Oh yes, you see them all the time in science fiction stories. Is there no equivalent to them in Magecraft history? How would I know anything about Magecraft that doesn't pertain to me? Not to mention that if I did, someone would probably have come to silence me long ago. Uh, that said, I heard rumors that El Malloy's family's mystic code uses something extremely similar to nano machines. What, really? 
we need to summon our boy uh get a get waiver in here waiver <laughs> but only a fool with no sense of self-preservation would go on trespassing about in other families magecraft he knows next to nothing about so then this is olympians olympian technology are you sure it's safe for us to use speaking in my capacity as a technical advisor i'm not sure i can endorse this you have every right to be a suspicious girl who I very much wish would let her bangs down. <laughs> However, this nanomachine technology has apparently been part of this land for over 10,000 years. So I'm afraid I'll have to defer to both of your expertise to determine whether or not it's safe. What about you, Miss Corday? Do you know anything about the nanomachines? Uh, not a thing, but I get the feeling I'd be stronger if I did. Hmm, I see. Very well, Mr. Max. Would you be so kind as to give us a proper send-off? Uh, hold on just a moment. Since I'll be accompanying you personally for this expedition, why don't you let me handle this? By all means, Director. Take it away. <sighs> Obligatory nanomachines? Oh, that's what it is. Okay, I didn't know. It, it's the, uh, the Mercury that they use in uh that Elmaloy or it, it's not necessarily Elmano Elmaloy it would be Rhines and then the 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 dude from Fate Zero Elmaloy right makes sense it hardens in response to physical trauma it's the mercury shit that's the nano machines huh the nano machine magecraft interesting thank you for uh telling me chat i was wondering what the hell they meant uh, right uh huh -hum. All hams, move out. Hams? <laughs> he fumbled it. Uh, 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 all, all hands, move out. Well, uh, what are you all waiting for? Come on, before I leave you all behind. Senpai, oh, let's catch up with him. Direct, director, wait for us. All right, Mash Cure Light, preparing to run. Ah, <sighs> good grief. You'd think they'd take this a little more seriously, considering we're in the fifth and biggest Lost Belt now. Oh, I think they're taking it just seriously enough. If this is how you all operate, I can see how you managed to take down four other Lost Belts. <laughs> right? Alright, we better go after them. By the way, would you mind hiding your eyes with your bangs? Okay, that is more than enough of you pushing your creepy, creepily, specifically, specific fetish on literally everyone around you. Seek help. <laughs> oh my god, why is that not one line, dude? That is such a good fucking screenshot to clip for fucking Twitter replies. <laughs> Seek help. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, now I've gone and run off too far ahead. Oh, that won't do at all. This may be embarrassing, but I'll take shame over death any day of the week. I expect the gentlemanly thing to do here is simply turn around and go back to rejoin them without saying a word. All that aside, I still can't believe I fumbled such a simple yet critical line. Does this mean I'm just not cut out for one giving orders? No, no, uh, that can't be right. No doubt I'm just feeling a little less articulate than usual after all this fighting. Yes, that sounds right. I'll just go ahead and leave it at that. Director! Hmm. Ah, that must be Max. And the Demi-Servant. All right, Gordoff. Keep it together. A good mage never loses their cool no matter the circumstance. Since I can't use my hands right now, I'll just give them the cognitive smile and... Behind you! Ha ha ha, what's this now? Some sort of sketch comedy routine? If so, I would certainly hope you would, could come up with something better than the old Oops, there's a monster behind you gag. That sort of... Tired cliché may suffice in your circles, but it'll take far more sophisticated humor than that to get a chuckle out of old Gordoff music. <laughs> you mean you weren't just trying to get me to turn around as a joke? I'll be right there, Director. Please, run for it! <laughs> Is it just me, or have I spent far too long this year literally running around? I don't think we're gonna make it! <laughs> There's no way I'm going out in some sort of bad punchline. A uh, golf charge! 
Damn it, I didn't have enough charge left. <laughs> Guess I'll have to use a command spell. Right, ready when you are, Master. Even so, I don't even know if it's gonna be enough. Did he punch it? Huh? Yeah, what just happened? Please tell me these bloody chunks that look like disturbingly crushed tomatoes aren't mine. Don't worry, I got the beast. Oh, good. Thank you. Uh, thank you? I, I thought he goth punched it, dude. I fucking thought the... <laughs> dude, Gordoff in the Oku event was so fucking funny when he went, uh... Now I have become death, destroyer of you! <laughs> That shit was so funny. <laughs> you and the kid would have ended up monster chow if I hadn't been here. Glad that didn't happen. Uh, yes, and I'm quite grateful for that, believe me. But, um, I still don't know who you are. Oh, I don't remember this guy's name. I know he's a three-star I have, though. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. But before I tell you that, I need to ask you something. This is who that was, because I think he's a writer class too, right? And he's got like a club instead of a sword. Man Mandricardo, did I say that right? How dare you? I don't know who this is. He hasn't, I, uh, to be fair, Manta, he hasn't been in any story chapter I have read nor event that I have read before this. So I, like there has been no chance for me to meet him. That's our writer. He really hates himself. Yeah, I, di I didn't know because he, uh, you have him grailed? Hatchy man in FGO? Who is Hatchy man? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know who that is. <laughs> the most relatable character in the game. True, but your summons must have had him. Yeah, well, I, I summoned him once. He said his summon line, and that was it. And then he dipped out. I, I'm, I still have him in level one. He has appearances in some of the recent events. Oh, okay. He was in Akihabara. I, I skipped through Akihabara. <laughs> I did not read that one. Summer 5 I haven't read yet either because of, uh... I, I wanted to read it this time around, but I skipped it last summer. So yeah, he just hasn't been in anything I've read so far. He's our best friend, damn it. Jeez, no wonder, yeah. Alright. <clears throat> We're gonna get to know him now, though. Yeah, that's fair. But before I tell you that, I need to ask you something. What? What is it? And did you really have to point that surprisingly sharp-looking stick at me first? I ask of you, are you my master? Uh, uh no? <laughs> he did the whole thing because Gordoff's on the ground right now. He totally did the Artoria, points the sword at him. Are you my master? He literally did the Artoria thing. <laughs> Uh, gotcha. Okay, then. I'll just be on my way. Sorry to bother you. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, hold up. No, I'm out of here. I messed up that one line no servant should ever, ever messed up. There's nothing left for me to live for. Wait, take it easy. Can't we talk about this? Me, 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 me. I'm a master. It's me. Huh? Wait, you're the master? Yes, that's right. Now, could you please tell us who you are? Uh, yeah, okay. Um, well. Ah, now there's something behind you! Uh, Gur yourself! Shut up already, you dumb things! Did... Did he just take out that monster with a wooden sword? Uh, I'm guessing that's not just any club. Then again, the only famous club wielders I know of are Miyamoto Musashi and Hercules. Wait a sec. Are you Hercules Lily? Are you Hercules Lily? That has got to be one of the last things I thought I'd ever hear a master say. And no, I'm nowhere near as big a deal as that. My name is Mandricardo. Am I saying his name right, by the way? Is it Mandricardo? Best friend. Yeah, okay, cool. Just vibing in the cafeteria while everything's going to shit. I love it. I'm a plain old run-in-the-mill servant, best known for, uh, fighting the Twelve Paladins of Charlemagne. 
Oh, I know who you are. I'm sorry, I've never heard of you. I've never heard of him. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that figures. Don't worry, I get it. Anyways, I'm a rider. Just technically, though, since I don't actually have anything to ride. Uh, you, you don't? Not even a horse? Yeah, I have a horse, but I can only use him when I'm fighting. Huh. Guess the scent of blood must have lured them out here. All right, pr Protective Master, I'm counting on you to call the shots. You got it. You know, even I've got to admit that line wasn't too bad. It had a nice easygoing feel, and every... Um, Mandricardo, aren't you gonna fight? Oh, right, of course. Uh, okay, let's do this thing. Yeah, I know who the... The, the funny thing is, I... I never knew who the Paladins of Charlemagne were until I watched Apocrypha and learned about, uh, and learned about Astolfo. And then I know from Astolfo and, uh, uh, through, what was it, 6.5? I don't know the story of 6.5, obviously, but I know all the Paladins of Charlemagne, like, servants came out with 6.5. And so I know about Charlemagne and then... What's the guy that doesn't like clothes? <laughs> There's a guy that likes to be naked all the time. That's one of them, too. Roll it. <laughs> I love how you all said it at the same time. Oh, Bradamante's one. I did not know that. Okay. I did not know Bradamante was one. Interesting. Yeah, I, I'd like to learn about the, the Paladins of Charlemagne because I don't know their legend at all. That's something I'll have to read up on before we get to 6.5 for sure. Bradas Monte. Buddha Monte. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, let's let's use him, Mandricardo. Hey, what's up, Moe? Moe, there's some lines you <laughs> you probably like so far. What was I gonna? I was. There's a voice. Who is Charlemagne's voice actress, by the way? She voices someone in Monica Monogatari. I didn't know the character's name, but I was like, I gotta ask Moe about that because Moe's been binging the. Uh, Monogatari series recently, and there's a character that we just met who is voiced by someone from Monogatari. Hanikawa. Yeah. <laughs> I'm downloading this game. Excess HP to activate the skill? Oh, his HP has to be at 50%, increases attack one time, one turn, and increases critical strength one time, one turn, and apply status, remove debuffs for a single enemy. Oh, defensive buffs for a single enemy when attacking, apply death to yourself, demerit one time. What? <laughs> what is this skill? Apply death to yourself for one time, treat it as a buff. It's a suicide attack? Oh boy. <laughs> what? What a weird character. It's like Oberon's third skill. The secret art of stylish suicide. Use it when you want to end the fight or brick the unit. Gotcha. Oh, he has target focus too on that skill. That's cool. Oh, he's going to take a lot of damage here. Or not. <laughs> okay. Let's 
see what his NP looks like. Oh, he gets his horse! And his attack goes down at the end of it. What a silly character. He's the li he's the living audio stream guy. You get a fat buff and then you literally die. In incredible. <laughs> the Suicide Squad. <laughs> There's got to be people on YouTube that have made memes of that comp, right? There we go. That ought to do it. He's really strong. Yes, he is. After all, Mandricardo is famous for taking on the entire French army with only three allies. Ah, uh, <laughs> that was no big deal. Every hero's got some kind of story like that. Huh? Uh, those people coming this way friends of yours? Yep, that's Holmes and Da Vinci. That's right, that's Holmes, Da Vinci, and I guess Barth Molyfew, Barth Molyfew is there too. Sherlock Holmes, Leonardo Da Vinci, and Bart Roberts, huh? Must be nice being so famous. He's all so, he's so down on himself. The important thing is that you're all unhurt. And if we can cor and if we now count another servant among our ranks as well, things are certainly looking up. Hmm. <laughs> well, he's got nice long bangs, but you can still see both of his eyes. Damn, so close. Is that really all you care about? <laughs> what can I say? We pirates have never been shy about our desires. Uh Amazing, from what I hear, he's only known these people a little longer than I have, but he's already one of the gang. He must have an A-rank people skill. He doesn't even try to hide that freaky shit he's into, and they still like him anyway. <laughs> Man, I'm so jealous, if only I was a little bit smoother with people. <clears throat> so, uh, what are you gonna do now? Keep heading for the temple? That's the plan. Yeah, <laughs> Barton not hiding his thing. In that case, I guess I can go with you. Besides, I'm a rogue servant, so I'll feel better having a master around too. Thanks, Man Mandricardo. That'd be great. Uh, well, if you insist then, I guess I can't refuse now. Hey, thanks for the follow, Mumbus Hemlock. Appreciate it. All right then, looks like I'll be coming along. Do you know of anything about the temple yourself, Mandricardo? Oh yeah. Hell, I've even used it a few times myself. <gasps> a picture's worth a thousand words, right? So let's just get you to the temple and save that guy's life. Are you quite sure it can do that? Are these nano machines really that safe? For that matter, how do they work? I'd be, m I'd much rather you tell us than now than later. Uh, don't ask me. I don't got any idea. Look, you'll just have to see for yourselves, okay? All right, fine. Besides. If we can't get the Nautilus back in working order, I'll have to continue this entire journey on foot. And everyone knows nobles such as myself only travel by foot when circumstances leave them no other choice. Yeah, we were all pretty desperate to escape from the original Chaldea, weren't we? Like that super strict weight loss regimen you had <laughs> to follow for a while? I assure you, I have no idea whatsoever what you are talking about. <laughs> That's a... Uh... That's back to Oku, wasn't it? What didn't that, ha that happen after Oku? <laughs> Besto friendo! Oh damn! So that's that's where uh, that's where Olympus is. Is Mo is Moe still here? I can show him some of Charlotte's lines. Oh, look at the background when you're in the Lost Belt story. That's cool. I forgot Oku was secretly a main story. Yep. How do you do... Oh, Material Servant. Be Servant Records. Yeah. Charlotte Corday. Shock 
間に応じ参上しましたアサシンシャルロット・コルデーです一生懸命頑張りますけど失敗したらごめんなさいねWhere the frick is R? Nope. Oh, it's. Yeah, I, I can't even think of who Ryoma is off the top of my head. A welfare rider. Oh, it's the guy from the. Uh, 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 no, I, I don't have him. I know who you're talking. The one that comes with like there, it's like two people, right? It was a Gouda three welfare. Yeah, I didn't. I Gouda four, I think, was my first Gouda. Yeah, the one with the girl. Yeah, <laughs> that's who it is. I remember now. Yeah, no, I do not have a uh, have him. All right, we continue. The minute assembly of the authorities. Okay, we'll probably finish this node and then maybe end stream after that. We're, we're assembling the Avengers. We're doing the thing, chat. Section four, minute assembly of authorities. 3 a.m., let's go. You know what I didn't do this whole stream chat? I had Pocky. I had Pocky, and I never opened this. Disappointed in myself. I was just so excited to get into this. Dude, the fucking start of this Lost Belt is insane. Holy shit. I knew every, everyone was hyping up this Lost Belt, and literally, I, I was not expecting like all out war as soon as we entered. Like, literally, we entered, and they were just ready for us and wanted to. They had a plan ready for us to leave absolutely no survivors. Fucking crazy. Why are you making me jealous with Pocky? Mm mm mm. <laughs> I walked in and got jumped off the rip, bro. Will you squeeze in the event stream between Lost Belts? Um, I wanted to wait for it to be all up. And uh, if we do do the event stream, it'll be all in one stream. I did want to read the story, though, because I missed it last year. I did the event. I farmed the event so I have all the event CEs, like MLB and everything. Not all of them, but the the free ones, anyway. I've got the two free CEs MLB. And And uh, because I did farm it last year, but I skipped the story because... Uh, um, I skipped the story because we were in the middle of doing... Uh, was anyone... Uh, how many of you were here when I did the Lost Belts up to Oku last year? Oh my god. I had like a month to do like Lost Belt 1, 2, and 3 before the Oku. <laughs> because you had to have uh, up to Lost Belt 3 done to participate in the Oku event. And I really wanted to read the Oku story because the Oku story like played into Lost Belt 4, right? And so we like binged like all the story. It was rough. In one month, yeah, we we did the legendary Lost Belt grind. It was it was rough, but we did it. We did like a Lost Belt a week, and uh, we're gonna be doing something similar this time around. So I mean, this <laughs> we're, we're this is nothing. Grinding Lost Belts is nothing new for me. Um, we're gonna be streaming more this weekend. I'd like to have uh, Lost Belt. 5.1 done by like mid next week and then next weekend or going into going into the week after next week we can start 5.2 way less stressful yeah that is true we did <laughs> we did farm those lost belts with castoria to be fair
For Lost Belt 6, yeah. I really want to... I really want to participate in Lost Belt 6 with the NA community. That'll be fun. My wallet may be concerned. Same. <laughs> I'm also just excited to Buster Farm, man. I want to be able to farm with my... uh the waifu OG Artoria. Got an MP3 Morgan at a minimum. Yeah, I think I was going to go for... I was going to go for NP2 Morgan and NP2 Melusine. Hopefully. <laughs> And I know Morgan gets a ton of more a ton more banners down the line. So I wasn't gonna go as hard on Morgan's banner as like Melusine's. And then just one copy of uh, uh, Koyan, and then I do have, because I'm a fucking whale, <laughs> I do have uh, 10 USOs that I was gonna use on Oberon. And so we're, we're spending my first time ever using USOs on a unit. I know most people like never get them at all because they're <laughs> USOs are insane, but I'm using the whale my first ever time spending whale currency on Oberon to guarantee a, an Oberon copy. Imagine having USO. Yeah, I've got 10 of them. <laughs> you have four. It's ridiculous. Yeah, that, dude, I kid you not. I've told people, uh, uh, people laugh whenever I say this. I swear half of my USOs are from Napoleon. I don't know why he likes me so much. I swear I've pulled like 10 copies of Napoleon. I don't, he just keeps coming to me. I'm not even French. <laughs> he just likes me. I was gonna have him be my buster uh, because he's a, a really good archer buster farmer with Coin Sky, uh, with the Coin Sky system. So I was gonna use, level him up and use him in the Coin Sky system. You're secretly French. One from Jack, one Altarian, two from Spishtar. Oh, you got all the Spishtar coins then, huh? Do you have a 120, uh, 120 Spishtar? Or are you planning on, if not? Oh yeah, she's juiced. Let's go, baby. Hmm. Any luck finding a ley line yet, Da Vinci? I've been searching as best I can since we got here. But uh, thanks in part to the unusual way this island came together, it doesn't look like we should get our hopes up. I see. I was hoping we could find a suitable ley line that would let us bolster our forces. But it seems we won't be summoning any new servants just yet. At least the temporary battle summons are going well, possibly because of all the magical energy in the atmosphere here. Then we should be able to at least... Then we should be alright for the time being. Very well, let's hurry on to this temple. <laughs> Oi, uh, uh, are we there yet? Even with the enhancement, my poor feet can only take so much. How much further is it, Mandricardo? Want me to take a turn carrying him, Director? Uh, uh, no, uh, no need for that. No good noble would ever abandon a task he agreed only part way through its completion. Oh ho, and just like that, it would seem we've arrived at our destination. Oh, uh, uh, thank goodness. <laughs> Been saving up since Christmas. Hope for at least MP2 Morgan. Nice. Everyone says, I, I remember people who play on JP can correct me if I'm wrong, but I've heard from people that when Morgan first came out, because she comes out in the first banner for LB6, right? People weren't that hyped for her. Like, obviously, she's like a saber face. So people who are saber face stands like me were probably excited. But it wasn't until after the story that people really liked her, and I wasn't sure if that was because of her character or if people just realized she worked really well in the Koi and Skya system, or maybe a combination of both. But um, I'm really hoping she has a really good story because like people apparently on JP, she's like one of the most grailed units. <laughs> and I was like, damn, she's really recent too, so that's surprising.
she was the most 120 unit. Holy shit. I would have saved for her no matter what. Me too. I'm just a saber face simp though. That's why. <laughs> so I, I'm not sure if um if her story is like I was just curious if her story is really fucking good because I, I'm I'm just so excited for the overall story of LB6, but I'm really excited to see what the fairy knights are all about and their whole backstory. Like reading it is going to be really interesting. Well. At first glance, it certainly seems like what I'd expect to find at any ancient Greek temple. Yeah, I get that, but wait till you see the inside. Heh, I know I may not look it, but we've actually overcome tremendous difficulties and conquered multiple Lost Belts so strange you'd think they were different. And conquered multiple Lost Belts so strange you'd think they were different worlds altogether. So I highly doubt there's anything in there that will even remotely surprise. What in the world is this? I must admit, even I am at a loss for words. Whoa. This looks way more like a laboratory than a temple, or maybe even some kind of factory? At a glance, it seems like this engineering surpasses anything at Chaldea, and if that's true, that would make it more advanced than even the most cutting-edge tech of modern-day proper human history. <laughs> Corday is shocked at how little idea she has about why this is so shocking. That's way out of the wheelhouse, but I'll let you all figure it out. Oh. Give me a moment while I boot it up. Oh, what should we do with Nemo? Lay him down on that table there. Uh, all right. Phew. I can tell I'm going to be nursing these stiff shoulders for hours to come. It was surprisingly a long journey, wasn't it? Thank you so much for doing this, Director. You did good, Director. Talk about taking a load off, am I right, Director? Uh, you're so right, Max. Uh, come now, is this really the time for silly wordplay? I swear you should know better than to try to make jokes to at people so utterly exhausted. Hey, you were the one who went along with it. Let's see. I think I press here first, then make sure it's turned on. Scanning, scanning. Theos Climoria elements remaining, 53. Target capacity. Error, error. Non Olympian detected. Unable to provide Theos Cleromania. Clear Well, that doesn't sound good. Don't worry, all part of the process. Let's see, what's the next step? Okay, you've got to cancel out those operations, take advantage of the timeout error. Olympian lineage confirmed. Bloodline value. Error. Releasing Theos Clearominia. So... Those are the nanomachines. They seem more like mercury than anything. Oh, they seem more like mercury than anything. It, it straight up is the Elmaloy magecraft. Huh. Oh, maybe they're not. Wait, what? They might look like mercury, but they're not toxic. At least, I'm pretty sure they're not. Oh, and how do you know that? Uh, because I went through this same treatment myself back when I'd been fatally wounded. What? Hang on. When? Then how do we know you haven't been brainwashed? Well, I'm not entirely sure, but... If I was, wouldn't I have already killed you all the way back before we even got here? Well, yes, very probably, but still. Assimilation complete. Spirit origin restoration incomplete. Nanomachine capacity has been exceeded. 3,543 hours remaining until full self-restoration is complete. <clears throat> what is this place? Captain Nemo! Are you okay? Oh, right. I thought I'd been blown to pieces. Wait, where's the border? How's the crew? Rest assured, everyone survived the attack, including you. 
Unfortunately, the Nautilus's outer hull was split right down the middle, resulting in its complete destruction. And the Shadowboarder's core, though still intact, sustained enough damage to render further passage impossible. Fortunately, the boarder's cloaking function still works, so we were able to haul it onto land and hide it. I see. So it's basically a beached whale. Well, now that you're up and about again, can't you restore the Nautilus as well? No, I can't. I was only able to put that noble phantasm together in the Wandering Sea's dock. I need Sion's help to solidify it into a ship that actually exists in reality. Besides, even if Sion was here, my spirit origin's an absolute mess. There's no way I could perfectly recreate the Nautilus down to every last screw right now, damn it. I understand how you must feel, Captain Nemo, but please try to calm down. You still need to rest and recover. Uh, pardon me, Captain, but what do you think about growing your bangs out? Uh, now is not the time, Bart. <laughs> huh? Uh, whoops, my mistake. What I meant to say was, what do you think about having my ship tow yours? How in the world do you get those statements mixed up? Just what we needed, another Blackbeard. <laughs> Yeah, we need we need Bart and Blackbeard to come together, dude. <laughs> How dare you! I'm nothing like him. I'm pretty sure he'll go for anyone at all, as long as she doesn't care about jewels. Oh, and I think he especially likes short women too. I have to say, you team seem you two seem more alike than not. Tabling whatever that nonsense was, towing, huh? And at least the outer layer is already restored. Is this the same button? Theos Clemornia, elements remaining, 44. I knew it. There's still plenty left we can use. Go on, Mandricardo. Give him the rest of these nanomachines. Then he should be back to his old self in no time. I wish I could, but I can't. Uh, why not? You heard it say he's over capacity, right? It means there's no way in hell this thing will give him any more of its nano machines. We'll only get one shot to error around its restrictions, and we already used it. It's weird though, this thing ought to be more than capable of healing a servant. I see. It must be because my spirit origin is tied to the Nautilus, so it's almost... It's actually a lot bigger than it seems. Ugh, I got like an eyelash in my eye. He's down bad, I tell you. Bart is disgusting. Why does he exist? <laughs> he likes them bangs. Uh, I, s I see. I suppose you are able to move about freely even as you keep your noble phantasm in constant operation. Hey, uh, mind if I say something, Master? Go for it. There's more temples like this on other islands. And these machines are, what's the word again? You know, not connected. Oh, right, independent. Hmm, I see. So they aren't networked, huh? Besides, these Theos Climardia nanomachines are the gods' relics. The technology is actually obsolete. Oh, really? So that stuff they're using now is much better than... So much better that they can just throw this stuff away like so much junk. Is that so? No, honestly, I can't even be mad. I'm too impressed at how damn well it works. Anyway, I'm not 100% sure, but I think we can get more of these at the temples on other islands. Oh, and some of the stronger demonic beasts have these nano machines too. Only, they use them to enhance themselves. That's why the demonic beasts had the, the chrome around them, the mercury that I was saying. Or, they looked like they had like a chrome paint job. It's because they got the nano machines on them. Interesting. Damn my long eyelashes, bro. Just 
So the uh, demonic beasts use the mercury too to enhance themselves. I see. Yes. This is all starting to come together. Holmes? I assume the other rogue servants got a hold of such nano machines as well. Yep, they sure did. It all began when someone started wondering why some of the demonic beasts were so much stronger than the others. They ran in some tests and figured out it was the nano machines powering them up. Of course, I don't know how much in the way of specifics. Given how they meant to challenge the gods of Olympus without a master, I have no doubt they wished to even the odds as much as they possibly could. Now that I've experienced what these nano machines are like, I can say that they also serve as a source of magical energy. It's almost like they're a pseudo-secondary type of perpetual motion machine. You mean, like Frankenstein's galvanism? Basically, yeah. If you played your cards right, I can see how you might be able to use your noble phantasm even without a master. This means that the servants who infiltrated Olympus may have had a better than even chance to victory. Uh, in that case, we should try to meet up with them as soon as possible. But we'll need the Nautilus back to perfect working order for that, won't we? And to make that happen, you'll need to explore all the neighboring islands, not to mention getting past the three, the three layers of defense to actually make it to Olympus. Ah, uh, damn it! I should have known the largest lost belt of them all would have wouldn't make things easy for us. Well, at any rate, now that the Nautilus is back, it shouldn't be a problem if I go to it too, right? Right? Uh, you have a point. We can't leave the Nautilus undefended forever, and I'm worried about the staff too. Okay then, Holmes, Nemo, Gordy, and I will take the lead back and stand by on the border. Much as I hate to ask this of you yet again, Max, Mash, I'm afraid it will be up to you two from here on out. Good luck. We're all counting on you. Don't worry. We got this. Consider it done. Oh, well, well, listen to you. I dare say you're starting to sound like a fully-fledged master. New director, with all due respect, Senpai has never been anything less than an absolute stellar master. I'd even argue it's no exaggeration to say that if he's fully fledged, all other masters are only fledged at best. Uh, my word, I'd forgotten how worked up this demi servant can get whenever the topic turns to Max. That's my kohai. <laughs> Mash is the best hype, hype beast. Yes, Bench, I am definitely struggling to pronounce the word. I'm pretty sure we looked it up too earlier. Let me see that one again. Yeah, I did look this up earlier. <laughs> it's a biblical Greek word. No wonder. Kleronomia. Kleromania. I gotta remember. It's like rom Romia. Ronomia. Ronomia. It's like, think of the name Claire, and then Ronomia. Claire 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 Ronomia. That is a fucking tough... It doesn't look anything... <laughs> that is a tough word, man. Biblical Greek. Jesus Christ. Ah, uh, crap, they found us. Uh-oh. There they are. <laughs> Fucking stormtroopers, dude. There they are. Blast them. Atlantis border guards. Who are these people? They're the soldiers patrolling Atlantis's and Odysseus's orders. Atlantis on Odysseus's orders. Be careful. They're all hopped up on nano machines too. I'll go circle around behind them, Mandricardo. We can't let them alert the main force. Got it. Holmes, make sure everyone gets back safely. Of course. Rest assured, I've got your back. All you need to worry about is the enemy directly at hand. Roger that. Okay, Master, I'm ready for your orders whenever you're ready to give them. 
Don't worry, I'll make sure these guys don't go anywhere. Claire and Mia. Theos, Claire, Rowan, Amiya. Increase attack and decrease damage taken. They're all hopped up on Mountain Dew. New background, too. I dig this background. There was something inhuman about the way they fought. They were really tough. <laughs> Not canon. <laughs> Like I said, they're hopped up on nano machines. What the fuck? That was literally the line I used a second ago. I, I said Mountain Dew, but they're hopped up on nano machines. Of course, the trade offs that they end up losing their humanity, but they don't seem too bothered by that. That was quite the walloping we gave them. Are you sure they're not dead? Yeah, the nano machines are keeping them alive. But even if they're not dead, they'll just still be out of commission until the nano machines fix healing them. So I don't think we'll have anything to worry about for the time being. Uh, clearly the smart thing to do here would be to kill them, but... Hmm, then there should be no issue leaving them as is. No need to bother with them, Max. We have plenty of more pressing things to do than wasting our time and energy unnecessarily. Hmm, alright. We'll leave them be, then. The next thing we have to worry about is Odysseus. It won't be long now before he realizes that we're still alive and on Hestia Island. And thanks to his incredible tight security... His soldiers already found and destroyed most of the second Barthmalafew fleet that I had been building in secret. The only ship I've got left is my own, the Royal Fortune. Ah, my poor fleet. I hardly knew ye. Then we had better move on to our next destination with all due haste. To be honest, I would have liked to spend a bit more time investigating this temple. But I suppose I can make do with analyzing the sample of nanomachines we collected here aboard the Nautilus. Oh, crap, now what do I do? I missed my chance to bring it up, but are we just gonna go our separate ways now? Or can I keep going with them? Uh, meanwhile, Barth Malafu is just planning on tagging along like it's no big deal at all. Man, that must be nice. Still, I don't know if I feel good about taking up Master's time while this group is figuring this stuff out. Is something wrong? Oh, uh, uh nah, it's nothing. So, hey, uh, would it be okay if I came along with you guys? Uh, sure? Absolutely, you're more than welcome to join us. <gasps> uh, is that so? I see. Uh, I see. Uh, hmm. You seem awfully pleased with that, Mandricardo. Who, me? Nah, this is no big deal, really. I can already tell this guy's going to be kind of a pain. It's great to have you aboard, Mandricardo. I'm Corday. Oh, oh, uh, thanks. Um, it's okay. I understand. I won't be upset if you don't know who I am. Uh, okay, good. <laughs> no one knows who she is. Because honestly, I got no idea. Out of all the servants we've met so far, Corday's the only one that I actually knew, surprisingly. Poor Corday. I know, like... I, I didn't know any, I didn't know who Mandricardo was. I didn't know who uh 
I already forgot his name, Bart. I didn't know who Bart was. I didn't know who Mandricardo was, but I knew Corday's story. No one knows who Mandricardo is <laughs> because she's French. Yeah, I guess I, dude. I guess I am just the French guy. I'm not. I'm not French, but all the French servants, I, I just mesh with. It's because of the fucking revolution, man. I fucking love the French Revolution. Max playing reverse psychology. It's just because of the French. Like, that's why I love Napoleon, too. Fucking goat. The French people. The people of France have never taken shit from the government ever dude throughout the look up the history of france dude even right now there's pro there's been protests going on for the last few weeks like they they don't take shit from fucking anyone bro the french will the french fucking will give you the middle finger at the slight uh the slightest uh s the slightest sniff of any kind of authority, they will just fucking riot. <laughs> All I know is there are heads flying everywhere. Yes, they did. Uh, they did create the guillotine. <laughs> Cause honestly, I got no idea. Uh, hey, didn't you just say you were gonna be upset? You weren't gonna be upset. I I'm not upset. I'm just sad. This is exactly why I'm such I'm such trash with people. <laughs> he, he's carrying him on his back. And here I thought the walk home was going to be so much easier. Remind me why I'm still carrying you. Honestly, I can still barely move. I feel as sluggish as a beach fur seal. Well, you could at least try to make an effort. What do you expect? It's still gonna take some time for Nemo to get back on his feet. Sorry, Gordy. You'll just have to bear with it a little while longer. Uh, damn it. Butter should be one handling thing. Butter should be the one handling things like this. Where is he when you need him? Who's Butter? Is that his butler? <laughs> I really think it's about time you learn Munir's name. Oh, <laughs> that's right, because he, he gets Munir's name mixed up with fucking... <laughs> Fucking different, like, food food or ingredients. Who, who the hell's Butter? Come on, you know, the guy with the glasses and the, uh, the glasses. That's <laughs> so bad. Do you think the border's okay? Yeah, yeah, it's fine, at least for now. The sonar is still working, so I can tell there aren't any hostiles nearby. Oh? You mean you can tell that sort of thing even at this distance? Only what's reported to me thanks to one of the marines that stuck around. Are you sure I can't put him down, seeing it how he's feeling well enough to talk? Nice try, Gordy. Corday is the forgotten, Mandricardo's the introvert, and Bart the bang fetish. <laughs> Is everything okay? Oh, uh, yeah, everything's fine. I was just thinking how this is the same position I was in on my last trip not too long ago. You want to hear more about it? Sure. All right, but there isn't all that much to say. I was just part of the group of servants that just went that went off to Olympus. Of course, all the others' true names are sealed away, so I don't know who any of them were. Any more than Barthmolifu does. Uh, Barthmolifu. Barthmolifu. Bar Bart does. But I do remember there was one servant who was a real good at making hideouts and built a bunch of them all around the different islands. So we might find some clues or other things that could help us if we check them out. Oh, uh, right. I probably should have told you about those before, huh? I'm sorry. I'll tell the others. So why did you stay behind? Oh, that? I don't know who it was, but somebody told me it was important that I did. You know, Odysseus, Poseidon, and Artemis are all, are about as big as they come. And on it, I honestly don't know if we even had a chance of beating them. Yeah, me neither. 
Uh, no, wait, that's not what I meant. Ah, uh, damn it, how could I be so stupid? What kind of servant goes around saying they can't win? Then again, I don't want to lie. That's not like he'd believe me anyway. I mean, how the hell can anyone beat real-life gods? Not to mention, we've got way fewer servants now, and Artemis keeping up a close eye out on us than she was before. What are we going to do? But I at least want to make sure we try everything we can, which is why I'm glad to have you here helping us. Uh, well, sure. If there's anything I can do to help, I'll do it. Just maybe keep your expectations of me in check. After all, this is the only weapon I've got. A plain old wooden sword. Nothing special or historic about it or anything. If I'd materialized as a saber, then I might have been able to bring Durendal with me. But no, I'm just a rider. Then again, I still might not have it then since I just picked it up when that bastard Roland happened to leave it behind. <laughs> the naked man. And since I don't have any memory of wielding that sword since be becoming a servant either, I'm guessing that means the throne still doesn't see me as a real hero. Ah, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to bring down the mood or anything. Well, hey, don't worry. Even if a dinky wooden sword like this ought to be enough to take out a hundred soldiers or so, so if nothing else, I can still fill in the gaps in your lineup. Anyway, it looks like we're falling behind. Come on, Master. Let's go catch up. Damn, he really do be the bro. Alright, chat. Should we end it there or do one more node? Yeah, that didn't, that didn't really seem like a good place to stop. Let's do one more node. I do, I did just open my pocket too, after all. I require sleep. I'm sorry, Notorious. <laughs> I know I have to work in like five hours too, but I want to get to a good place to stop. Fuck it, we ball. Let's go, baby. <laughs> I'll try to, this weekend too, I'll stream at better, better hours for everyone too, or the, because I know people are saying they're like up at 3 a.m. Um, I'll stream in like PST afternoon time for me, so hopefully that's a little better for everyone. <clears throat> Good, everything looks intact. Hey, you're back! Thanks for the warm welcome. I take it everything's been smooth sailing here, no pun intended. Uh, yeah, everything's fine. Most eventful thing that happened here was getting sick and tired of rations. In fact, we got so tired of it, we ended up raiding the food market, the food mark director only. Now those were some damn fine eats. You what? I had my heart set on that food. They're all, they're half the reason I wanted to come back here. Ah, uh, sorry boss. It was the price he had to pay for keeping everyone's spirits high. Ouch, that was too blunt. Damn it, all that juicy bacon gone forever. I'm checking the ship's condition now. It's still holding together, but just barely. The damage to the hull plating is especially bad. Uh, there's no way we could dive in this state. The best we can hope for now is to sail on the surface. I see. Then it sounds like towing is the only way we can go after all. I hate to say it, but yeah, it is. Very well then. Barth Molefuel, go ahead and get ready to tow us, if you'd be so kind. In the meantime, Master, I'd like to, I'd like you and Miss Kiralite to get some much-needed rest. Got it. Will do. I'll go ahead and do the same. I say, Captain, I don't suppose you have any Nemo Marines who specialize in foot massages? I, I do, actually. Oh, no. <laughs> Munair! <laughs> Fucking sly bastard. Gleam in his eye and his glasses. But I can't create any extra marines right now. I just don't have the strength. Completely crestfallen. Get this weave out of here. <laughs> uh, 
You have to buy eggs early in the morning? Easy, baby. <laughs> now there's two of them. I see. Well, that's too bad. Oh, my poor aching tootsies. All right, I'm gonna go analyze these nano machines. Come give me a hand, Holmes. Of course. Barth Mall of Fuel, how long will it take to rig both ships for towing? If I start right now and hurry, I'd say about at least two hours. Meaning you would set sail before twilight, hmm? That's certainly cutting it close. I suppose we could wait another day if we had to, but no, the sooner we leave, the better. We can't be too cautious, given that we're up against Odysseus. True. You might be pretty smart, Holmes, but there's still a big difference between a detective and a general. Duly noted. At any rate, the situation is disadvantageous. Set disadvantageous. We're at a disadvantage, as it is. So if nothing else, we must be sure to avoid doing anything that might result in giving the enemy a chance to finish us off for good. Ah, uh, that makes sense to me. Okay then, let's set sail in two hours. Fofo! I think Flo's feeling cross about all the director's bacon having been eaten. True, he enjoys the director's food almost as much as the director does. Anyway, I'm so glad you're all right, Master. Servants may be able to sense whether or not their master is okay, but that still doesn't compare to being there right next to him. Honestly, I was going out of my mind with worry, not knowing what happened to you. I was really scared, too. I'm so relieved you weren't hurt. I know we're in the middle of an operation right now, but I just can't seem settling my mind. I think that's because even now that we've eliminated four Lost Belts, we still don't know what the best solution for us is. This has been an incredibly difficult journey for so many reasons, and I just can't take it all in stride like Holmes can. Yet despite that, as selfish as it is, I also can't help but want to hold on to the people I'm close to. It's okay, don't worry, none of us are going anywhere. Fall. Really, it's fine, I promise. Okay. Thank you, Master. Huh? Did you hear something strange just now? Mash needs a head pat for real. The bad pronunciation hurt my ears, dude. The fucking big words hurt my eyes and head. <laughs> Barth Mala. I know, I can't say Barth Mala. Barth Mala. Mio? My Mayo? Bench, how dare you? <laughs> she already got deleted once and fucking foe brought her back. <laughs> how dare you, Bench? I agree. I think her. I think. I think the. It would have hit a lot harder if she would have. <laughs> no, she fucking sucks. <laughs> the character, Bench! No! As a unit, yeah, yeah I, I mean, I kind of agree. I don't like Ordena Ordenax Mash. She's our Kohai, how dare you? Mandricardo, did you hear anything unusual? Uh, oh, that was just me. I just banged my wooden sword against the wall, so sorry about that. I see, that would explain it. I'm afraid the halls aren't very wide, so if you could please tr try not to swing your sword around in here too much, I would appreciate it. Uh, yeah, of course, I'll be careful. Uh, sorry again. The last thing I wanted was to bother you. It's okay, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, uh, right, I guess not. Hey, how about orders? Got anything you want me to do? Not at the moment. Gotcha. Sorry again for bothering you. I know it's important that you guys rest up while you can. Go on, you guys take it nice and easy. I'll go out and keep an eye on things. It looked like something was bothering him. I wonder what's wrong. I hope we didn't make him feel bad. Anyway, he's right. It is important that we rest up when we can. 
So how about I brew up some tea and we have a nice relaxing sit down, senpai? <laughs> Them are fighting words, Bench. Hmm? Oh, hey, Mandricardo. Oh, what's up? You're welcome to hang out here, but you might find it pretty boring. There's not really much you for you to... Please, please, if there's anything I can do to help, anything at all, I'm happy to do it. Really. Hmm, I appreciate the offer, but there really isn't anything to do except carry some heavy things. <laughs> no problem. I'm on it. Hmm, kind of a weird servant, isn't he? But hey, I'm not going to say no to another set of hands. Besides, it's best not to delegate what you can. There you are, right on time. Uh, just so you know, Max, in the grown-up world, anything less than five minutes early is considered late. That aside, are you sure this is going to work? I took a quick peek at the engine room earlier, and it looks still to be flooded in all manner of... Detritus. Uh, we can't use any of the main engines right now, but we should be able to scrape by on auxiliary, auxiliary power. After that, it all comes down to how strong the ship that'll be towing us is. Personally, I'm hoping we'll be able to glide with all the elegance of, the, of a mana ray. This man and his fucking fish puns. <laughs> Don't worry, Captain Nemo. It didn't, I didn't name this ship the Royal Fortune for nothing. Set sail! Phew! I heard that when Blackbeard had a Holy Grail, he was able to use his noble phantasm to not only recreate his ship, but his entire crew as well. Whereas the best I can do right now is order around a silent assistant. Anyway, this just leaves Artemis. Given the time of day and favorable win, we should be able to get past her. Uh, good, we're moving. Full speed ahead. Uh, are you sure we'll be alright? Because that sound I'm hearing is not encouraging in the slightest. Uh, we'll be fine. The border's a good ship. I know it can handle the strain. All right, uh, we're moving. Just barely, though. Any rough maneuvering and the whole thing will fall apart. And of course, diving's out of the question. Yeah, as long as it moves on water, it's still a ship. I'm going to shift the ballast to, so that the ship slants to one side a bit. It might feel unstable, but you'll just have to bear with it for a while. Ouch, my herbal tea! Oh, why are you even drinking tea right now? Especially when it's still hot. If you must know, I was counting on it to help me relax. Lest you forget, as the commander, I need to be ready to issue cool-headed orders at a moment's notice. <laughs> if you're feeling well enough to mount such a vigorous argument on the merits of herbal tea, Gordoff, then I can rest assured. Then I can rest assured knowing the border is still in good hands. Now then, Mr. Max, Miss Carolite. Mandricardo, I would like the three of you to move on to Bart's ship so as to ensure it's a safe passage. Under circumstances, having it come to an unexpected halt could be very dangerous indeed. Uh, understood, Holmes. Come on, Master, let's go. Come on, Mandricardo. Ready when you are, Mash. Right. Oh, and please do be careful when climbing out of the hatch. But if you do slip, don't worry. I'll be right there to catch you. Um, excuse me? I was wondering what it is I should be doing. Hmm, oh, right. You're such a wallflower I'd nearly forgotten we'd added another servant to our ranks. The technical and administrative advisors, Bacon Thieves and Captain, should have the border's defense covered. Bacon Thieves. <laughs> so feel free to entertain yourselves however you like. Um, I'm afraid that doesn't really answer my question. Uh, just come with us, Corday. Right, of course. I'd be honored to accompany you. Hmm. Miss Corday seems to have taken a great liking to our Mr. Max. Of course, most servants we've met have been willing to help him, given the existential threat humanity faces. Is there an issue here? That all seems like a good thing to me. And indeed, it is. Corday always forgotten.
I can already tell this Lost Belt is going to be hurting my throat, man. <clears throat> Welcome! I'm so glad to have you on board the Royal Fortune. Uh, how's it looking out there? Not bad, but not great either. It doesn't seem like Artemis has noticed us, but I am sensing some demonic beasts up ahead. And unfortunately, we can't go around them, since time is of the essence right now. So we'll just have to blast them the moment they board the deck. All right, all hands to battle stations. I join you, but I've got my hands full steering the ship. Uh, roger that. We'll take care of it. From here on, we're racing against the clock. I'd suggest we pray to the gods for help, but I guess this is the worst possible place to do that, huh? Well, good luck. All right, don't worry, master. I'm more pumped now than I've been in a long time. It doesn't matter if I stand out or not, I've just got to make sure I'm helping Master out. Just point me at the beast you want dead, and I'll finish him off in no time. He really is pumped! I've got to make sure I don't fall behind. Alright, I'll, um, be sure to kill someone. Yeah! Why is she talking about murdering people? There is such a thing as being too pumped, guys. <laughs> w voice acting, though, thank you. LB5 is mostly reading? Yeah, it sounds like it, dude. Holy moly. What's good, Vizsla? You can do it, Charlotte! We believe in you! <laughs> How you doing, Max? I am doing fantastic. How you doing, Vizsla? Hypers. Just got off work, so you're big chilling. 5.1 is kind of boring in terms of fights. Yeah, it feels like, uh, I mean, most, most of the fights, it seems in most uh, story chapters, like they just kind of like, <laughs> they have to just like kind of make something up to just give you nodes to fight shit in. That's just how FGO's like kind of always been until you get to like the boss fights for the most part. And especially, I mean, Ever since we had Castoria, like, <laughs> we just kind of steamroll everything. 5.2 is where the real shit at? Oh, Monka. Monka. The Millennial Hermit Crab. You have Squirtoria? I don't. She's like, I think Squirtoria and Lancer, the five star Lancer Artoria, are the only Artoria faces I don't have. Five point two is BS, and all you have. Five point two is BS, and all who have done it know it. Oh, Monka. <laughs> You're fucking making me worry a little. You got him? Great! All we have to do now is pray that Artemis doesn't come after us. Here we go, full speed ahead, and I'm going to sail this ship so fast you'll think it's running on rocket fuel. Aye aye, sir. <laughs> now that's what I like to hear, master. Uh, let's see. Oh, hey, you might be pretty familiar with this next island's name, Master. Oh? oh what's it called? Hercules Island. It makes sense when you think about it, since Hercules did end up ascending to godhood in the end. It's no surprise he might have an island named after him. Huh? Uh, Hercules Island? Uh, yeah, that's right. 
talking directly to her always makes me nervous. <laughs> Jesus. Dude, um... Oh, no. I was kind of hoping we'd meet Hercules in this Lost Belt and he would join us because didn't Her Hercules wanted to get back at Hera, didn't he, in his legend? And so I was thinking we'd meet Hercules in this Lost Belt, but he'd side with us. But if he ascended to Godhood, we're going to meet him in Olympus, aren't we? <laughs> oh, man. Monka. I yeah, that's right. Talking directly to her always makes me so nervous. I remember now. I actually started out on Hercules Island when I first was summoned here. I was only on Hestia Island because I had uh, Bart take me there. Why did you do that? Oh, I went to fetch Jason some medical herbs for his hangover. Ah, uh, oops. Did you just say Jason? So much has happened that I completely forgot about him. Oh gosh, he's going to be so angry with me. Uh-oh. Oh, that's true. Medea and... I mean, Jason's here now. It'd be funny to see Medea show up. I mean, I guess they, we kind of already got that arc in uh, in Okeano, so maybe they, they wouldn't want to retread the same story, but seeing Jason and Medea in Okeanos was kind of silly. Sailing anew... Jason, let's go! I remember Jason being really annoying in Okeanos. <laughs> we'll leave the border in its camouflaged mode, just like we did before. We're also going to keep transmissions to an absolute minimum to make it harder for Odysseus to f find us. Got it. I'm a little nervous about this. Well, for what it's worth, I remember this island still being pretty peaceful. So, Bart's gonna stay behind to hold down the fort, huh? Is there any issue with that? That means Corday and I are gonna be taking point on this talking to the... Taking point on talking to this island's villagers, doesn't it? Are they kidding? There's no way I can handle that. Just thinking about it is freaking me out. Maybe I could just let Corday deal with all that, but then that'd be pretty pathetic, wouldn't it? Nah, it's fine. Let's keep moving. First things first, we ought to head out to the village and start asking around the temple. Once we know where it is, we can head there and get Nemo some more nano machines. <sighs> I hate to leave my ship behind, but I guess there isn't any other way. How are you feeling, by the way? I'm fine. I've recovered enough that I can walk on my own again, and I've served in the army before, so I'm used to forced forced marches too. Oh, great. All right, then. Let's get going. Sounds good. Thank you for leading the way, Mandricardo. Oh, man. Now there's even more pressure than ever. I hope this works out. Is everything okay? You look kind of worried. Me? Uh, nah, I'm fine. Mandricardo is bochi. <laughs> yeah. He just like me for real. Huh? There's something strange about the ground. It feels oddly rigid in places. That'll be the metal from the remains of the fallen gods you see everywhere. There's a bunch buried here. We might find something good if we dug them up, but it'd take long enough that we'd better up. We're better off leaving them well alone. Hmm? I can sense demonic beasts nearby. And they're being weirdly aggressive. Are they hunting us? No, it's not that. It feels like they're already fighting something. Could be some Atlantis border guards. Want to try scooping things up from a distance? Let's do it. You got it. Hang on to me, Nemo. I'm going to pick up the pace for a bit. I usually can't stand being treated like a child, but as we have no choice, I will endure. Ugh, let's go. That's it. Cut off their escape. Oh, it's just people hunting. Hmm? You guys not from this island? 
Uh, no, we're not. Hi, guys. Good to see you again. Corday, is that you? Where have you been all this time? Jason's been missing you for something fierce. <laughs> Good one. As if Jason would ever miss anybody. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Anyway, now that you guys are here, would you mind helping us out with our hunt? Uh, let's do it. Got it. Okay, guess I'd better go lend a helping hand. Boom. All right. No sweat. I'm just glad I could help. Man, you guys don't fight like anyone else I've ever seen. Uh, y yeah, I guess not. Well, hey, whatever gets the job done. The important thing is we've got food now. Besides, it's good to get out and hunt like this every now and then. Helps break the old monotony, monotony of day-to-day -day life. I don't know. I think I prefer the easy life over working too hard like that kid. What are you, nuts? Who wouldn't want the glory of being chosen by Olympus? Well, yeah, I guess. Chosen by Olympus? What do you mean by that? Oh, that? It's when a number of the youngsters compete to see which of them will be chosen as soldiers sworn to defend Olympus. <gasps> oh, I see. Master. I know, let's just keep quiet. That's what those soldiers are we see we were fighting earlier. And Philia's son has been working his rear off saying he's gonna be one of the chosen this time. I still don't know. I mean, doesn't becoming a soldier basically mean signing up to be a disposable pawn? He says that's okay with him. After all, being an Olympian guard's the only way outcasts like us will ever serve the gods. I guess that's true. There's no way we old-timers would make the cut, though. I'm sorry, old-timers? Um, if you don't mind me asking, could you tell us how old you are? We're both coming up on 500 years old soon, though I'm still hoping to be granted an audience with the gods at least once before I die. Huh? Five, huh? That's the Theos... Cleronomia? Cleronomia. That's the Theos Cleronomia at work. Those things can give servants enough magical energy to use their noble phantasms, so letting normal people live for 500 years is nothing. All right, we better head back to the village. You'll come with us, right, Corday? Jason's still waiting there for you, though I have to say I don't get him at all. You never know he's got a pretty little... N a pretty little number like you love lovingly taking care of him from the way he scowls all the time. <laughs> That's because we don't actually care for each other at all. Not even a little? Not 
even a little. He's going to be scowling more than ever when he sees me. Just you wait and see. So make sure you don't get the wrong idea about us. D'accord? Uh, D'accord. That must be a French word. Phew. Okay, then let's get going to the village, shall we? Off we go. <laughs> I can see you miss Jason just as much as he misses you. Nothing could be further from the truth. 500 years old, huh? I, I could tell because the villagers, the other villagers, the old man said he was like, 200 years ago, I once hunted one of these two. I was like, okay, these guys live for a while. <laughs> What's up, Clay Gaming? The accord is a French adverb or adjective. In accord, it means agreed. Okay. Or okay. Learn something new every day. Thank you for that, Notorious. There he is. <laughs> oh, I can't deal with this crap anymore. Another! Another mug of, Another mug of beer, huh? Okay, here you go. Who is that? I don't, I don't recognize that sprite at all. I don't know who that is. That's very rare for me because norm. I, I think a majority of the servants in FGO, I can recognize their sprite right away. I do not recognize this one at all. The hair and the hand should be like a dead giveaway, but I don't recognize it. Huh. You ain't? You ain't getting this one? Oh, okay. Though I gotta say, servant or not, don't you think you've had enough by now? I'm fine. Everything's fine. Servants can still get drunk and we don't have to worry about addiction. It's all good news, really. Well, I'm not gonna complain about you racking up a big tab, though I will come collecting one of these days, you hear? I know, I know. Don't worry. If worse comes to worse, I can always sell my sword. You sure? Don't you kind of need that? I mean, you are technically a saber, right? Yeah, I am. But, you know, at this point, it doesn't even matter what class I am. I'm just going to spend my time drinking the nights away, counting the moments until I vanish. Assuming the world doesn't end first, of course. Because when that happens, me, you, and everyone else here are all going to vanish without a trace. So this is what it looks like when someone truly doesn't give a shit anymore, huh? Well, either way, there's not a whole lot left I can do about any of it at this point. Huh? Hey, barkeep, where's that nag Corday got off to? It feels like it's been a few days or so since I last saw her. You sure she didn't leave your sorry ass to fend for yourself? Uh, she'd never do that. She can't even bear the idea of turning her back on someone, let alone actually doing it. So even though you know a so even though that you So even though you know that about her, you're still not shy about running her ragged, huh? You're a real piece of work, aren't you? Believe me, it's not like I asked her for help. I just assume I just assume she leave me alone. Well, anyway, Corday said she was going to look for medical herbs on another island about 3 days ago. Medical herbs? So she left the village all on her own? Oh, I swear, didn't she ever stop to think about what could happen if she ran into some border guards? So what? You're gonna go save her? She left three days ago, right? Then it's already too late. And it's not like the other servants here have a body behind when they leave a body behind when they die. The best I can do is properly mourn her if she ever comes back. Oh look, looks like you're not gonna have to get the chance this get the chance this time. Well, well, so she actually managed to survive, did she? Will wonders never cease? She probably just managed to escape by the skin of her teeth, or somehow managed to sneak up on a demonic beast without getting caught. Either that, or one of the villagers bailed her out. Well, Corday? If you took this long to get some medical herbs, you'd better have some real good news to show for- Hi, 
night, Jason. I do have some good news and some bad news. The bad news is I forgot all about the herbs. The good news is we have some more companions now. In the meantime, I'm going to make a plate of demonic beast stir fry from today's hunt. Hi, Drake. Is it okay if I use your kitchen? Drake? Drake? Wait, it, it actually is Okeanos all over again. Did she say Drake? Drake, isn't that? Mommy. <laughs> well now, it's not every day I get so many customers. Welcome to the Golden Hind. I'm the owner, Francis, Francis, French, Francis, Francis Drake. God's plan, breasts. <laughs> but then, if you are, if you lot are from proper human history, maybe you already know who I am. Y yes, of course we do. Oh, although, um, you don't recognize us? Sorry, can't say I do. But you know, weirdly enough, I've got a f good feeling about you lot for some reason. Who knows, maybe we had a good brawl together in a dream or something like that. I see. Well, even so, it's been a wonderful surprise to see you here, Drake. And you, Jason. Oh, for... Don't tell me you brought the Chaldeans here, Corday. Oh, I swear, this is exactly why I hate airheads. How many times did I tell you? If you're that determined to get into trouble, then go right ahead. Just keep it the hell away from me. Yet here you are, bringing back people... Reeking of trouble like a lamb drenched in gasoline. Well, I was just so fortunate in meeting Max that I couldn't help it. You're acquaintances of Jason too, right, Max? I guess you could say that. <laughs> he was the enemy in Okeanos. I guess the best thing uh, to say here is, long time no see, Master? We're not acquaintances. We're sworn enemies. Eh, ne. Eh, ne, mees. <laughs> um... That almost sounds like you still have memories of Okeanos, Jason. You bet I do. I remember everything like it was yesterday. Oh, that's rare. <laughs> I might not have experienced it with this manifestation, but with memories this disturbingly detailed, I don't have to. I can still see Medea's face just when I tricked into... Just as... Just when I had been tricked into feeling like I was on top of the world. Oh, I swear, I'm going to have nightmares about that. Well, I'm sure you guys have lots of catching up to do, so I'm going to get to cooking. Huh? You're really throwing me to the wolves like this? These people actually killed me, you know? Yes, I do. That's why I'm sure you'll be great friends. Uh. Uh. <laughs> Damn, air airheads really are something else, aren't they? Right? I swear, why do I keep running into all these damn airheads when... Why do I keep running into all these damn airheads who keep literally blowing up my life? I see. I guess they really don't care for each other at all. Uh, fine. Go on, have a seat. The food ought to be ready shortly. We can each share a little about what we know until it gets here. Those are my terms. Take them or piss off. So, how much do you know about what's going on here? Her costumes from a different game, the Drake one? Interesting. Well, yeah, that's uh, more or less right. Half the servants here disappeared and the other half made it to Olympus. That's where we're hoping to go too, Olympus. Ha! Yep, that's the can-do attitude of a servant who's already saved the world, but unfortunately, that's just not possible. Listen, when I say those servants made it to Olympus, that's all I mean. They made it there. And they didn't have these three layers of defense to worry about. There was no Odysseus commanding an army, no Artemis watching them from the heavens, and no broken Poseidon murder machine slaughtering anything that gets too close. Do you understand? Honestly, it's a damn miracle you lot are even alive right now. I guess that's true. But isn't that what servants do? Make miracles happen? I know what you're going to say. You want my help, right? Forget it! I'm not going to another so-called hero's journey for the privilege of getting myself killed. 
Just because I'm a servant now doesn't mean I don't still feel the pain and fear. And I'm definitely not so stupid as to throw my life away on a fool's errand. I don't mind helping out. Let's go, Drake. <laughs> really, Drake? With Drake on our side? That said, I don't know if I can be as much help with this busted up spirit origin. Bust is right. <laughs> Sorry. I couldn't help myself. She's basically got an incurable wound. She might look like herself, but her insides are a mess. Come on, man, you're making this too easy. <laughs> the whole reason she's here running a bar is because she's got nothing better to do. And if that wasn't bad enough, Poseidon's curse her cursed her to die if she ever sets out to sea. Serves her right if you ask me. <laughs> At least I can still have, use my Colvaron cannons on land. Maybe I should give it a shot right now. <laughs> I'm sorry, forgive me, I shouldn't have said that. I can't imagine Drake unable to sail. That's awful. Sorry I can't be as much help, I really am. But the fact is, I'm just not the Francis Drake you know. I can't make the impossible possible anymore. <laughs> That's for sure. The best she can manage now is running a tavern and drinking herself silly. Here we go. A nice plate of Horace de Orvis. Sorry, I probably butchered that. Oh, and while I didn't find any medical herbs, I did try soaking them in this edible wild grass. Oh man, they taste like cold compresses. Boy, do I love some Horace de Vores. Would you like some too? Don't mind if I do. Thanks, Corday. Of course! La ta ta! Why is she in such a good mood? She get another screw knocked loose or something? Beats me. She's pretty much always been in a good mood around us. That's so. Oh, well, whatever. You really are callous about her, aren't you? Believe me, I could say the same thing for her. Jason messed up the insides real bad. <laughs> oh, I'm stuffed. So ends another pointless day. What are you going to do now? What else? Fall asleep on the second floor. Is that all you've been doing every day? Yep, that pretty much describes Jason's entire last month here. How can you be so cavalier about all this? Weren't you the captain of the Argo? Me? Sure, I was the captain. Then why? A miserable excuse of a captain who got his own crewman killed. Huh? Which crewman? Hercules. Hercules is... dead? Yeah, that's right. He shielded me and a number of other servants from Artemis's arrow. Holy shit, what a fucking badass. <laughs> And even with the casters buffing him to kingdom come, he could sit only take he could only still only take two shots before he used up his god hand and kicked the bucket. Damn it. Why did he shield us? If anyone should have survived, it was him. Right. I remember now. You dropped out right around when Hercules died. Huh. <laughs> Took you freaking long enough to remember. I guess Medea or one of the other casters must have messed with your memories. Medea's here too? I is she okay? Don't ask me. She was alive when I bailed, but I've no idea if that's still the case. Uh, hey, so... What is it, Gloomy? You got something to say to me? Ah, uh, shut it, Sunshine! Oh, you're so damn bright, I can't even look at you! Look, you've still got enough strength to fight back, right? Well, if you don't use it now, when the hell are you going to? I'll tell you when. Right the hell now! Let's take this outside. Come on, Corday. Give me a hand. Huh? Huh? You want me to fight against everyone from Caldia? If you side with them, I'm not going to bother lifting a damn finger. Ah, uh, you can be so unreasonable sometimes, but okay. If that's what it takes to convince you, I'll be glad to help. I'm surprised that... I'm surprised that convinced you. You really are a natural board assassin. Oh, you lot fighting again? In that case, keep it inside. I want to see what you've all got for myself. Is it the barkeep supposed to say take it outside? Forget that. I want to see a good old-fashioned barroom brawl. 
<laughs> That's our drink for you. Okay, Jason, let's both give it our best. Let's both give it our best? Is this really the time for... Hey, stop! I still need to get my sword! It looks like there's no getting out of this peacefully now, Master. Goodbye, Horace Divorce. I'll be back for you later. Would you mind holding up... Holding my horse divorce for me, Drake? You got it. You're a real easygoing sort, aren't you? <laughs> Maybe so, but that's one thing I like about him. Anyway, here goes nothing. <laughs> Artemis's arrow took six lives of Herc. Herc was able, only able to take two shots. Fucking insane. So I guess that answers my... I thought we were going to go against Hercules up in... Or I guess that was the servant Hercules. So I guess the the real Hercules could still be here? Because they did say the her in this law spell, the island was named after Hercules and the real Hercules ascended to godhood. So maybe we will still go against him up there and just the Hercules servant man manifested here. I don't know. It was the servant hurt? Got gotcha. So there is still the possibility we might go against Herc in uh, Olympus. Yeah. Same thing in uh, Scandinavia, right? Fucking uh, Ilya summoned Herc or whatever. Not Ilya, but the pseudo servant. Yeah, the space this the space ish chart outfit was only in Saber Wars 2. I do are they put they're putting it back in the uh the shop at some point, aren't they? Yeah, the Miss Crane dress shop at some point. Yeah, that's what I thought, because they're adding all outfits to that shop except for the story locked ones, of course, right? When? I, I don't know. I don't even... Has it happened on JP? Does anyone know? I don't even think it's happened on JP. They just announced that, like, all... All, like, event-locked outfits were going to get added to the Miss Crane shop at some point. Oh, okay. August 2024. Sweet. Fez the goat. Thanks thanks for getting that information, Fez. Appreciate you. Ilya versus Jason, who's the biggest Herc simp? That would be a really fun, uh... Not conversation, what would that be? A skit? That'd be a really funny skit for a, uh... An event at some point. Have Ilya and Jason be, like, <laughs> talking about Herc back and forth. There, it's done. I lost you one. Now go on, scram. Wait, what? You mean you're not going to join us even though we beat you? I never said I was going to do anything of the sort. No, I guess you didn't. I'd forgotten what you were like. Go ahead and take the airhead with you if you want. Not that she's good for anything besides blowing up in your face. But leave me out of it. Hey, waving us over. I wonder what this is about. You really want Jason to come along with you? 
Well, Medea did say he comes through when it counts, so yeah. I've heard he's at, at his best when the chips are down, so yeah. Good point. Given everything that's going on right now, you probably would be better off with him in your crew. Okay then, I've got an idea. There's a temple up north here where a bunch of border guards like to hang out. Go up there and get yourself some Theos... Clerom... Cleron... Cleronomia... Uh, oh my god. Claire Ronomo... Ronomia? Ronomia, Ronomia. Cleroniamia. Oh my god, dude. That is a fucking word. And then what? Jason's a smart guy. He'll figure out what it means that you've got... He'll figure out what it means that you've got some real quick. Oh, no need to overdo it. Just enough for one servant ought to do. Here, this is the release codes for the Theos Cleronomia and a storage container to bring back what you can get. Got it. Thank you for this. No problem. It's the least I can do since I can't fight alongside you. Drake the homie, man. Oh, what are you talking about with Drake, Master? Border guards at the temple, huh? I mean, I guess that's fine since we needed to go there anyway. Right. That suggestion of hers is just what we were looking for anyway. But I still don't understand how defeating those guards will change Jason's mind. Uh, me neither. Still, this is Captain Drake we're talking about. It can't hurt to give her idea a shot. Let's rest up tonight, and then we'll go there tomorrow morning. All right, got it. I'm going too, of course. That's... if that's okay with you, right, Max? Uh, right? R right? Of course, I'd be glad to have you along. I mean, I already figured you would, so... Oh, oh really? Uh, uh, thank goodness. I'm so glad to hear you feel the sa the that way. I mean, you have Mandricardo to help with combat now, so I was worried you might not need me anymore. Really? I figured if anyone here was a fifth wheel, it'd be me. But anyway, if you do need me, I'll gladly do anything and everything I can do to help. I promise I won't let you down. <laughs> we, we really have the fucking group of misfits, man. He wants to say Kier Romania so bad, I can't fucking say it. I see that word and I just lose my mind. The stars scattered across the island. All right. Oh, fuck. I want to go one more, but I think I think that's an all right place to stop. We met Jason, and now we're going on a quest to get some fucking clay Claironomia, <laughs> which is the uh, Mercury style nanobots of this lost belt that the gods use and uh we're gonna get some of that at the uh temple on hercules island bring it back to jason and probably power jason up and maybe he can use his uh his noble phantasm and then we'll have another ship nine tails appreciate the follow thank you so much all right chat we will be continuing uh, Lost Belt 5 tomorrow afternoon. So about a little more than 24 hours from now, I'd say. Because I'll probably, I, I gotta go to work tonight. I'll come home, probably rest up, and then we'll we'll continue tomorrow afternoon. That's the plan, stands. Afternoon poggers, yeah, so because I know people's sleep schedule was all fucked this time around. Yeah, everyone get some sleep. Sleep. Thanks so much for everyone coming out. It's It still blows my mind that my streams of a mobile game are the most popular streams. <laughs> like, <laughs> it, it blows my mind that like the most active my chat is and the, the, the most viewers are from FGO streams. The FGO Twitch community has been such a blessing. It is so much fun to actually go through this story, a story I'm really passionate about. I love Nasu's writing. I love the Nasuverse. I love Fate as a franchise as a whole and to be able to play the mobile game and to have like people be really passionate about and chat back and forth it's 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 a hobby man it's really fun and it wouldn't be the same if i didn't have everyone in chat chilling and going on this journey with me so i really appreciate it 
triple a game is nothing compared to a gambling game <laughs> <laughs> all right don't worry, young Jedi, am I was lurking. Thank you, Hex. I appreciate you. All right, chat. Thank you all. I, I love it so far. First impressions of it are awesome. I think I said that earlier. Like, I can't believe, like, just coming into this Lost Belt, they really hit us with fucking everything. That was a surprise. Wow. First Lost Belt to really go that hard on us, for sure. It, it reminded me of Scandinavia. I mean, Scandinavia as well. We came into Scandinavia, and we had uh, Schittner in... What was it? What was the saber's name? The dragon slayer, man. <laughs> the he uh, Sigurd, yes. Uh, Sigurd like literally came to greet us, and as we tried to dive back into void space, he literally pulls us fucking out and throws the entire shadow border. That was insane. This was also similar to that, except we had an entire fucking army waiting for us with a plan to eliminate us as soon as we came into that Lost Belt. And so that was really interesting. Scary. Um, also, we got a lore dump for the Area 51 guy, which was really interesting at the beginning. And then we also got a cryptor scene where apparently the tree is already chopped down in Lost Belt 6. And then... They said Lost Belt 7 wasn't a problem either. Like, Lost Belt 7 was pretty much all but eliminated. And so, it's going to be interested, really interesting to see what happens with those Lost Belts after 5. Because 5 seems to be, like, the biggest, baddest one. But everyone was saying that, like, the next two Lost Belts are an even bigger deal. So, I'm really excited to see what happens there. I don't know. The whole story seems like it's going to be crazy. Um, like, Part 1... I was pretty, I was so annoyed with how bad some of the writing was in like all of part one up until Nasu came in and took over with, uh, with, uh, Camelot. Camelot and Babylonia and Solomon were all insanely better than everything before it. And it seems like, uh, even though the Lost Belts were really good, Lost Belt one, two, three, and four were all really well writing wise, but, uh, everyone says that Lost Belt five. In, everyone in my chat has been saying Lost Belt 5 is better than everything before it. And so I'm really excited to see what happens here, too. The lore, the story, everything's really good so far. So, And we're only like, we're not even that far into it. What note are we on? Oh, we're on section 6. I thought we were only on like 3 for some reason. How many sections in LB 5.1? There is 26 sections total. Okay. So we're, we're not very far into it. <laughs> LB5 is up there with Camelot, Babylonia, and Solomon. Good. I'm very excited then. Because, oh my god, I loved Camelot and Babylonia. And so the, dude, the ending of that story was so fucking good. 28 sections of 5.2. Holy moly. You did spend like an hour on the recap though. That is true. We, we did spend a while at the start of the stream like recapping everything that I had learned so far because I, I wrote down all that stuff and I wanted to recap just because the, uh, just because it's been a while since Lost Belt 4 and then also just for the YouTube VODs for anyone coming in to the Lost Belt 5, I wanted to recap like everything that I knew and the questions that I had that I wanted to get answered uh, in Lost Belt 5 because I knew that it was gonna be really lore heavy. LB7's insane. LB7's not a thing. It doesn't exist. Oh, boy. I'm excited. All right, chat. That is going to have to do it, though. We have a lot of viewers. Every time I stream FGO, like, I'm always insane by the amount of love and support the uh, FGO Twitch community shows me. So, again, thank you all so much. Let's find someone in the FGO directory to host to pass on the love because you all are so kind. Rin FGO. This person's been in my chat a few times. Let's host Rin FGO. Give them some love, chat. And I will see you all tomorrow afternoon. All right, raid is loading. Go show Rin FGO some love. And I'll catch you all next time. Bye bye, everyone.